PKA 568 with our guest, Filthy Taylor. This episode of PKA brought to you by Feels CBD, Lucy, and Lock and Load, as always. We'll hear more about these tremendous products later, these awesome products. Kyle's still out in the woods somewhere. And (laughs) Filthy, are you injured? No more than normal. No more than normal. (laughs) Oh, I, I, dude, I feel you. What happened to your wrist? Uh, nothing. No, no unique event. It's just uh, repetitive stuff from just streaming all the time. Man, I was really. I I had from streaming. It was a dangerous masturbation incident. You know, a bit of I caught my arm in some machinery right at the wrong moment. (laughs) Horrendous. There's Uh, nothing like coming on a lathe, but it's high risk. That's right. (laughs) High risk, high reward. (laughs) You made it out this time. So you're getting this just from streaming. You're streaming so much that you're like carpal tunneling. Almost. Yeah, but I've been. I feel like I had this last time. Maybe, maybe I don't often wear it on this one. It's just it's been worse recently. So it's kind of like if I'm on the computer at all, like typing and stuff. I just want it on. It just feels better. So. How many hours a week do you stream? Forty uh, ish, roughly. Forty. All right. So you're working. I think that's more than most full time streamers. What do you think? Am I on target there? I don't know. It depends who you talk to. Destiny says he aims for seven days a week, ten hours a day. So <laughs> he's towards the high end. Yeah, he does have a fuck ton. I don't know if Landmark used to be way up there too, but it seems like he's also re- down to like a more reasonable pace, like 40 hours a week. Um, I don't so. know how, how streamers who just play one game do that. Like it seems, and you know, my, I have an ingrained bias against those open, like rust because it's just too much, but mm. Tarkov like 24 seven, your whole life, like waking up knowing like what am I going to be doing on December 18th t- Tarkov what Dude. am I gonna, what about 2024 Tarkov it's it's even worse though with something like league cuz league has been there forever and will be there forever so then it's like your future and your past are just this one straight <laughs> fucking flat plane it's of like the oh same my God. fucking game yeah. which Dude, I don't get I never, I, I never played it I I, I can see why someone would be a one person streamer one game streamer. I, I totally get how they do that because, you know, I watch you for this. This is what I like about you. You're amazing at this. I'm not here to watch you be mediocre at Fall Guys. That, you have the, that is not at all what I like to watch. I'm, I'm here for this show. Put on this show for me forever. And if you try to diversify to expand your audience, you might not want to go through those going growing pains and you might not even succeed. Right? Oh, you, you just, yeah, for you sure. Know, there's a real chance that the only thing interesting you is, is interesting about you is the way you do this one thing, right? That, that, that's possible. I like I get the how they do it. He does it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I, I've said many times, everyone who works in social media sells their mental health for cash. That's just like the nature of the gig. When you just stream one game, oh, you are selling a lot of mental health. <laughs> like that is rough to play Tarkov <laughs> and nothing else every day for that many hours a day they're all hating the game trying not to admit that yeah that's how i always feel when i talk to anyone who does that one game full time i'm always like you sure you're not a little bored of it because i get bored of games really rapidly and drives me nuts when i have to do that for any length of time i fake well really poorly so like by the time I'm, I'm done with the game, I'm like fucking done with the game. Like anything a viewer says that irritates me when I'm playing a game I don't want to play. They'll be like, how's that game? I'd be like, fuck you. Where were you yesterday? I <laughs> already talked about this. You know, like every question, you know how as a streamer, you feel a million of the same question again yeah. and again. Yeah, I'm yeah. tolerant of that. Oh, I'm not. So the worst, and the more I hate the game, the, the more I'm hating what I'm doing, like the least, the less tolerant I am of oh, it, it. Or like I, the worse the game's going. I don't no. watch gaming streams like ever because I don't really game a lot. But when I've I've popped in a couple times to filthies, and I don't this is this is well over a year ago at this point. You were playing some game, and the way you seem to do it is you play a game, like you said, so much nonstop all day, every day for like two months that you are just sick of it. And someone commented, maybe it was like Hearthstone or I don't know. They were like, dude, total misplay. You should have played the wizard after the Aladdin activator. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe do you want to fire up your stream and then you can show us how it's done? Do you want to do you want to show us? You want to do that? And you're like, and I'm like, oh, he's not even like memeing. Like he's clearly very upset. Like, and then I, I went to your rules and it was like, like so many people's rules are like, don't be racist, don't be shitty. Yours is like, don't you ever question my decision in a game. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't give me your fucking game. uneducated <laughs> bullshit dumbass, like you know, tuned in for one second, like opinion on my goddamn stream. I, I had this, I was talking about this in the stream the other day, and this is this is a, one okay. of these moments where you just suddenly realize what yeah. you're doing for a living. I had a, a viewer some some months ago now uh, who asked me a question, so I responded to it. 
And then he said, I didn't have you. I had you muted. What did you say? And I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> At what level of interaction is that? All right. You know, imagine you walk up to a guy and you're like, hey, 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 I know you're doing something. I got a quick question for you. And you're like, OK, what's your question? And he asks the question. You respond. And he's like, oh. Can you say that again? I really wasn't listening. I didn't even bother to listen after asking you directly a question. I, I like, have oh. a complaint on the other side as a viewer. As a, and it's not about you in particular. But um, people have text-to-speech on. Text-to-speech incentivizes donations like crazy. So something will happen in-game, or maybe there's a conversation happening in general between the entire chat and the streamer back and forth. And I'm like, oh, I got a line. This is fucking gold. This is comedy gold, boys. I'm going to pay $3 <laughs> for everyone to hear this joke. And then if the streamer talks over my joke, you asshole, I want my $3 back. That was $3. Do you, you think I just toss around $3 like it's nothing? No. <laughs> I, I, I'm performing in front of an audience here. <laughs> You're like charging back and re-donating the same $3 <laughs> until the joke gets through. We <laughs> heard you. I, I, <laughs> I watched a StarCraft streamer, Artosis, right? Who's a pretty okay. big StarCraft streamer. And um, and he has the same kind of deal that like Raynad had in his streams, which is his interaction with his chat is, is at least in part toxic. So a large portion of his text-to-speech donations are people trolling him. Mm -hmm. And they'll like some of them read like erotica, like you know, cartoon erotica, like, <laughs> like stuff funny. that reads out. And it's like, and at some point, like you can see he'll tolerate for a while and then he'll like put a stop to it and move on kind of deal because he gets so many of those. And you're right, it's farming it for cash. And on some level, it's kind of funny, but another level, you talk about that that trade of mental health yeah. for this. You're literally listening to someone send the shittiest thing they can possibly get through your filters and mm -hmm. have it read out loud in front of all your viewers and you, and you're just like smiling and it's for like two bucks. You I know, got you're that like, so yeah. much. I, I got a foot pedal. Do you have a foot pedal? Uh -uh. I have a foot pedal that's hot keyed to cancel the text to speech <laughs> mid sentence. So I can, I'll just play it and, and whatever. Like the second I hear like a child's name or oftentimes I can see it before the, the, wor the words get read out. And uh, if I just scan it, fuck that. Nope. We're killing it. This one's stopping now. Um, yeah, toxicity and text to speech, that's just part of the game. The repeated questions, I, I that's the job to me. Like it, it if you can train the internet not to repeat questions, wowzers. I can't do that. I just accept that that's what the Yeah, that's never is. bothered me. You guys are uh, made of sterner stuff than me. Like imagine that you just spend like especially if it's like <laughs> You know, imagine if it's don't some like stream. point. That's clearly not it's true. It's like 15 <laughs> minutes of like, you know, you've just gone over this in depth. You're like, oh, let me really brush. Let me really walk through this. Like, especially like take like a magic play, right? You have mm -hmm. some like complicated situation. It's not immediately apparent what the right answer is. You're working through it, thinking through it. You explain it. You go back. You're like, there's a couple lines here. Maybe I do this one, this one, this one. The next guy's like, why didn't you do that? And it was the same thing you just fucking explained. You're like 10 minutes deep. You're like, well, if I repeat this four more times, I guess the stream will be over. You know, like, <laughs> like it's you like can't, uh, you can't at some point. Have you ever seen Zoolander? Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. There's that scene where Zoolander is talking to David Duchovny's character, and David Duchovny like, lays out the whole plot of the movie, why these people are using male models as assassins and how it's this big scheme, and he lays it out there, you know, like the, the nitty-gritty. And Zoolander goes, ah, oh, ah. Oh. So why are they using male models? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, I are you serious? I just spent two minutes explaining that. I, I that was in the media recently, Kyle. That was um, what do they call it? Not ad hoc. What is it? What's it called for um, when they pull it out? Two, yeah, uh, impromptu. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. David Duchovny just uh, just he uh, forgot his lines. Came, yeah, he did. He, just he came. forgot his line. They said that, and they kept it because it's one of the funniest parts of the movie. So, well, no, <laughs> yeah. Ben Stiller forgot his line, and then David Duchovny made up the line. Are you serious? I just spent. I just explained that to you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly why we just went over this. Yeah, that's one of those things that gets posted on Reddit like every six weeks and then goes to the front page. Like if you yeah. if you just wanted to farm karma, like I'm sure there's 30 or 40 guys who do nothing but that. But you just post that same shit over and over. It's about time Passion for someone to start posting uh, the Tunguska uh, event information again. Like, like, like. But what about Steve Buscemi being on at, there on 9-11? What yeah. Was, what if I want to learn that again? Kyle? I, I need a picture of him in his firefighter gear, or I can't believe it. Oh wait, oh, there wait. it is. Was he a retired firefighter that went back to nine eleven to help out? Believe it or not, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one too. You're right. It is the same like fun facts. All Reddit over the has internet. lost me now. Mind you, I still go there every single day for too much time, but I hate it now. I'm not interested. I I hate scroll through Reddit. I'm. Every bit of it Hate is, scroll. <laughs> yeah, I, 
it's the guys who are too liberal for me, which is unbelievable to some of our audience. But it's like, what is this fucking twisted, one sided look at this issue? I, I look, you could be liberal, but don't be like a fucking misinforming propaganda liberal like that. That, that I don't like. Um, or it's the, the, the repeats or it's, I don't know. I just can't find it interesting anymore. It, so, can, it can still be good if you go so, to like small community, like like since I've gotten into archery the last few months, oh, yeah. I'll go to the one that's about archery and there's nothing there other than archery or guys being love- like form check. And then they're like shooting <laughs> in the backyard and some guy with the label like expert archer will be like, your your this arm was incorrect. And I'm watching it like, yeah, that arm was incorrect, idiot. That was a catch and release <laughs> child. You can't just pump him full yeah, of arrows. You're watching not gonna, yeah. hooligans do wheelies through urban environments is one of my favorite things about Reddit at this point. It, it, I've, I've mentioned Calamari race team before. Uh, basically, a squid is someone who is irresponsible on their motorcycle and the calamari race team is uh you know a bunch of squids out there taking videos mm-hmm. of themselves misbehaving and i'm here for it man i can't do it i'm not i suck at wheelies compared to these guys but i want to see it and then uh the squid marks which is basically scars or maybe exterior uh things that hold your bones together during the repair um the ink marks uh, the scars they, they've got all these terms for it that fit i calamari race team fucking love it i never miss i, post. Uh, I have to stay away from that one because i'm riding a motorcycle now and that scares me and if i'm going to be if i'm going to have any confidence at all when i ride i cannot be looking at fucking calamari race team or whatever the fuck and i can't be looking at meat crayon or i'm going to continuously be putting around at 45 miles an hour oh, it inspires me i'm like what do you oh, have to get that. better at misbehaving <laughs> <laughs> oh no no it, it's, it's like, nice I, I, all i think is like that could be you <laughs> it could be it very well could be the person like, that's getting a meat crayon there they thought they were on top of the world that morning when they stepped out onto their bike i'm so cool Whoa! <laughs> the worst the worst and I, I i i say that but this is like if i ever see somebody wreck my the same bike i ride that'll that'll okay. hit home that'll hit home <laughs> i don't know why i don't know why it matters but like like oh that that's literally exactly what it would look like if that happened to me <laughs> okay it, so you yeah. certainly wouldn't want to see like people photoshopping your body onto a bike that you might drive <laughs> oh, all over the PKA Reddit, for example. You like you fall off <laughs> and it tears off all of your hard worked muscles. You ginger cuts. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> then we're just like, oh, you got to restart, man. You know, you ripped uh, off your biceps. That quad's gone. Yeah, I don't <laughs> like that stuff. Um, I still like. Everybody keeps complaining that there's no more porn on Reddit, and I don't understand what they mean by that. People complain the there's page, not enough porn on the internet. The front page filtered out the porn. Of course, all the subreddits are still there. Okay. But even so if they get 40,000 votes, they won't show up on the front page. Okay. So help me because I don't understand then. Because when I, I'm on Reddit right now and I click all, I get okay. porn. Um, I don't. But is your all, are you logged in? No. Zach says it doesn't show porn on iOS. Yeah, I do it on a, a just a browser on Chrome. You know, Windows. Oh, you Chrome. don't use an app? No, no. What? Do, oh, you're on your phone. Yeah. Oh, maybe Android's different than I. Maybe Android's the one place where you still show porn. I, no, I, I, my, I, my typical ready experience is my computer. I don't know. I when I when I scroll through it, it's like I don't know. I see porn. Um, and oh. I, I like having porn mixed in with my like tech news and yeah. like I it's been like... six weeks it's time to hear about like how this actor cut his hand and kept acting um <laughs> you know like, like, and then watch a guy like repair his refrigerator in a very unique way and then the guy who made a robot that paints murals and then i, I take a nap i don't get porn every once in a while like a risque female cosplayer will slip through which is mm. pretty porny you know she might be topless but um for the most part I'm not getting porn like I used to. That's a damn shame. That's a damn shame. Well, there's the multi reddits that I have set up. I, I it's there if you want it. You just need to ask for Isn't it. Isn't there a thing called scroller that like, um, like like somehow like boils Reddit down to like it, like like, like uh, various topics or something like that? I think I've seen that. I don't it know. Sounds interesting. I, st- I don't know. I haven't I haven't lost uh, interest in Reddit. Um, like 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 Taylor was saying, whenever I'm like into something specifically, I find that Reddit, and it's like you get that show me what you got moment where you go top all time, 
and you're like, yeah, these are the top best all time fucking. I don't know. Some I, I was for a while. Female I was obsessed with. I, yeah, female cosplayers. Ooh, I bet there's some there's some good stuff over there on female cosplay Probably. subreddits. Top all time. Go, go go check it out, guys. Let me know. <laughs> But when you're the mem, like when you are going to like a niche subreddit like that, and you do the top all time, like for archery, because that's one I've been going to a lot recently. Mm-hmm. Like, you go into it like I'm gonna get into this. I'm gonna be like super into. It. I'm gonna have so much fun getting into it. And then like I bought like a hundred and thirty dollar, you know, takedown recurve bow. And then like I see all of these like like the upper echelon of elite among the archers with like that meme like Family Guy where Meg is like, you all think you're better than me, and it's like the the takedown one and then like all the natural traditional mongolian hunting bows (laughs) and the long the british bows and it's like so i'm not even cool enough for these guys and then they have like debates there and they're like there's no reason to be divisive in the archery community let's just all agree that you suck if you use a crossbow and they're (laughs) they're like you're right we were wrong to be so divisive (laughs) like just just like such a stupid little community something else i stumbled across recently and i i so there's one called Glitch in the Matrix that's mm. just like silly little things that happen where like deja vu or like I was walking into the store and this mom with her two kids wearing the same coats walked in. And then as I was leaving, the same family came in again. It, it was crazy. It felt like I was losing my mind. And people were like, that's wild. Like that happened it is crazy when things like, yeah, did it? Yeah, so I'm on the tat, right? I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska on my way home. The Trans-America Trail was this big motorcycle ride around the country. And I'm riding my bike in Lincoln, Nebraska. A guy rides his bicycle in the opposite direction. He's very distinctive. He has a big beard that would make Santa Claus emasculated. He's skinny, and he's on like a beach cruiser bicycle with an oversized basket on the front. There's not a lot of people like this, right? And he's pedaling along in his shorts and like a tank top t-shirt. And he's old, so it's a big gray beard. And then three blocks later, another guy just like him. Same bike, same beard, same everything. I'm like, hey, that can't be. That can't be. I'm going like 35 miles an hour. That bicycle guy didn't whip around. That glitch in the Matrix. I, I can't explain it. I don't have an explanation. But the, that's what happened. Yeah. That, hmm. And, and like, it's because like the comments in that one, I was reading a few of them, they'll be like, it's crazy how, how you can convince yourself things like that happen. And someone will be like, you know, don't ask too many questions about it, you know? And someone's like, well, we're allowed to say this is just silly happenstance. It's not retconned. And I was like, retconned, that's a new R slash retconned. What is this? So I go to that one and this one is like glitch in the matrix, but you're not allowed to say that it's just like happenstance it's like and a lot of people are clearly taking it seriously number one they are obsessed with the berenstein bears what does retcon mean again i feel like that's it a means term that like knows. uh you, you retroactively change something to make it fit with modern day so they they some of them will say like the it you know it was the berenstein bears with ein at the end when i was a kid and now in this new dimension i'm in when i when i phased now it's berenstein bears AIN at the end. These are the Disney singing bears. Am, am Correct. I right? Yeah. Okay. Like, although, Jesus yeah Christ, and they'll use that as them. an example of it. Okay. And, and people will be like, yeah, it's so, pretty, so pretty Woody. Cool. So, so that in particular is this thing that there is a lot of contention about. Like there is an enormous group of people who believe that it was the, it was spelled a certain way. And there's a lot of these. Um, yeah. and, what are, the what are they is, called? The uh, Mandela effect. Yeah, Mandela effect. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just like people mass misremembering something. This one here, I'll, I'll link it so you can look at the comments too. It's a it's a picture of an Egyptian uh, statue, and it says this image was taken in 1856. And the comments are like unironically. Zach, can you show it? Yeah, just show the image though. You don't have to show the thread. Uh, it's just unironically people saying like, you know, in my old reality photographs weren't even a thing until the 1910s and other people are like i swear every year it gets earlier soon we're going to be seeing pictures of the middle ages you know and they're like yeah in my old someone I, there was some other comment with like in, there's a lot of people talking about their old what do they say realities or the, the timeline that's what they say they say on my old timeline it was baron steen bears and in my old timeline actually uh, building seven didn't even fall down, but in this timeline it did. And it's like people just misremembering shit, and everyone around them going like, "That's so true." It like, it's crazy. 1856 somehow feels early to me. It's earlier than I would have thought pictures were, but 
there are lots of pictures of Lincoln, not paintings, pictures of Abraham yeah. Lincoln. And he was murdered in 1864. I think I just looked at 65, up. I think. You're right. It yeah. is 65. Um, so clearly, like this is there were pictures around back then. That one looks color. Am I crazy? Yeah. No. And so like th this has been improved with like modern technology. And so that's number one kind of stupid. Like obviously it wasn't you know, this crisp back then. Yeah, this one looks great. But one of the, com yeah, this, this is the exact comment I was thinking of. In my old timeline, photography took off in the early 1900s. Anything before then was super grainy and there were certainly no photographs from the 1850s. A clear anchor memory for me is in the movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. The wanted posters of the criminals were all sketches in my old timeline. Now they're photos. Now, is it more likely, I posit, that he's misremembering mm -mm. or that he's shifted timelines yet again. Can I just say, I also don't remember uh, tower seven going down. I, I know that it happened because everyone's always talked about it, but I watched nine 11 live on TV. Like we didn't do class that day. We just watched nine 11 and I have no memory of that. And, uh, and I am positive that that is because I was 15 years old. <laughs> watching watching TV and it was a national tragedy happening and and that's why I don't remember no Not me. my memory in particular is flawless and better than video evidence yeah, yeah. in my old timeline <laughs> you were a gun youtuber <laughs> <laughs> that was a sick line so this my was, old timeline I, your I, head I like... got stuck and you didn't make it <laughs> 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 I'm about to make my first YouTube video, but I'm hit by a car. Le no, Lefty, <laughs> Lefty's still here. <laughs> we have 400 viewers. <laughs> I don't know why this show sucks. Like I don't, I don't know why I can't listen to this. Yeah, in, in my other timeline, it was good. Jackie yeah, left it's... after Woody turned to the drink. There's <laughs> dude, another, another. Yeah, that would be a fun. In a timeline out there, Woody's a drunk. Just <laughs> I don't like alcohol at all. I love. I know, but that's you, I know that's why it's a good time took line. all of the lack of desire, and that one was left with nothing but thirst. He got my share. Yeah, there's other ones where it's just pictures of animals that they're not familiar with, and they'll be like, "Oh, really?" And it's like, like one of them was like, "Did you know that animals uh, can can absorb sunlight and create chlorophyll now? Because look at this slug." It can absorb sunlight from the sun, and it's an animal. Do you remember this in your old timeline? And it's like we discover new animals all the time. Like, it's it's definitely not a timeline shift, but it was it's super fa fucking fascinating. Like staring deep. What into would be the interesting? Void. I so so that so that all that nonsense is only interesting to me if you put like one drop of science into the bullshit. If you got Black Science Man to be like theoretically. <laughs> there are multiple universes and some would by their very nature be unstable because only minor changes separated them from their sister universes let's just call them so it's no. possible that those universes could merge back together and you could be a, from that sister universe that's that and you could be the only survivor who remembers the Berenstein bear spelled the wrong way. It could be. You know, I we need Neil deGrasse Tyson to weigh in on this. But it, I just recalled seeing this. So don't look anything else on this. What do you remember from the Fruit of the Loom logo? Like, just describe it to me. Okay. There's I, a dude wearing grapes, dude wearing apple and a pear, maybe. The, the logo uh, itself that says yeah. Fruit of the Loom and then what's behind it. Oh. No idea. Isn't there like a th a loom? I'm thinking a bunch of fruit. A loom with a bunch of fruit in it. <laughs> I, I, I mean, the, the all right. So, so I'll I'll tell you what I pictured immediately, and it, because like the more yeah. I think about it, the more it like dissolves, and I can't <laughs> picture it anymore. Yeah, At I first, have no I, idea what it is, Taylor. But were you perhaps expecting they might even be close to the? Were you yeah, thinking I, they might have like overlapped slightly with what it actually was? If, if if Kyle, what was finish what you were saying about what I what honestly thought? Honestly, I pictured a cornucopia full of fruit, like like one of those Thanksgiving centerpieces. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. Right. And see, like that was one that I clicked on it, and they were like, 
there's never been a cornucopia behind the Fruit of the Loom logo. And I was like, <laughs> but that's, that can't be true. There is a cornucopia behind it. So like, like that one, I was like, that's surprising. Because if you would have asked me before I saw it, it's like, yeah, there's that cornucopia and it's full of fruit. And, and that's what their logo was. But no, it's just a bunch of people misremembering a corporate logo. All right. All right. So, only, so, only weird right, when you so point it out is, like that, right? Well, no, because this one is actually freaking me out a little bit because like <laughs> he, he found an instance of this that I was completely unaware of, right? Mm -hmm. I, right. I, I literally, I, he went, don't look anything up. And I put my hands up because I'm sitting really far from a cheap ass laptop and a fucking <laughs> rental. So like, I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Let's play the game. And he's like, all right, tell me what. And I'm like, I pictured the cornucopia with the fruit in it. And and it's yeah. not like cornucopia is a word that's in my daily like vocabulary. It's not like I'm steeped in cornucopias over here. I've never <laughs> seen a corp cornucopia in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a waste like, of fucking time. Context, it's a turkey. Lately, right? Like, how many things don't you remember clearly? Like, if you think about it, just in general, like, how much of your childhood do you not remember? How I much? I couldn't of, even well, tell you. I don't remember. <laughs> I know, right? Like, for, like, for everything. For that. So it's only like when you point it out for some weird piece of trivia, you're like, yeah, that's so weird that that's totally different than I remember. Then you're like, well, how many no, other no, things no, do no, I no, no, not no, remember no. on the whole? No, no, no. You're, yeah. you're, 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 you're misremembering something that happened 30 seconds ago. It's not that I was confused I don't even know about. Who you are. <laughs> 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 it's not that I was confused about what the fruit of the loom logo was it's that i'm confused in the identical way that apparently many many other people including woody yeah. are confused in we all imagined a cornucopia in that logo why is that and so it's just it's just a bizarre it's not like i pictured a cornucopia and woody was like i thought donald duck was on there and like and you know you're you're like i i thought it was a soviet sickle and hammer like yeah. we're not all picturing different things it's all just the same thing we're remembering but incorrect. Like, I also I saw one where they're like, the Monopoly man doesn't have a monocle anymore, and I was like, but what really? And for some reason, I also thought I remembered a monocle being on that. You know why? You know why? I got the answer to that one. That's interesting. What is it? Different game, right? Mister Peanut. He stole it. Mister Peanut. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Are you thinking of the Hamburglar? He's kind of the thief in this. No, I'm not thinking of the are fucking. Are they owned by the same company? And they're like, we only need one. No, 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 no. Right. <laughs> pull, pull up a picture of Mr. Peanut for me. I want you to. I want. I want you to look at him. And 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 I think you'll find. I think you'll find that we're Mr. Peanut, a man, and not in <laughs> and not indeed an intelligent man-sized peanut. He, <laughs> he would indeed look exactly like the Monopoly man. Mr. Peanut. I wish Zach were pulling up Mr. Peanut right now. <laughs> he's, just joke would land. he's just <laughs> Mr. Peanut. Oh, man. Aha! He's, he's always had a monocle. <laughs> I can ah, honestly Morpheus. say I was not expecting this topic. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't come prep for this one? I, yeah. know, I wasn't either. We just kind of do whatever now, we're thinking. On the, the now, now, <laughs> now, clearly this, now, now, clearly this fancy peanut is out mm. for a black tie affair. But because mm. he is a peanut, he is unclothed um but 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 obviously black pants are implied he's wearing he's wearing those fancy gloves uh the black sleeves the monocle the top hat and cane this this is the monopoly man. undeniable proof i think of a different <laughs> yeah. timeline that you no of you course not no that. this is but people are com you know, confusing the two well yeah of course people are confusing the two but it Aha! is yeah in my see, old no timeline mind. mr peanut had a jacket on did he in my timeline, yeah, true. Sure. Yeah, I mean, that's. I, I bet he'd look good in one. Give him some shoulders. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little bit of shapeliness to him. But yeah, it yeah, was right? the, the fruit of the, I mean, the, the Monopoly monocle one was like, I was like, yeah, I don't really remember much Are there either any way. I, I would love, believe you. Uh, let me. I'd love uh, for you to like ask us and then us, you know, answer. Yeah, let me. As it were. We need some like X-Files music over like this <laughs> as we do this too. <laughs> yeah, that'd be perfect. Okay, where is it? Here, okay. I'm due for a rewatch uh, on the X-Files. So how do you spell the Berenstein Bears? I guess we did that one. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. I, what, for, sorry. I forget who has a W. You're just bullying me at this point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so does Curious George have a tail or does he not? Yes, he yes. has a tail. Incorrect. Curious George does not have a tail. Holy shit. Wow. 
That's not a monkey. No, don't go to the next one till I or no. You, I guess uh, man, you, you can just George uh, without a tail is blowing my mind. Zach, you can open this. This is the same article I'm looking at, and I guess you can go through them and see which one we think it is. This one is: is it sex in the city or sex and the city? Oh, I always thought it was in. I feel like I'm going to get it wrong, aren't I? Huh. I think it's actually Sex and the City is the name of the series because the right one seems to be the correct one in these. Uh, Febreze. How do you spell Febreze? Can I do this one? Yeah. Okay. F-E-B-R-E-E-Z-E. No, it's always only had one E. F-E-B-R-E-Z-E. Wait, what are the first three letters again? F E B. Oh, I already got R-E-Z-E. it wrong. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> we going for Fabrice? <laughs> did I do a? Did there I goes a, the, like uh, group misremembered. <laughs> <laughs> what is group misremembered? The spelling of eighty percent of the words in English. <laughs> it's blowing my mind. Woody spells things completely differently than we do in our universe. <laughs> That's right. Did you see his handwriting? He he draws the letters differently too. <laughs> <laughs> all right oh, fruit loops do you remember how fruit loops is spelled kyle um i think it's oh no is, is it f-r-o-o-t oh yeah that's that's the right one some people apparently think it was fruit u-i-t but i've always remembered fruit with like fruit because i i thought as a kid, it's like oh because it's not real fruit yeah the one on the left looks wrong yeah, it does to me now that too. One, that yeah. one doesn't look right. Uh, the other one's some King Henry the Eighth's turkey leg. I don't know what that is. The monocle, Pikachu's tail. None of you guys would know that. Pikachu it, does have a tail. No, he does. It was a matter of. <laughs> it was a matter is it of, shaped like a? Does it have like shaped like a lightning bolt? It was if it had a dark patch on the end of it, or if it was all yellow. It's a dark patch. Uh, that's what I thought also, but apparently it was all yellow. Okay, well, we're from the same universe then. Yeah, we're from the same timeline. Wait, explain to why you do this together. Chick-fil-A. Oh, does Chick Fil A have a K in it? It's the one on top. I think it's yeah. I, I think don't so think they too, have a K in right? it. I would. I think it's the one on top. My my timeline is the top one. <laughs> my timeline is also the top one. Oh yeah, Fruit of the Looms in there. Have we exhausted this topic? Yes. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> no, I think we go forever. <laughs> oh, Let's just I, keep going. Let's name the states. I have a topic that I I had queued up to ask the chat. Are you guys ready for this? Yes. Sure. All right. So buckle in. It's going to require about maybe a whole minute of reading. Oh, dear. Okay. I got it. Okay. This is from the, the true chat, off sorry? my chest subreddit. I don't know why I called you the chat. Um, <laughs> six years ago, I switched my wife's cat with a more well-behaved lookalike. So six years ago, I swapped my then girlfriend, now wife's cat, with a more well-behaved lookalike. She had an all-black cat that was extremely aggressive. It scratched everyone, hissed at everyone, and didn't use its litter box half the time. My wife insisted that we could get it to behave better. One week, she went out of town to visit her family, and I was supposed to go to her apartment and feed it. The first night I went over, it scratched the shit out of my arm. I joked to the cat that it is not special, and I'll replace it if it scratches me again. (laughs) The joke stuck with me until I had thought about it enough that it wasn't a joke. The next morning, I went to the local animal shelter, found an identical cat that was already litter box trained and acclimated to people, but was a little skittish. The old owner, excuse me, the old owner died of a heart attack and the animal shelter people said they think that's why it was skittish but overall it was a lot friendlier and better behaved and the skittishness would help it resemble the original cat so i adopted it and took it to my wife's apartment settled it in and then drove her original cat to an animal shelter a town over (laughs) it's been six years since then and we got married four years ago we still have the swapped cat (laughs) it answers to the original cat's name and my wife knows nothing she loves this cat and brags about how much better behaved it is now. Every time I see it, I feel like a total piece of shit. <laughs> uh, and the the comments Dude. were all like, um, uh, the top one changed. But it was like, do not tell her this. Your whole life has been a lie. <laughs> you are an awful, terrible person. Dude. They were just like ripping the shit out of this guy for swapping the cat. Yeah. And I'm like... No, he did everyone in this story a favor. <laughs> Not the original cat. 
Oh, well, fuck that, that cat. cat. <laughs> they, he, you reap what you sow, cat. kitty fucker. That, that cat's been dead for sow. five years and 11 and a half months. <laughs> there was an edit where he said he took it to a no-kill shelter, but it, I oh. prefer to believe it was a kill shelter because cats that are assholes should be killed. This Dude, guy this is, guy is the cool guy of the fucking week. This, cool this, guy of the week. this, this you story. You were acting is, like his wife should leave him over this. Oh, um, no. It wasn't I, I a feel, dog. I feel bad for the original cat. All right, so that's because we're dog people. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's because we're dog people. I'll say this. Like, my mom... So my dad had a Weimaraner. Uh, when, this is when I was four, around four or five years old. He had a Weimaraner named Sam. Beautiful dog. I still, to this day, like appreciate Weimaraners. If I get a dog, it, it's on my top list. And because my mom felt that she was the one who always had to take care of this dog... And she was tired of that. When my dad was away, she drove the dog off to like a dirt road and abandoned it and left it there. And my dad never found it again. Didn't he leave your mom like twice? I hope this was one of the reasons. <laughs> that's, that's horrible. That's so much worse than the cat thing. The, the worst me. part is, the worst part is, I was with her when she drove Sam away, and he chased the car for a while. And you did nothing. <laughs> oh my god! I was four. <laughs> yeah, you even didn't even four, try. You should have opened the You're door, like, rolled out the side movie style, and and cuddled the dog. Uh, and and then like Sam and I would window. have gone on like a like a Disney like adventure like 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 uh, traveling <laughs> through the wilderness long to get home to home. dad yeah. yeah like long way yeah 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 homeward bound homeward yeah, bound like homeward <laughs> no bound. this story needs to be like old yellow right it needs to be like your mom like saw you looking out there and it's like kyle you want to fix this hand you that gun and like tells you like you can let oh, it no. starve out here or you can put it down yourself and then it's no. like a movie twist and you're like <laughs> put sam back in the car <laughs> <laughs> no you bitch are we I reacting to the story there, like we believe sam it sam and i start like driving bullshit. And it becomes like a Thelma and Louise situation where Sam and I have stolen mom's car and we're, we're running from the police. So but you're that, that is, any of those would have been better swapped? than my like I, I, if you had a goldfish, I could swap it for a resent a goldfish that's just like it. Yeah, right. If you had a dog, no way. I dogs are uniquely identifiable. But mm-hmm. cats, especially if they're gone for a week. Meh. Yeah, yeah, I think it's because we're we're dog people. Um, I'm like not we, into cats at all. Like like if if it's a cute cat, I'll pet it and everything, and I'll like have fun like with it sitting in my lap. But I wouldn't want to like own one. And I, I remember my girlfriend had this friend. My ex girlfriend had this friend, and her her apartment just smelled like cat piss all the fucking time. And I know I know how that st- sort of thing works. I bet this this girl had no idea her apartment smelled. She didn't know. And and me and uh, my girl would walk in there. And it was like a punch in the face. I remember looking at her and being like, why didn't you warn me? Why yeah. didn't you warn me that, that, that it's that bad? Because it was that ammonia cat piss smell. And it mm-hmm. wouldn't be so as bad as that is. The cat was a motherfucker. Like it bit me. Like, like, yeah. like, and, and look, I, I'm, not, I'm a guest at someone's home. I'm not antagonizing their pet. Okay. This, <laughs> this, is, this isn't when yeah, I was yeah. eight years old. I didn't kick a cat. I'm 27 years old or something like that. Like, <laughs> oh, I see you have a rather large orange cat. What a friendly fellow you were. I didn't know you had a cat. I thought you were just cleaning with eight gallons of ammonia. And so, like, <laughs> I, go to, <laughs> I go to pet the fucking cat. Maybe some ammonia perfume. Do you wash your laundry with ammonia by chance? <laughs> I thought you were just distilling ammonia in the back. I thought you were ammonia distributors or something. Do you dispose of bodies? <laughs> <laughs> Do you make smoke bombs? Do you make stink bombs here? Like, I don't know what it is. So, like, I go to pet her fucking cat, and it bit me. And, like, I don't think I bled. And if I did bleed, it was one of those bullshit things where, like, mm-hmm. you just kind of, like, rub it. But, like, dude, your animal just bit me. What the fuck? <laughs> like, what? Yeah, How yeah. did this happen? And, and I, then, when so, you said, like, you tried to befriend the cat, I'm like, that's totally the Kyle I know. And Kyle has befriended every animal that we've ever had. You know, that, that's what he does. Yeah, I like normal animals. people do that, and most dogs won't attack you for it. But cats can be – I've been to one friend's <clears> house <throat> ever who had cats and it didn't smell bad one ever every other person in my life the second second you step in you're like there's a cat here it's unpleasant it's offensive i don't like it i have a little sympathy for him too because like a a dog can pee on the carpet once and you you clean the carpet i guess so that you can convince yourself it's clean like you Mm -hmm. got nails whatever (laughs) um but that that doesn't 
it's not a lifetime permanent mistake. Something about cat urine and that ammonia, like it, it is a much tougher task to have a cat yeah. without a cat I, smell than a dog without a dog mm -hmm. smell. I'll never have dogs again without like hardwood floors because they're going to piss mm. on that fucking carpet at some point. And I'm not good at training dogs. <laughs> or throw up. <laughs> uh, or they're going to yeah. throw up. Or, or, or like take that crazy emergency shit three inches away from the hardwood. I'm like, why, why did you... Did you stand on the hardwood to get a good footing so you could shit <laughs> on the carpet for a second? <laughs> like, and he's just looking at me like, I'm so sorry. He's looking at me the same way I would look at you if I had shat in your living room. <laughs> he's, like, that's, that's what's so great about a dog. Kyle in the I, kennel. <laughs> a, cat, a cat could shit in your mouth and it would look at you with disdain. Like, yeah, eat it. Eat it. Yeah. I don't want to smell it anymore. Do Hope I have it makes to you sick. Hope it makes you sick <laughs> a I, when a dog like does something bad. And even if it's as mundane as tearing up a magazine in the living room, when you get back, you're like, hey, what, what, what have you done? And I, I love when like I see those videos, especially the dogs online, when they can't even look at the owner. They're just like, they're so ashamed. Like, no. They're so this ashamed. This happened like, a, like probably a year and a half ago now that my, my wife accidentally bought cat food and was like for my two oh. dogs and she was like well they they seem to love it they're they're i gave some to them and they love it before i realized it was cat food so we'll just feed them through this and i'm like yeah they love it it's cat food it's nothing but protein like this is gonna be way too much and they're they're like five month old puppies how, at I this didn't point know that how do you know that how do you yeah. know like because uh because cats are carnivores so it's a much higher protein content than omnivores get in dogs so it's like it, okay. it messes with their their tummy a bit and they're still puppies and mm -hmm. like i guess adult cat food looks the same as like puppy food in the in the amounts they are and she got up and went to work and i woke up at like you know, <laughs> a couple hours later just to one of my dogs doing that thing where he's like snuggling next to you but in a way where he's like, I need support. I need help. Like, I don't feel good. And I was like, oh, and I felt Teddy's mouth. And I'm like, it's all wet. It's met with wet with yellow stuff. That's not good. Oh. And I, I hear Fozzie out there. <laughs> <laughs> and I go out there and I, I shit you not. Like, I, it was like an angry text I sent to my wife later that day. Like, don't ever feed these dogs cat food again. Because I, it was like a like a, a Monty Python sketch of like the dogs walking around and Teddy would shit himself on the carpet and I would go to start cleaning that up and Fozzie would vomit on the carpet and the whole time <laughs> I, I'm, I'm picking them up and moving them onto the hardwood and then at one point I remember explicitly as I'm cleaning up the, I have pictures, I have to find the pictures on my phone <clears> because at one point it looked like like that post scene in Saving Private Ryan, like all the, the, the little bombs and everything on D-Day. So it was, there were six shits and like five vomits all at the same time. And I'm trying, I'm, they're doing it faster than I can clean it up. And I watched Teddy, like he's like shaky because he's vomited so much. And he walks over between like the, my, my kitchen hardwood and my carpet, my living room. And he makes it all the way, like Kyle said, and he goes, <laughs> right onto the carpet again it's just at this, at this point they vomited up everything it's just yellow foam i've already picked up all like the semi-solid ones it was it was an absolute nightmare i've never seen at that time combined they were 26 pounds and why they couldn't you put them outside I, they did a lot of it before I noticed when I got out there, but I thought that each time they were doing it, they were going to be done. And at this time, <laughs> and, and at this time, my my the right side fence of my backyard was like t was being replaced because it was rotted oh. out and they could climb through it. And so if I was going out there with them for many months until they got replaced correctly, I had to like keep an eye on them or they would try and run away. And so yeah, I couldn't snatch them there. up anyway. Fool yeah, me once, shame on you. Me. Fool me twice, shame on me. Where does fool me six times land? Fool me on this is your two dozen are your dogs? Times. Yeah. <laughs> are your Every dogs? Every couple small months, my you... wife asks to buy dogs again, and I always come down on that side. That no, that sounds like a fucking terrible idea. And like a story like that, that does. But that was like, one ow. day, and they brought a very net joy to my life. I, I like, and they like they're old enough now. Yeah, like they, cleaning up yeah. vomit makes you happy. It sounds like. Well, yeah. I, it was it was see, worth the problem is you got puppies. Like 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 yeah. I I my next dog is going to be and I I do this occasionally. Like I like like I go through these phases with everything. But like if I can some if I if I somehow late night end up on like the animal rescue website in my area and start looking at these fucking rescue dogs and they all have like like 
you know how if you look up look up a recipe online, they'll give you this whole fucking spiel that you don't mm-hmm. want to hear. You just want you don't you just want ingredients. I, I'm like, how much tomato sauce? And they're telling me about their fucking uncle. My great grandfather in Tuscany. Yeah, invented mm-hmm. fuck out of here. But it's the opposite when you're shopping for a dog. You want a story. So you're you're like I'm going through them, and this one motherfucker, this one fucking basset hound, <laughs> has no eyeballs, guys. Oh, it, like, like like I don't mean the dog's blind. I mean it doesn't have eyeballs. It has fucking holes in its skull. It is and blind. It, it's definitely blind. It, <laughs> I, I don't mean. I, and his but there's line. a difference. There's I'm a difference. Gonna, his timeline. My <laughs> timeline, not having eyeballs means you're blind. Um, <laughs> and, and and his story was like he he's like he's diabetic and incontinent, and we just rebuilt his fucking like um hip. <laughs> like like he's looking for his forever home. And I was like, oh that's my gonna take two God. months. Yeah. Oh it's gonna take God. a long that, time to train him. That, no, that's no. part of the in that's two months. He'll, he'll be, be dead. Dog. Yeah. He'll be dead. Is, are we certain? rebuilding him was the right humane move i love it i i mean if it's not painful anymore i i like it like like i, I don't want a blind dog though i don't want a handicapped mm-hmm. dog like like i was talking I, I had the same conversation today it's so weird i was like uh you know i told somebody i don't i don't want a handicapped pet because they make me feel bad mm-hmm. like especially those little <laughs> dogs with the fucking wheelchairs Oh yeah, those are so sick. Oh my god, and, and like like if if I watch one of those videos where like there's been a chihuahua dragging its fucking hind legs for for like six months, and then they hook it up with this badass little wheelchair, and you can see it. its little face light up when now it can keep up with the, with the other dogs, and like now it's one of the pack again instead of like this yeah. little thing that the had region. to crawl around and just cry all the time. And then I saw um the the thing that sparked this conversation though was a cat with no front legs. And so it just hops around like a kangaroo. Oh, that's kind that's of kinda novel. Cool. That's bad. And I was like, I li- we're all. I'm glad we're on the same page because I was like, you know what? I don't want a cat with four legs anyway. But a mini kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I would take a carnivorous. <laughs> I would take a carnivorous kangaroo though. Can like, you attach a pouch to this cat? I mean, you put, can, a, you put a little you backpack on that you fucker. Do. What's he gonna do? front pack I oh mean, he doesn't have arms to hold it on though yeah no that's, that's the crux of it that's why he's walking on like a. you gotta give him right. a fanny pack and put it in the front so he can be a little rue oh i like that fanny pack on a two-legged cat <laughs> hopping around <laughs> fucking that's bring a great me, idea do it fucking, we can he can carry my joints <laughs> Oh, <laughs> arrest the cat, Sammy. <laughs> those, those, those are his joints. Take him away. Who <laughs> the cat? I want to be in the universe where they do. It's got to be so bad for that cat, like long term. Like, no, 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 like the no, damage I, it does like, to its like structure, like hopping around like that. Like, how, like, how old is it before it like? Oh, you know, who like, fucking cares? The legs aren't working anymore, and you're like, <laughs> I got my oh. cat hopping around with my you drugs. Wheels on the front. I got my hat popping around with my drugs in a fanny pack, and the, the cops show up. But it's a black cat, so they take him in and anyway, like they, oh, they beat him up Christ. and take him away. <laughs> I mean, we, we've all seen the videos of dogs or of cops, like for no reason, just killing dogs when they go for like. That's a, true. A, yeah, they love just, killing I've dogs. Not seen that sort of thing. And sometimes, yeah. like it'll be. Like there, there, I've seen clips where it's like, okay, that that pit bull would have destroyed you. Like it was, it was coming to attack you. And other ones, it's like there's a lab sitting in the yard adjacent <laughs> to the door, and they're like, get out here, bang bang, or I'm gonna shoot your dog again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> or the dog is on a chain. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah. <laughs> that was a solved problem. Why did you have to shoot it? Why did you? Say, you know, it's a double solved problem. I guess. Exactly. Yeah, no, those guys. Those guys literally want to like kill it. something. It's very clear, and and it happens so often. I'm pretty sure they shot the dog at Ruby Ridge too. Yeah, they shot. That was the worst thing they did at Ruby Ridge. That's <laughs> that's not what I hear. Yeah. But but <laughs> you know maybe maybe I'd love to see that as a quote next to you. <laughs> like those like quote he, shots where it's got like FDR uh, being like, "We're gonna yeah. take down the fucking Nazis." The only thing we have to fear, like one of those kind of quote quotation things <laughs> under a famous figure, and it's just you, black and white. Like the worst thing that happened at Ruby Ridge was that dog they shot. Yeah, I like that one. I mean, that's no. They federal agencies and cops or whatever do seem to be very uh, trigger happy when it comes to shooting animals. Though I think they show up and they're like you know ready to do a thing 
And if there's not a thing to do, they're looking for a thing to do. They'll create a thing to do. Yeah. If there's not a problem to solve. Yeah. Really? Make one. I'm making this up, but it seems like a young cop problem. I don't picture a 30 year vet shooting dogs because they're trying to find cool shit to do. Yeah. They're over it. Probably not. Unless they are like the best dog killer on the force. <laughs> 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 he was the best. <laughs> We're not sending out Johnson for this bullshit. We have to keep him in lock for when the dogs come out. <laughs> Remember that guy who gave the terrible instructions like hands up and start crawling, hands up, crawl, hands up, crawl. Mm -hmm. The guy couldn't do both. Same. <laughs> the guy, he, got, he, he killed the guy for not following those terrible instructions. Oh, yeah. That guy just wanted to do shit that day. For you sure. Know, what what, was what do you think his, would have um, happened to that guy if he guard? had just? What do you think would have happened to that guy who was with the terrible instructions if he had just completely frozen? Do you think there's a the point lived. where the cop? It would have been a longer I, range shot. <laughs> oh, I don't know that if the perp froze. Yeah, 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 yeah. If, if he had just instead of following any instructions, which because because they were so difficult, mm -hmm. if he had just been like, "Sir, I'm going to lay here now." <laughs> what happens next it's up to you please don't kill me <laughs> you, <laughs> just lay there. you decide what you want me to do i'm right here yeah no but the guy was drunk which yeah is because i think like if that happened to me not drunk woody i'd be like dude i i feel like crawling and hands up are contradictory instructions I, you got to explain this to me and the problem is resolved but that guy was drunk and wasn't able to say things like that and stressed and and, and they yeah, were it's not just that, right? It's the situation. So they're not the other side isn't thinking super clearly either. So it's like I, that's what I was going you know, for with stress. I've followed I've followed police instructions before. I did it better than him. <laughs> yes. That's, I, I mean, like, 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 like like occasionally they're, they're I mean, like, clearly yeah, I don't alive. know, man. I've never been in that situation before, but this one it's like, nah, I've been there. I did what I was told. <laughs> I mean, they, they gave him like the equivalent of those like keeping black people from voting literacy tests <laughs> like <laughs> were they literally like it's so confusing i don't think i would have succeeded crawl towards me on the ground hands behind your back it's like Pat oh, your you head now you rub understand. your belly yeah <laughs> and now prepare to die <laughs> <laughs> tricks on you i've been doing that this whole time yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. That was a, nothing um, ever came of that shooting. Did that we, I, nothing ever came of that. That cop, that cop did, didn't get into any the trouble. Kyle Rittenhouse trials happening right now. I saw a little it of done? it yesterday. Uh, it's kind of it just leading off. There's some new footage that we've never seen before. There's like, I think it's CIA, literally CIA drone footage where you can see it from above, and um, so there's some new information that's coming out during the trial. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I'm still learning. I, I, my opinion hasn't changed too much. It's all down to that first shooting, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like it was an area that was like cleared by the police and sort of What's made that? and written house. The man is just really passionate about protecting used cars. That's I think that's what it comes down to. He, he, uh, what do you, what do you, some Americans still care about their communities? It's uh it's a real <laughs> it's a real cry and shame. Um, to see that you're not amongst amongst them. Um, <laughs> if you wouldn't hold a spear in front of a used Toyota dealership, you're not even an American. <laughs> when I stand in front of Jim Chronic Toyota, I'm ready to die. God damn it! If you want to burn that? <laughs> you want to burn that Tacoma? Burn me first. That's not what that I Tacoma. Say. Yeah, That's I'm what defending this place. That would fuck me and try and trick me into getting like extra financing. <laughs> yeah, they would, they would <laughs> tell me. They would sell me perma started. Yeah, you show um, up and defend the dealership. We'll give you five percent off your next purchase. Let's. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's even better than the factory warranty. <laughs> <laughs> let's do. Uh, let's do ignorant gambling then, uh, which is the the, the <laughs> what I'm going to call this this new new game, um, which is where we gamble on what we think will happen in the Kyle Rittenhouse Court. trial, knowing very little about the situation, because um, I, I don't want to do any research. That was, that was I, like years ago now, or two years ago, maybe. Yeah, I'm fuzzy maybe. on the facts now. So I, 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 I think he goes free. I think he goes free. I think he's all good. I think he, I think he goes to jail. Oh, perfect bet. You guys are on the opposite sides. How yeah. much money are you putting down on this, gentlemen? I don't want to go sissy on this, so I'm going to say five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's got to be. It's got to have a little. It's got to be goosed up a little I, more I was, than that. I, <laughs> I'm not going to bet. I didn't one know that was going to be a joke. 
when he said, I don't want to be sissy on this, I was like, damn, are we about to bet $500 on this? Because I'm not that sure. I was was like, I don't want to bet $500, but I guess. (laughs) I'm not going to back down now. You can't look like a bitch. Well, Jesus Christ. Um, Okay, how about 50? It's all about the trophy anyway. Well, I'm not involved, uh, so I can I can amp it up as much as. All right, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'll I'll bet five bucks. How about five uh, percent of your net worth? Let's, <laughs> let's, not, let's not get crazy here. Now, this is how high about, risk. <laughs> um, no. Uh, how about how about five dollars? And uh, I bet that Kyle Rittenhouse goes free because I caught about. I'm not exaggerating. Thirty seconds of his defense yesterday, or what I took to be his defense, and it seemed pretty good. I'll go this way. I'm going to add a little uh, tie. If he serves less jail time than Kyle, it's a tie. If he serves more, then I win. So he needs to I go. He needs to get a jail a length a, a, a stay that's more than two months. Not that's not. What he's, I, I think if he serves less time than me, I win. Oh no! You've just increased your thing. I added a tie condition because it was jail or not, and now you're trying to to push into my territory. Yeah, five dollars. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's five bucks. That's right. I feel like yeah. it's fair. I'm, uh, you have to give Woody odds. But because what the reason I say yeah, that now is, I want odds. Now I here's want why I say that. Here's why I say that. Come into my territory. No, 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 no. Here's why I say that. Because because if they. If he's if he's not guilty on like I don't even know the charges, but let's say he's not guilty on like murder, assault with a deadly weapon, but he's guilty of like negligent discharge of a firearm, mm-hmm. and they give him like some community service, I think I still win. Like community if they get him, sure, but it's if about they get him, the length of jail time. Was your sixty or fifty six? Sixty. Days? I, I believe it was fifty eight or sixty days. It was one or the other. All right, so I'll, we'll go to 60. He needs yeah. to get sentenced to more than 60 days. I win. Less than 60 days, nobody wins. Zero, Kyle wins. Or it may have been exactly, exactly 60, 60. days. I, no, 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 no. What it was was I, was I was sentenced to 60 days, but the first day and the last day count. Okay. And Can so the first day, I 58 full days and the, either oh, the I other see. two. Yeah, so the morning of and the evening of for fifty nine nights. Yeah, because that's how that worked. Because like the day I got there, um, I checked in at like eleven a.m. or noon, maybe I think around noon. And uh, the day I left, I, I think I got out at like ten a.m., eleven a.m., something like that. Zach says three murders and two gun charges. Interesting. Yeah, gun charges. I, I don't think you typically go to jail for that. We'll see. But um, yeah, it, it depends on they are. I didn't realize he killed three. I thought he killed two and had a um, an injury. Yeah, I thought that. No, I thought the same. Quite the hero. Um, like like when. Well, he, when I he, don't know about hero. We'll see. Quite we're going to find out. Quite the marksman is undeniable. Uh, How many that shots guy did he fire? To, I don't know. He fired like five shots, and disabled three people. It was really oh, impressive. Fuck. I mean, in a high stress situation, well, like he's getting headshots from his ass shooting upwards. Well, that yeah, was people, uh, he didn't people always ask the head there. I don't think. I think people he was always getting, ask about. Yeah, go ahead. Guests, um, you know, like, 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 would you have OJ Simpson as a guest? And it's like, of course, we would have mm-hmm. OJ Simpson as a guest. But this Kyle Rittenhouse guy seems like fucking plutonium, right? I don't even think I'd want to talk to him. Really? Why not? What, what makes him so I untouchable? Think, I feel like it's a super controversial uh, thing. Oh no. Controversy and normally, right here on is, no, like, 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 yeah, like, I was gonna no, say, wait, the jizz biz, Kyle. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, but the jizz biz is funny, but but shooting black people isn't. Did he shoot? I black don't think people? he shot any black people. I think he shot three white people. Really? Yeah. What are so we, 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 uh, When this happened, we watched it, <laughs> and because uh, I remember, like, we we watched that clip of uh of uh. Him like blowing that guy's bicep off, the guy who was coming in with a skateboard. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Like, yeah. Shot his his bicep off. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But you guys have to remember what side you're in on this because so many of these bets don't get resolved for like eight months, and then no one remembers what side they were on, and everyone says they were on the winning side. <laughs> well, so, we've got video evidence right here. There's always people to like keep up with this sort of thing for us. That's, that's it's been the best two years since it. I've said this, but uh, so I'll repeat it again. The the next two sh- victims are all about the first one, right? If the first one was self-defense, 
than the next two were also, right? Then they're just crazy people also coming after him. If the first one was a murder, then the other two people were heroes taking out an active shooter. It's it's all whether or not the first one was justified. I thought we all watched it and we're like, yeah, I don't remember even seeing video of the first thing really, but like the second two where there were people trying to attack him, I think we all came down saying like, yeah, he was being attacked. He was being attacked, but let's say I'm a school shooter, right? And it's like, all right, I shot one I kid. I'll admit that was bad. Mm -hmm. But the, after that, I was just defending myself. Wasn't he running away? And they, they were... Yeah, same thing with a school shooting. Right? Like, like, you know, like, all right, so I killed the, the first kid. And then after that, all these teachers came after me. It's just self-defense. <laughs> I see. I was a block from. away. Yeah. And, and the, that gym teacher, man, the cardio on that guy. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, like, whether you or not they're heroes the going teacher. for an active shooter or whether or not they're a mob attacking him is based on whether the first one was justified. According Do they to get more footage from the, the CIA drone on the first one? Why have why have none of yeah, us you even get to see... said anything about the fact that there was a CIA drone present? Whoa, a yeah, I bet that's it rare. A, yeah. yeah, no. It, it, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess there would be, right? Like, it, it's there was like a big planned protest. Rittenhouse wasn't there by happenstance. He had like a medic bag on, an AR-15. Probably he wasn't was even there for him. The street, Probably there for the dealership. The <laughs> Looking for so, like, Everything about this, this guy now. just screams like winner, and <laughs> and, 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 and definitely and, having a show now, <laughs> and, and, and and public servant. That's that's what I that's what I'm hearing. You're telling me so. that uh, what do, do we do we know roughly what time it was? I think maybe 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. at night. No clue. You know, it's a, it's at night. Yeah, it, it, self defense it's, hour. It's a it, it's probably a week it we uh, a, a week night weekend night whatever. You know this this young man could be off doing drugs. Or, uh -huh. uh, or uh, you know, do, or harming Corollas. You know, he, he, could be, he could be out there roughing up Corollas. You know, He's being a miscreant. Look, look, look at that! Look at that! Look at that bright young man. Um, and, and, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't look dim. At you all. know what? You know what? You know what? Young That's Kyle Rittenhouse does on a. I'm gonna make it up a Tuesday evening. He's out uh, there with his medic bag. Okay, walking mm -hmm. the streets trying to help people, and That's and it. yes, he has a firearm that he's not supposed to have. Yeah, um, sometimes people don't need the medic bag, and you know. You, well, you want to still be able to help. Well, one sets you know, the other up nicely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to feel obsolete out there. You, know? oh, you don't need any bandages? Well, how about now? Yeah, how he about will. Now? <laughs> Better be start running. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I guess I just don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. I, I feel like the legal system is, uh, is, is not too different than the judging and boxing. <laughs> uh, I disagree. I think this, I don't know what the judgment's going to be, but I do think it will be right. And the reason I say that is there's so much video. Like when you saw New York Times like reconstruct everything, and actually, um, I think it was Ben Shapiro did a really good job on it too, just from the right and the left. They both came to the same sort of conclusion of the order of events and what happened because there was so much video. They all put it together and you could see this trial comes along and they add some drone footage. Which shows an aerial view of like sort of who went to who. Like they're 60 feet apart. Mm -hmm. One guy went to the other to, you know, like engage. And that matters to me. That kind of says guy? a thing. I wish I remembered with confidence. I would have said it. No. I don't I don't remember. That's an important part of it. <laughs> yeah. No. I wanna I wanna say Rittenhouse, yeah, Rittenhouse, if I'm right, went to the guy he killed to like engage him, protect cars, I would I would say. And then that guy didn't buckle like he expected and chased Rittenhouse, who then shot him. I believe Rittenhouse was originally offering him some water. <laughs> Get the fuck he, out of here. He was he was he was, he was his, trying. Rittenhouse he was like, as a trained Jack. as a trained Eagle Scout and medic is fully aware <laughs> that's a big look dehydrated. I can see that's from the across biggest threat, the first threat, dehydration. Dehydration. By the light of that Molotov <laughs> cocktail flying by your head, I could see you look dehydrated. So he I said, I? "Gentlemen, <laughs> gentlemen, I noticed that you've been around those dumpster fires and uh, all night. You've been you know? yelling you, a lot. You, I see you're drinking, drinking a forty there. That alcohol is not serving to hydrate you. Would you? Would you like mm -hmm. some water? And they attacked him. Um, mm -hmm. with you're going to hydrate." Today. One way or the other. <laughs> he was trying to hydrate them. <laughs> and if anyone should get odds, it's me because I, I think that like the media has already convicted this guy long ago. Um I, I, I you know they were like making that. a big deal when like um 
uh, that coffee company had like some of the like management or something like that took pictures with Kyle or something like that. Coffee uh, company. They, yeah. I don't I don't to it. yeah. Was it black rifle coffee? Might've been, might've been, <laughs> <sighs> you know, that's interesting. They're like, I, I love uh, Richard Ryan, but they're almost my pillow adjacent in there. Like our customers are Republicans and uh, that's just what we market to. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> Both teams drink coffee. Both yeah. teams drink coffee. Okay. Like, like, but they like, don't both drink Black Rifle coffee. No, they don't. No. I guess not. Uh, <laughs> we need to start a company called but, No But if you're Rifle selling coffee, coffee, you want everybody. I, I just don't know why being divisive. Look, I bet they sell a lot of fucking coffee. It just never made sense to me to have like a politically divisive coffee brand. And I'm, I'm, I'm positive that's not what they set out to be. Okay, there is there is not a company called No Rifle Coffee. So we can, we can manage Lock it down. the other side of this. No, that's our next yeah. merch idea. No Rifle yeah. Coffee. And instead of like flavoring your coffee, you just get one of those pills you guys are pushing these days. Yeah. For the ejaculate. Yeah. yeah. You'll you'll get you get a couple shots that. of that in there. Would you, would you like some like milky white out of like a big pump? <laughs> would, you like some, uh, would you like some ejaculate enhancement? Because right. if if you would like like two or three bottles, then we can uh, send you the link and you could purchase them. Uh, off your <laughs> That's very kind of you. Like a five percent discount. Awesome. Ten percent. Ten percent. We can send you the link and you can buy some. <laughs> That's fucking funny. <sighs> I do. I I should ping him up. I want a, a silly Ooh. amount. Like. It, I think he'd do that for us. Well, what's hey, a, what's get... another stupid name for a like safety on caught now because that's still a gun. What what's a an anti gun product we could make and take advantage of this to be the foil to black rifle coffee? Hands what do people coffee. who who don't like guns like? How about, an armed coffee? Hands up coffee? Conscientious objection coffee. Don't shoot coffee. Don't flower shoot. barrel coffee. Um, no, that sounds like uh, pussy uh, coffee. Pussy coffee. <laughs> that, we might be stepping on uh, that celebrity that's like selling pussy scented candles. Gwyneth so, oh, Paltrow. That's I yeah. That's yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, she's an Avenger. Been for a long. Toes. <laughs> She'll she's, kick your ass. She's an Avenger? Yeah. yeah, she's Tony Stark's girl, so she gets a... Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know if she's literally an Avenger. She's in the Avengers. They gave her one of those suits. And it's yeah, like right, but are they all one. Avengers? She I don't know. She showed up at the end, though. She did. Yeah. So the trouble is she's so effective. Like like Tony Stark took a couple movies before he was good at operating that hey, thing. Did they retcon the events of Iron Man 3? Like I mean clearly they did to some extent cuz remember at the end of Iron Man 3 he destroyed all of his suits and he was like no more Iron Man. Obviously that couldn't stay. But remember she got those powers. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, she had like superpowers well. where like she was like impervious to fire. And I think you know like what I her do fists remember? were glowing. Dune. I was gonna I <laughs> was about to say that. Yeah, I wish you'd watch oh. Dune. Yes, you had talk about had, Dune, Kyle. You had homework to watch Dune for a week now. You had enough time today to watch Dune twice, and you <laughs> said right, so that wasn't enough I, time. This is gross exaggeration. So, so <laughs> What, oh, yeah? what, what actually happened was yesterday evening at 8 p.m. You said, hey, you should watch Dune so that we can talk about it tomorrow. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll get right on that. I watched for that show, the PKM. Oh, oh well, then I'm, I'm misremembering. Um, <laughs> yes, don't go against my memory, Kyle. <laughs> You'll never win. <laughs> You'll never win. <laughs> I, 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 one way or the other. His I, timeline, I, he's always uh, right. One way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> my apologies. I, I'll tell you what actually happened. I... I, I I looked at the movie and I really didn't feel like I was in the mood to watch it. And I oh. didn't realize. And, and, and also I didn't realize that like anybody would really want to talk about it. I thought maybe we just touch on it a little, but now you've kind of made it a big topic thing. So I will step <laughs> away. If you guys want to talk about dude, cause I haven't watched it and I do want to watch Ooh. it. Cause I'm excited to watch it. We could actually do that. You know what? We'll just drop the spoilers now tag. So you can come back safely when we're finished. Or I mean, you could no, no, no. I'll step away. You'll continue to. Sp oh, I see what you mean. Because that's I'll, when you know to come back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll text I'm, you. Okay. I'm just gonna go over here so I can like see the. Right. I'm gonna go. The back porch is behind me. I'm gonna go out there. Sure. So Taylor, you yeah. watched Dune, and you had a uh, not too far in different opinion than me, but different. What did you think? Yeah. So like one 
overall, I was not blown away by it. It, you know, just high level first. Like, it kept my attention, and it has a very deep world with a lot of, like, kind of, you know, tendrils going out to different things. And it, it's clearly, like, there's a lot of depth to it, and I liked that. I, You said you thought it went on a little too long. Like, I disagreed, like, totally the opposite way because I felt like they were – they would introduce – like ancillary groups to like the families and then they would immediately like act like that was a foregone conclusion and you should know who these people are or like the prophecy would come about or like like the 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 seers when they go in there and there's a bunch of references to an old fucking prophecy and i was hoping like oh yeah i want more backfill i want more backstory on how this effectively a coven of witches is behind the scenes manipulating the politics of the families and then you know two quarters or two quarters three quarters of the way through <laughs> the, that there's just another family introduced on the side four of eighths the, of the way through <laughs> four eighths of the way through <laughs> sure <laughs> they they bring in like that third family because it had just been the two you mm-hmm. know the the antagonist family and then atreides and then they're like oh and now there's the sakinian family who's coming to help this other and it's like okay well i wish Not i knew more about I forgot the name of them, but I, I, this other family with the really tough Sarkin, fighters is Sarkonin or something. Like that. Sarkonin? Sarkonin? Sarkonin. Let me jump yeah, in yeah. for a second. They're Hard not a, a little bit. differently. Yeah. If I'm watching no. a movie and then right. you spend whatever, like 12 minutes giving me shit that's not on the test, right? That's just ancillary and then we never visit it again, you've wasted my time, right? When I tell you what happened in that movie, I don't cover the bullshit that's not on the test. I tell you the central, like, core timeline. I feel like if you just shoot straight up the middle and, and skip all the side quests on Dune, this is a 60 second description for a two and a half hour movie of what happened. And that to me is a sign of a poorly done movie. I, I just don't think that they fleshed out the world enough. Like there, there's clearly a lot of depth there when they would reference the coven or that third family, not the Harkonnen or the Atreides, the other one. Like it's not a family. Hakkinen, Harkonnen, isn't that one? Aren't you talking about Sardaukar? The Sardaukar, that was the third family. They're not a family. Okay, well then, see, I didn't know who that was. They were bringing in soldiers from some other banner, and I was yeah. like, I wish I had a little backstory on who these guys are and why they're against uh, the Do you Atreides. Want the five too. second backstory on it? Yes, I would actually. They are the elite imperial guard. They're okay. essentially the emperors. The, so this is <clears throat> the the feudal structure of this is like an emperor with a bunch of lords, and the the the, the lords are under the emperor, but they all mm-hmm. have their own power. So this is the emperor's elite troops being brought in, which is a big part of the plot because the emperor's elite troops are not supposed to be being used against any individual house. So those being mm-hmm. brought in is really indicative of the emperor is supporting this kill this kill of the Atreides family, essentially. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I I would have loved to get a little more info on the emperor I'm, I'm sure they're holding that back on purpose to keep like suspense up for all that because you didn't really get any empire any direct empire look uh but yeah it, it just felt like there's so much density to this story they could have made it a six movie series and explored a lot of this a lot more but it felt almost like they were rushing they could have really? made it a six movie series and i would have liked it maybe even more like it sounds like i'm asking for less i'm just saying if you're gonna have a lame little branch that doesn't go anywhere that's worse than no branch and not as good as a great strong branch. I really um, like that. Again. I like the film a lot. And then, mm. although I feel I'm getting more pushed towards that direction as I hear criticism against it, because a lot of things you're saying I, mm-hmm. I don't find, I didn't find it to be criticism. And I liked some of the shortcuts they took with explaining things because there's so much backlog of thing to kind of get through that i like that they were moving the movie forward while still giving hints of these things and i thought they did a lot of that visually like i thought like the the shots of like the ships were really cool it, it like gave this sense of like future tech without and like divergent from our humanity kind of tech right like real alien looking stuff but still in this kind of future to like to, to suggest mm-hmm. that this stuff is divergent and different and then like I don't know like i liked a lot of that i, I when i my, oh. my biggest complaint of that initially was there's a big part of this world that didn't get explained in there somewhere mm-hmm. which was along the lines of you know technology is all all person centric in this world right yeah like ai computing machines aren't allowed anymore and there's there's a whole history with that and that that world of that and i thought that was really central to that because sometimes you look at the shit and you're like why are they flying this how can that ship run like underneath the ship without getting shot why are these people doing these things as opposed to a computer doing it if they're flying around in spaceships and i felt like that for me like was a bit of a whole logically if you mm-hmm. don't know the backstory of that was never explained. But I thought by and large, they did a really great job of, for me, situating this family structure, this this feudal system in space in the future 
with these cool scenes of like showing like the sizes of these things and like the I don't know I loved it I loved the I, I had I like one. your take on it. There's some things that y- you saw in it that I didn't. For example, I, I, what I was gonna say before you started was, you know who loved this movie? This movie. This movie fucking loves itself <laughs> with its grand CGI, 45, 90 second, like rolling into watching the 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 ship the room the landscape whatever and i'm like oh my fucking god i get it your cgi budget was high i get it i get it but now you're like no woody they're trying to tell you something quickly about what the tech looks like and it's like okay all right maybe maybe filthy saw through a different lens same Um, with the infrastructure though right like that's those huge shots of these of these massive buildings with like this imperial architecture it's supposed to be the feudal stuff right this is supposed mm-hmm. to be the power and wealth of these noble families and imperial imperial structures compared to everything else out there i thought it was just like such a cool shortcut with this and and that's to your point neat. about the that's, movie i thought the movie was jacking off to pictures of itself <laughs> <laughs> that's how i interpreted it but i see what you see now yeah, and uh, I, I watched a uh, cool I watched the uh, interview with the um, I think God, it must be the director, right? Who to, uh-huh. to, who put this together? And and this is a love letter to the to the book, right? This is a guy who's like a huge fan of this, who was trying to do it justice, mm-hmm. you know, to like put like the imagery of the book and the story into into film. And I thought it did an incredible job with that, by and large. I so, thought there was yeah. something cool about the universe. Actually, the the combat is the thing about Dune that I like the most. And for people who don't know the universe at all, this is what's up. They wear these shields during combat that don't interfere with you. They're they're not like um, a suit of armor. It's like an electric suit of armor almost, such that bullets and fast-moving things, even a fast-moving sword, wouldn't penetrate this. But slow-moving things do penetrate it. So you can interact with the world as if you weren't wearing this thing. You could pick up a ball and throw it like normal. But... If I were to shoot a gun, then your shield would block it. So the way that they do combat is they have to like, I don't know, like sort of position before submission. Like they have to get the guy in a spot and then slowly push the dagger through the shield. And it means that like that's how combat happens. A a gun doesn't work in this universe because the shield stopped fast moving things. And from a like viewer perspective, standpoint it's like oh i like this because it it is hard to rationalize how jedis are the most badass people in star wars when it would seem like a dude with a blaster or shucks four dudes with a blaster would eventually get through his blaster deflecting Mm -hmm. you know uh, lightsaber but in this you really do get on board with it it's like yeah yeah that gun's things like that they don't work that well you can't help but imagine that like with that much technology though they'd come up with something like like something that can penetrate it. You like know what they should have had? There's Here's always the escalation as Here's you go Woody, on. Here's Woody, Woody the uh, playing Q, you know, from James Bond. Mm-hmm. Um, a gun that shoots a net, right? Just like hold the guy down. Like a, a, a net with the weights on the end that traps him, and then you can slow kill him. That would be a really effective range weapon. That might. That actually, the, the, like I'm, I, I, I buy into like the... You know, that, that's just the universe. Like, they don't have guns, and that's probably for the best, like, to keep the the, the fighting better and more intense. Yeah. It, it does. But, like, something I didn't like is when they get hit and it flashes red around them. Like, it is a very, like, I was watching that top-down part of the battle where they're all fighting, and it's like, it really is just a, a mishmash blur of blue and red at a couple points. And it's like, I'm not even able to like see the people swinging. It's just kind of mushy. No, no, no. So that so was distracting. I think it, it sounds like you didn't notice blue means the shield stopped it. Red means the shield's been penetrated. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just oh, like, it was a top down battle. And so you're seeing like a bunch of blue and red. And it was like disorienting where it's like, I'm more focused on the colors flashing than I am trying to like watch somebody's okay. sword or something like that. So, so I'm I, seeing the red as a clue that people are dropping on the battlefield. But think of, like, think mm-hmm. of what this does for like both cinematography and like storytelling. And then also what the implications of this world are, right? Because there's none of this, because they've gone away from computing and they try to do this by the betterment of a person. So they have like these human computer type, the Mentax mm-hmm. stuff, right? Which are these super, you know, the superhumans essentially. And the whole Bene Gesserit thing is breeding the Superman kind of deal. Mm-hmm. This is all of, and then the shields make it so individual combat is a realistic thing again in the future. You know, mm-hmm. like all of these things mm-hmm. are about then like hero figures. The whole world is structured around impressive entities right the impressive leader of this family who's trained in all these things capable of all these things individually 
changes things. And the whole film, I mean, first of all, that's really good. That sets up a really good stage for storytelling because then you have these heroes that are kind of ridiculous in some movies, have a bit more sense in this world. And then second, the whole structure of everything in that supports it, which is so cool to like watch and see that. So I, I feel like I, mean, I like hearing about Dune more than I like watching Dune. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, to watch it is yeah. just to watch slow CGI scenes unfold for two and a half hours. Oh. Have you like the, even the, like the like? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, so have you read the books? You seem to like yeah. have a, a deep knowledge. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I read the books as a kid, and then uh, I listened to them again with my wife. Uh, and How old like, were you know, when you like read the years. books? Oh, God, I don't remember now. Yeah, Young, I read the books younger. when I was too young to read them. I was in middle uh, school, and you know, I don't get it. Yeah. You know who I liked as a character who I hated in the original Dune because he was disgusting is the head of House Harkonnen, who like floats around the Baron. Like I, I liked him a lot. Like I watched the first Dune a couple of years ago on Kyle's recommendation. He's like, just go into it knowing that it's horrible and oh, it's just so you're you're watching it because it's silly. Like don't take it seriously. And like that guy, he's like got like pustules and boils going off. But they got that guy from um, Chernobyl. I don't know him from other stuff, but that actor from Chernobyl, and he's got that grizzled voice where he's we're going to do right. It. We're going to take House of Trades and, and it's like, yeah, okay, this guy, I'm he's not a goofy fucking idiot like the old version of him. He's actually like pretty imposing. And and I in the first one, like when he when that guy would like float at someone, it was like an unintimidating bubble almost. But this guy's like, even though he's like a big fat, disgusting blob, he's like a very powerful big fat disgusting blob who's like floating towards you with authority. And so I thought that they did a good job mitigating that silliness from the previous one and making it intense. Yeah, I liked him. He's menacing. He's a he's an mm -hmm. actual villain as opposed to a clown now, which is yeah. really nice. Yeah. yeah, the first one, it's like he's like having trouble wiping his ass, like spinning around like it's Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, and they have to like <laughs> rope him back down to clean him. God, this the first one, one was so bad. You know, yeah, <laughs> it was rough. So I'm I'm really excited about this. I'm hoping this is the start of a series. I, I I mean, it's going to be based on you know how it does, right? This is the decision mm -hmm. about whether or not they make more of these. This is always designed to be essentially beginning of a series of these and i hope they do because I, I thought the first one it went on a bit long for me overall and it was very visual like parts of the story i thought dragged a little bit for these visuals but the visuals in context like but it required a lot of extra context right for, for this to be so cool but for me they were really good i was really i left that really impressed with that that film which it doesn't happen a lot mm -hmm. to me when okay. i'm watching this so well it looks like they're already <clears throat> planning three and good. they split the first novel into two which i'm sure you you must have noticed so yeah, hopefully they'll parse it out even more. Maybe have four or five movies. It's a cool I universe. Think the next ones might be better because the first one has a lot of like. Ever tell a story like if I were to tell you a story about Formula One? Well, first I need to tell you thirteen things about Formula One you don't know already, mm -hmm. and now you'll understand why this is interesting. Dune had that same problem to solve. It's like I need to explain to you the shields, the tech, the families, this, that, and the other thing. By and movie they still two, miss shit. <laughs> by, yeah. by movie two. They can just be like, and here's what happens next. And that's it. Just give me the good shit that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So maybe it'll be great. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I guess I'm like the masses in that I enjoy a movie that has a big universe. You know, I, I enjoy sure. show me another universe. Show me Lord of the Rings. Show me Game of Thrones. Show me whatever. And Marvel. Um, I'm, I'm digging your entire mu universe. I like your rules. Let's, I'm, I'm here. But, mm -hmm. uh, Anyway, so now that we know the universe's rules, maybe next movie will flow better. Yeah, yeah. I so. I but need to read the, the books. Okay, one more, one more example from this, Woody, for um, the, that world and the universe for this, right? Because you bring that up. You know, um, so this is a big spoiler now. So if you haven't seen this movie, sorry, I'm going to actually be specific about it. You know the attempted assassination scene where mm -hmm. they're trying to kill Paul mm -hmm. and there, there's an actual guy buried in the wall to do that? That's That's more of the lack of computers why wouldn't this just be a drone they sent off in this because there are no drones in this universe there's no autonomous things like this so it's literally a guy who's who's expected to die there and just to stay dedicated enough to that family for whatever hold they have over him to stay and attempt to assassinate this guy by manually controlling this device to go after him kind of deal it's just like even hmm. that like doesn't make any sense outside of like the rest mm -hmm. of the framework for why that would be true. But when you get like why that would be true there, it's a lot more, it's something like more of an interesting scene, at least to me. So, I don't something know. that okay. was that like, I was watching it with my wife and this like jumped out at her. She's like, there's like house Harkonnen and house Atreides. And then there's just this guy named like Tucker Alamo who's, who's out there like fighting. And it's just a disjoint. What was that guy's name? The, oh, the, Duncan. 
Duncan, du- I think it's Duncan, Idaho, right? Duncan, Idaho. Yeah, close enough to Tucker, I- uh, Alamo. But Duncan, Idaho was such a bizarre like little throwback. I was hoping they would give an example of why his name is Duncan, Idaho. Because it, you know what I mean? There are fantasy names. Like if some guy named Alan was in the, <laughs> the nine Lord of the Rings members, that would stand out like a sore thumb. Like Aragorn, Gimli, and Alan. <laughs> like you know, it, would, it would be disjointed and so all these cool fantasy names and then fucking you know but paul so, paul is not much of a fantasy name either right that's true but that's a normal name where it's like okay that's just a guy named paul in the universe but you know tucker alamo that that was a bit disjointed or whatever his name is now i'm not going to be able to remember his name ever okay duncan idaho <laughs> that's what it is yeah. <laughs> but yeah i'll i'll tell kyle he can come back all i right. i really Filthy. enjoyed that where are you living now I'm not trying I'm to dox s- you. Sorry, I said this last time I was here too. I'm on uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, right now. So, Iowa. for the long haul. Oh, I liked Iowa. <clears throat> I just was there a little bit, but yeah, I was cool. I like it more than I would have guessed. Yeah, I bought a house out here. So. Oh yeah, and are you in? Uh, you're in the house now. You have proper internet. All that uh, I do no longer in fiber a, that is here. You're no longer in a depression chamber <laughs> <laughs> in a local office building. No, oh. no. Escaped the office building and at home finally for streaming for sure. So that's funny. Like even as a streamer, you had to escape the corporate life for <laughs> <laughs> it, it did make it it did make it that extra step of miserable for sure. Like anytime like you're doing this, you're like, okay, well, at least I like my job, I work from home, and you're like traveling to an office there, and you're just like, oh no. Like you're so miserable. <laughs> I gotta pop in your stream and ask the same question every day. <laughs> <laughs> you could start with where are you living now, filthy? Where where are you? And then do it, it again. Change. And again it always changes. This is like the first time I've been in the same season. place twice in a row. It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's yeah. good because that was genuinely depressing that time after the show where you flipped it around and showed that thin office window where you look out that into an even more soulless room. It's because I know exactly how that oh. is sitting in that <laughs> office and looking out that window and being like, God, if there were a blade or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> like, how brutal. is this different than minimum security prison? I had all yeah. the motion sensors too for the lights and I would go in because I'd stream on the weekends and no one else would be there on the weekends except me. So I, I would I would like arrive in the because I was doing those during the winter months. I'd arrive, mm-hmm. it'd be dark. I'd go in, all the lights would shut down after I came in. So they light up as I walked in and shut down as I like got in there. And then I'd come out and I, you know, I'd come out for like water or something in the middle of the day and there'd be no one in the office oh. and it's just all dark in there. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh, God. whenever I had to work long <laughs> hours, you know, like like you work and like dinner comes and goes and then somewhere around 8 p.m. all the lights turn off around you and you're like oh, trying to get up to turn back on and then like the, the the HVAC changes so you have to like manually find the you can press a button on these little uh, support columns to turn the HVAC back on so your little section of the building is properly heated or cooled and uh, it and then it only lasts like 30 minutes or so. Then you have to do it again. It's, it's, it's every like 30 minute reminder that you shouldn't be there. Yeah. <laughs> that no one else is here. It's just you working by yourself. It, oh, it's crushing. God. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Thankfully, lots you're, of people you're are never going back about, to that. You're reminiscing about corporate America? About yeah, uh, Filthy's old position where he had to sit in that office. And Woody and I were saying how, how, how much that it. stinks and we get it. And like how... <laughs> So many people, especially like millennials and younger, are not going back to offices like they they will they will quit before they do it because there is no reason. There's genuinely no reason. I have it. So so right now, the balance of power has shifted towards the employees. Um, The economy is actually very good. Unemployment is 4.7%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is at an all-new high. I promise you, if Trump were president right now, Republicans would be banging the gong about how fantastic things are. I bet. Uh, but um, th- those are the realities, that unemployment is super-duper low and staff is in short supply. So that staff has recognized their advantage. You know, I think um, last I looked, the... Uh, the fuck is John Deere? What am I? I'm getting it wrong. The tractor people. Kyle, yeah, John Deere. You got is it. it John Deere? Okay, mm-hmm. I don't know why I can't think of it. John Deere. They went on strike. Their latest offer was to double their pay and, and increase their benefits. That's great. I thought it was the the increase. They were doubling the increase offer. 
Oh, maybe that. All right. Well, you know, when you read headlines, you don't get fully informed. So, <laughs> I don't know. So, I didn't. I just read a headline too. So, but I agree because yeah, it did sound like I, I think I did a double take. I'm like, what? Their offer was just to double their pay? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> all right. All right. Well, anyway, um, employees everywhere are recognizing their advantage and asking for more, which is smart. I applaud them. But uh, someday the unemployment rate won't be 4.7% anymore and they might get people to come back to the office. That's where all that mm. was headed. Yeah. I've been seeing I, some like some interesting stuff where it's like they'll like you'll see companies being like there's a worker shortage, you know, so you know Chipotle won't be able to get this done for you or there's only two people working and like I think it's maybe Michigan or some other state instead of them like <clears throat> raising wages to get people back they're like now we're hiring people as young as 14 and it's like oh, we, they would rather go back to child labor than pay people something more fair specifically 14 year olds weren't allowed to work past a certain time of day i don't know what it is in new jersey i know it's 11 because that it impacted me it's just because the motion sensors can't spot them they're too small <laughs> yeah the so uh, back on. no good they're changing the laws to be like all right now kids can work until any time of day and <laughs> <laughs> like any number of hours forget the 12 hour day I, is, that, hour is day. that gonna be good for the film industry i didn't mm. consider that so there's gonna be a bunch of like uh, new diehard movies coming out with like a 14 year old star no no no, no. <laughs> but, but, but like like whenever you've got a kid in your movie like it's a real problem like dealing with that's why so many twins end up being like child actors and uh b because mm. you get to work them for twice as long yeah and the director gets access to two children now yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, was, that was good <laughs> or producer whatever weinstein was <laughs> there, there needs to be a word for menage producer. a trois that involves two children oh, oh it's a fucking felony <laughs> <laughs> you going to jail how about an um, ice cream sandwich that is pretty absurd though just being like yeah we're not raising our pay we're just gonna uh start hiring 14 year olds a pet a trois yeah. All right. which i Pat do not um yeah i oh. i that is a <laughs> corporate friendly way of dealing with that problem. I, I, torn. I know we can't <laughs> gloss over that, that Zach came up with. Woody asked, what do you call a three-way with two children? And Zach said, a pedo toi. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a sick line. <laughs> pedo toi. It's, a, it's oh, great at producing God. your show. Oh, <laughs> that was in the blanks. That, that man has three job. children, folks. <laughs> <laughs> all nine months apart yeah <laughs> this is more than tech issues hot load um oh. what was i gonna say i lost my train of thought um, anyway yeah I, yeah but whatever I, I like that employees are sort of pressing their advantage and, and getting what they can yeah uh, they should. I, like in some ways for the anti-work like i'm here i, I feel it like I, i'm here for it i, I like it in some ways, the anti-work, it's like, you know, you've got a little anti-ambition here. You know, they, I never see anti-work people being like, you know, you should start your own business. You should buy some houses, fix them up, flip them. There's a lot of money to be made in this. You know, if you a little sweat equity will, will help you build your wealth. And it, it takes a lot it, of capital to flip houses. People, it takes like none. Like, at least my friends do it with none. They just, I mean, you, you, you use you have other to people's approved. money, first time homeowner, no down payment stuff. Uh, I'm trying not to dox anyone, but it's like I think once you get it rolling, it rolls quite easily, and there's a lot of um, tools in place to get things rolling. So, like, oh, it, this it's, fucking it's, it can be done. Buyers markets any any sense of it? You've got it, it's not it, it's not back. like you like check some boxes on a website and you can flip houses. Uh, he's not saying that. But. In in this mm -hmm. case, they were able to buy without saving a lot of money, and then fix it up, sell it, or rent it. Uh, Airbnb is a thing now. Like, there's a couple people in my life making like actual money on Airbnb. Oh, you know what? I, here's here's the thing I see on Reddit a lot, and I don't get it. So maybe you could explain it to me. Maybe I'm in the dark here, and and I'm the only one. Why do they hate landlords? They Who, seem to Reddit? like demonize like the the idea of someone making money by owning property, and the idea of there even being landlords. And like, oh, you haven't seen this. It's very, I, know, seen, I know what you're talking I've about. I've seen bad landlords get hated on. No, like, no, no. no. Like, 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 deservingly like, so. The the concept of there being landlords, people who profit from just owning a bunch of property. Is, that's where is, Reddit is, goes is too liberal on me. This is like, the socialist stuff that's going around right now, right? The idea that this is 
someone making money what, what, what is it i, I don't, I don't want to go into the terms so i don't know the fucking terms like i don't, don't want to guess it wrong kind of deal but it's like the like away from like the what is it the means of the production kind of deal so this is someone is just taking taking money from someone else for doing nothing is a kind of sentiment of that what so. it's actually is a guy who took on a risk by buying by making a huge investment, oftentimes with their own two hands, fixing up a place and making it nicer than it was before, increasing its value, renting it out. And then these renters are like, fuck you. Why do you get to do this? Dude, you could have. This is available to all of us, especially if you haven't bought a home before. Yeah, I mean, I like, yeah, I see where you're coming from with like the the middle of the road thing like they are going too far with like every landlord is bad or something like I, i'm not that clued into that universe yeah what i like, like I, I can definitely empathize with the the concerns i've seen which is like every adult in my life told me to go to college and that would give me a job that paid me enough that i could get a comfortable house i could start saving i could you know prepare to, to get a mortgage and that's like oh well now i'm in crippling debt this degree every adult in my life told me to get is no longer as valuable as it was when they got it. And mm -hmm. I'm being told, oh, you know, well, sorry, you're up shit creek. You better go work at Domino's with your, you know, $35,000, $40,000 in debt. So I'm I had a different when I sort my of undergrad degree. <laughs> All right. So let's, I want to hear your feedback on this. Growing up, my father didn't say, get a degree and you'll have this future. He said, Woody, he doesn't call me Woody, Woody. 80% of degrees are, degrees are bullshit. You need a job training degree. You can be a doctor. You can be an engineer. You can be a nurse. You can be an accountant. I'm like, I think I want to get a business degree. No. Business is a general bullshit degree that doesn't get you a job. Accounting is a degree. Mechanical engineering is a degree. Computer science. These are job training degrees. What about English? English is for finding a husband. That's what the English degree is for. It is not for getting a job afterwards. This is this is like what I learned. So when I hear other people say, man, I got this degree and now there's no jobs on the other side. I'm like, well, yeah, you got the wrong one. They didn't tell you these were the wrong ones. They told me that these were bullshit degrees and that there aren't like it's not job training. The job yeah. training degrees are the ones. Uh, I remember when I was maybe other people life. didn't hear this. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I formulated this by watching Seinfeld as a kid, as bizarre <laughs> as that sounds. Because I just remember like the characters in that show and how like they had those nonsensical degrees and like how like whenever George wanted to go get a job, he couldn't because he had like he had, a, he had like an English degree or something. Like like I don't remember what George Costanza's degree is in. I, I wish I did off the top of my head. But it's something I didn't like know that. that was a thing in that show. It wasn't but, architecture. But, but but like he's always struggling because like what do you do? He's like, well, I I worked at Vandalay Industries, and it's like, it's like he's gonna make yeah, it up the whole way through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> philosophy. Latex. Philosophy is a degree that oftentimes lawyers take, and so you get a philosophy in your undergrad, but know that you're taking a giant risk if you don't actually get accepted into law school and then pass law school and become an attorney. Then you don't have. A, then you basically you you ruined it. You chose a degree that doesn't get you a job. That. That's what philosophy is. Oh, did you? Are you, are you philosophy? Found... Great. I'm sure. No, I have a I have a psychology degree, undergraduate psychology degree, which was almost useless for me when I finished uh, finished my undergrad. There are a lot of um, therapy degrees that are similar, and, and I might be off on this, but I think I'm on target. Like if you finish with an undergrad and you want to be a physical therapist or a occupational therapist or something like that, you can't get a job. That some yeah. jobs require masters, and I think psychology is one. What's interesting there was stuff I could do, but almost nothing was particularly well paid, and almost none of it was particularly interesting work either for me. So it was like I had to go back and get my graduate degree before anything would open up. Some jobs so, need so that. One thing that's always been interesting to me, like like you mentioned, the two kinds of degrees. Um, mm. Now you can't really pull like a Frank Abagnale Jr. and just go become a doctor or become a lawyer because those <laughs> are like job training degrees, like you said. Mm -hmm. Like even in that movie, Catch Me If You Can, like. He, he thinks it's cool to be a doctor until like that kid comes in all fucked up and he's like yeah. vomiting in the in the broom closet because he saw a skint knee. He's like, oh, wait, a <laughs> wait a minute. I can't be a doctor. This is dumb. And, <laughs> and then he goes and pretends to be a fucking lawyer. And uh, but 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 like you can't do those things. What you could do is like any of those jobs that require like a business degree. It seems like why can't you just get a fake diploma? Like, like, what if you just like printed out a fake business? Like, like I, I don't know what kind of job. Requires May as well try. Like, That's like you're getting crime. one of those. It, it isn't. Is it a crime? To print out a fake business degree? There's no way that's a crime. 
<laughs> There's just no way. There's whole institutes devoted to exactly that. <laughs> All right, but it's signed by the Ronald McDonald House. So it, here's my thing. It, it seems like University of Georgia prints out like I don't know how many of those a year. The, the, those diplomas. So why can't I, as a private individual, print myself one out? I have like, like, like it what is gives not them illegal the right? to what? buy or make fake diplomas. It is fraud if you try to pass them off as real. But they won't know. It'll be so good. <laughs> All right. So, so let's talk about <laughs> the fine print. This right. is not real. Because the way that you check to see if a diploma is real is like a bouncer checking your ID. Like, you hold it up. It's got like a business with a Z in it. <laughs> here's the thing. Let's I say remember that business having an S in it. Yeah. That was like, it must have been a different timeline. <laughs> All right. Let, so so let's, let, let's assume you're applying for some sort of manage, middle level management position at like some some it doesn't matter what company your your job mm -hmm. is going to be like managing people in an office scenario perhaps and you need this this degree this that you are going to fake are they really going to like fucking like check it out really or like call anybody or like scan a fucking barcode i think they're just going to be like oh okay you've got a you got your degree from blah 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 and you were here for this number of years okay and Here's like like yes I think if you mm -hmm. go to a big enough company, if you're working for Pepsi or Cisco or oh Facebook, yeah, maybe then they check you. If you're working for someone small, then they don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would imagine, and it'll probably go by like whether or not you're doing your job. Like if you're faking it and you truly have made it, and you have see no that's idea what where you're doing. that's that's where the genius comes in of picking a job that you can do a, but also that like your business degree would cover your fake business degree. Like like you so wouldn't become a doctor or a lawyer. You're anti-switching someone's dog out without their knowledge, but you're pro-hiring someone who doesn't actually have the right degree? Yes. You're okay with yes. switching the degree out on someone? <laughs> yes. Just yes. I'm tracking on these. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're keeping up. <laughs> um, but but no, you're, you're, and you're also willing to send me that link still, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm to buy the juice if I'm being <laughs> honest, if I'm being honest, I'll... I'm not going to send you the link, but whenever this is published on Saturday, you can just go into the description <laughs> and, uh, you can and look and, it up yourself. Look, he doesn't have the skill set. He's been lying about this skill set yeah. the entire show. Yeah, actually, that is true. Kyle is the, the worst copy paste I've ever made. Yeah, I, I don't know. Do it, right? I've been no. teasing him about it for 10 years. Yeah, and, Control and C, first, Control V. I don't get it. It's uh, can't wrap it around my head. At first, he pushed back. Like, no, Woody, I'm good at it. I feel like now he's come to accept that he's actually slow at copy. He was paste. still right click. Oh, no, no. So a year and a half ago. I, yeah. I got I got fed up with it. I got fed up with it. I got some pedals under my desk. One of them is control C. One of them is control V. I'm the fucking Good. control copy paste master. Yeah. Like it's it's one of the pedals really? on it and injects me with something and then I'm happy again. I, yeah. So Kyle, you Twitch. are you walk in. You you've you're past the hiring process at this company. You're a businessman now. At least Vandalay as far Industries. as they know, Vandalay Industries. You go into there. Let's say it's fucking. I don't know, pick a company you'd like to work at. And then what's the idea that you would come to the floor with where they'd go, man, this guy, he's not lying at all. Definitely. <laughs> like he knows, <laughs> he knows if you're working That's at how they think about it, too. Chipotle, you go into the Chipotle board meeting. You need to have an idea. Day one, they're calling on you. We need to, we need to revolutionize our business. Mr. Myers didn't make someone need to. Guys, oh, shit. Shit. If we, put I would, I would, I would ask, here's what I would do. I would ask for some, they want to revolutionize Chipotle. We need to take Chipotle and totally flip it on its head. Okay. You know so what I would have. do is I would ask for at there least a, I, I would need a day to come up with my proposal at least, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. They, they, yeah. they, they can't expect me to just have this like ad lib. Then I call my friend that works at corporate for Chick fil A and I get her to do my work for me. Oh, and I turn so that like in. A double cheat. Yes, double cheat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, at Chick-fil-A, behind <laughs> the glass, they have all those little buckets full of, you know, pickles or whatever. Yeah. Just, oh, stop it. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I said Chick-fil-A, but I meant Chipotle. Um, anyway, you, know, you can say, I want this, I want this, and they build your thing along the way. Is that not how Chipotle works? Am I mixing up my no, restaurant? No, no, no. no, no. I just didn't know what the fuck you were talking about, Chick-fil-A. Have one of them be Jizz Enhancer. We can just leverage lock and load the ideas we've come up with already okay. and reuse them. They'll what is right, burrito? You're, you're you're fired, you this burrito, you shoot up. out both ends. Now, this uh, is a winning idea. Is... Just be like, hey, bro, jizz enhancer? And, and then they sprinkle it on. 
and you suddenly your your sandwich is better than it would have been. We need this to get our jizz. Idea. We need to get our jizz enhancer in storefronts. I was saying this on PKN Starbucks. the other day. You need to go I was, into Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but 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 like seriously though, I was in like this adult um toy store or something like that, whatever you want to call it, yesterday, an adult in a store. Like we got like dildos and vibrators and lube and shit. And um, my guest room. And their whole like like the whole area <laughs> around the, the counter was <laughs> was full of of all sorts of like products like lock and load like like we need we need to invade that retail. That's space. what we need to do. We Taylor, need to don't you do this whatever. for a living? I, I was about to tell you how you can do things like this. It's so we would need Where's to find what, whatever whatever the biggest chain. <laughs> he made it. No, up. I, I printed it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> whatever the biggest chain is probably like Adam and Eve or something. We need to figure out how to contact their buyer. I'm sure that they have different buyers. Like they they probably have a dildo buyer and a costume buyer. I, or maybe it's only one. I, don't, I can't imagine it's just one. Then we need to get in contact with him or her. It's usually a woman. And we would need to find a way to make a meeting where we could use some data, probably from Derek's site, that we could make the case that, hey, uh, what's the data just looking like Derek's on your other on your other what? cum pills? And they could be like, well, this is the amount we're making annually or quarterly. And OK, what kind of promotions are you doing for those? Oh, that's interesting. OK. All right. Well, this is our margin so far. And we can do X, Y, Z. We, this would be like a Derek thing. I don't know how, what the margins look like on the back end. But yeah, that's be, that would be how you would do it. The only issue would be is that I don't know what kind of distribution those networks have. And if um, unless we actually start buying advertising to push sales at that retailer, we it will get deleted in a few weeks. They'll go, nobody's buying this. Uh, you know, we're, we're not going to do this. So that's it's a in order to even do it, we would need to have an active and running marketing campaign driving people to Adam and Eve. So it for this like product, for na- it, it is a lot of work to get into retail. And so but for, I just, I just, I just wanted to sell something. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm doing it but all. it's no work at all for me. <laughs> all right. So it, it sounds like, I, okay, too. hang on, hang on. So it sounds like you've got a real good idea of what needs to be done here. And I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> so yeah. uh, just uh, give me an update in about, Six to eight Two hours. Days. Yeah, six to eight <laughs> hours. First, no, no. First, I mean, and go right. ahead and get on your phone. You know, you, you and, know. and there's a Power risk hit. to this too because if we enter a store and we're in the storefront, that's now our like Nielsen and IRI data. And so if that totally tanks and fails, and we want to do this in the future we're at Walmart, they're going to pull up the past experience that this product didn't retail Question. and go, Question. this did not sell. We're not taking a risk. This Nielsen and our IRI data. IRI data. Can mm-hmm. we fake that like my diploma? <laughs> no, no, there's would, no would way that to be, that. Would that be like, people would that be what, what, what people this. like you, what, like nerds call fraud? <laughs> it would be highly illegal to, to, do, to do that because <laughs> like, so basically what you need to highly know, or illegal. a little bit square right now. <laughs> no. I know, I sound like a real bitch not wanting to defraud <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Nielsen. And I sound like but, a uh, queer. <laughs> yeah, it's Chill. it would be. Look, Chill, you're gonna need to write this down, send it to Kyle, and in about a month he will copy paste that back to you and be like, "Where are you on the progress for this?" <laughs> <Somewhere> like, <laughs> are we in Adam and Eve yet in, in yeah. retail? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go take a I'm gonna put it in a store, take a picture of it, make you guys think I've done this. No, I literally want to be in brick and mortar. <laughs> I literally want to be in brick and mortar stores, though. Like like like, like, like there's something very appealing to that in general to me and like 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 i walked in like there like being a published author it's not even about the money it's just having your product it's it's expensive the- there's there's like there's slotting fees for them to even place your 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 product oh, stop, your fucking do- why are you making this not fun <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry i'll just uh, give them a ring and say you want cum pills i'm taking <laughs> that's exactly right what now. i want you to do <laughs> don't okay. call it that exactly i, I want you to call them and say hey is this the the fucking like cum palace and they'll be like yeah this is the cum palace well haha i i it's it's funny where i'm also in the jizz biz matter of fact and then you know you tell them that you've got the pills and you show them some of your you know polaroids and the next thing you know we're on the we're, we're behind the counter and by polaroids you mean filled condoms <laughs> yeah yeah like, you, what you i do like, is you act like you're gonna like open up a briefcase for like paperwork and it's just uh-uh, used uh-uh, condoms stapled to condoms. the top of it now no, no, it's, see it's, a, it's a it, it's a calendar and every day i staple <laughs> a used spilled. condom to a day you know those advent calendars where like every day has like a candy in it. Every every day on my calendar has like a Christmas has, ones where it's a little like thing you open up and it's just like a jizz filled fucking condom yeah, in there. Every, like, every one of them. 
every day is filled oh, with these new Easter Reese's are terrible. Each, <laughs> each, <laughs> each one filled higher than the last. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. And then we'll get in trouble because it's like <laughs> caulk or something. We get caught. I'm telling you, you walk into a boardroom with a briefcase full of condoms used. You'll make an impression. Condoms. Dude, unironically, the, the you're walking out of there with a, about, with a handshake. About getting, the easiest part about getting this product <laughs> into an actual store would be showing that it actually works because it does. <laughs> like that would be the easy part. It would be. It, it really does work. Like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it would be marked up a bunch, at like Adam and Eve, compared to Derek's site. Interesting though. Interesting to think about. Where, like, are you are you imagining that Kyle, like walking into a a sex shop with a lady friend and being like, oh. What happened, Stance? You know I'm a part owner of this company. <laughs> oh, that's why you come so much? Yeah. Yeah. You didn't think this was all natural, right? No. No, I'm gonna tell her I'm gonna tell driven. her the pills were based off of my DNA. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the downside to it is there's there's rapes and murders popping up all over the country for me. <laughs> no, not like that. Like they're not they're not bottling my cum and selling it to people. They you must they be found exhausted. They found that I was genetically superior and produced an enormous amount of semen and then studied me. And then using that information garnered from said study, they, they formulated. The okay. I feel As like an that. adolescent, the first time you came, you almost drowned in your own semen. And from then on, you realized you had a superpower. It's your origin that's story. Right, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And it wasn't until my pastor told me many years later that yeah. this was unique. This yeah. was special. <laughs> it took me a second to process that. <laughs> you are made after the Lord's own heart, you little comer. <laughs> you got the Holy Ghost leaking out of that. <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that would... Well, this is a natural time for it. We're going to mm. hear from a couple of wonderful sponsors feels cbd cbd isn't about what you feel it's about what you don't feel stress anxiety pain and feels is a better way to feel better feels is a premium cbd that will help to keep your head clear and feel your best it's hassle-free delivered directly to your door cbd naturally helps reduce stress anxiety pain and sleeplessness there's no hangover or addiction place a few drops of feels under your tongue and feel the difference within minutes the thing to remember about cbd is that finding your right dose is important and everybody's dose is different in fact, Feels offers a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience so that you can find your perfect dose. The Feels customer service team is dedicated to make sure you get the best use of your CBD. Joining Feels monthly membership makes your self-care easy. You'll save money on every order and you can pause or cancel anytime. Start feeling better with Feels. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash PKA and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's F E A L S dot com slash P K A F E A L S dot com slash P K A to become a member and get 50% off automatically taken off your first order with free shipping feels dot com slash P K A. Check them out. I'm actually, I used all the feels they sent me. I, I, I took it before bed and it does relax you. I, I don't know right. my dose, but you know, it helped enough that it was, you know, if I if I took more, I probably would have done more. But yeah, CBD is pretty nice. If you guys are interested in that, you want some better sleep, some reduction in stress, anxiety, pain, feels.com slash PKA. This episode of PKA is also brought to you by Lucy. Lucy Nicotine is a company founded by Caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative. Finally, tobacco alternatives that don't suck. Researched and developed for three years to be made for people, not patients. Lucy has created a nicotine gum with four milligrams of nicotine that comes in three flavors, wintergreen, cinnamon, and pomegranate. Lucy is, also has a lozenge with four milligrams of nicotine and cherry ice flavor. Each and every flavor actually tastes great. And it's convenient and discreet. Their products can be enjoyed anywhere, on flights, at work, on the go, or even in the gym. It's 2021. Get rid of your cigarettes, unplug the vape, throw out the dip, and get some Lucy nicotine gum or lozenges. This is the real deal. A subscription to Lucy comes directly to your door each month. It's so simple, and you don't have to leave the house because Lucy has delivery down. Painkiller already listeners, go to lucy.co and use promo code PKA to get 20% off all products in your first order, including gum or lozenges. That's lucy.co and use promo code PKA at checkout. Also, we have to give this disclaimer. Warning, this product contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. So head over to lucy.co and be sure to use that code prom that promo code PKA to get 20% off all products in your first order, including gum or lozenges. So check those two out. And of course, as always, check out Lock and Load. 
The ultimate comes up. Oh. It blows all the others out of the water. It's the only one that really works. We got science behind it. Science, oh. beakers, beakers and science, all of the things that, that are associated with it. So check out that link below. Code PKA. Have some savings. Oh, wait. You, you're and, not going to read our, you're not going to read that, that ad read I sent you? Oh, shit. I forgot. Oh, wait. Yeah, I, I'll read the ad read. Um, that one's so did much you change more fun. it? There was, a, there was a little. Yeah, don't alteration. mention that part with that three letter agency, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. G I haven't read through this. <laughs> um, I, I honestly, I, I just scanned it. I read it. All right. Do you have no... S okay, hold on. <laughs> no, this is a bad idea. This is another... <laughs> <laughs> Can't you just skip the three-letter We're agency? selling yeah. cum pills. Read it. Yeah, I'm you're trying to make it sillier. Do you have no self-esteem? A slow, dribbly cum shot? Girlfriend wants a facial, but you're too much of a beta bitch? Well, today's your lucky day, lad. Uh, you with this supplement, you can shower your girlfriend and come from across the room. Show it off to all your friends and family. Impregnate <laughs> 10 women at once and even feed the, the homeless in seconds. <laughs> Lock and load your new friendly load stack. Load stack loads. This No proofreading here. <laughs> the new way to... He's going back to showering your friends and family. Uh, this is the worst read <laughs> ever. Are you illiterate? It's it's repeating the same stuff over and over. He says three Dude. times in here to come on your friends and family. <laughs> I, you know, you gave me a lot of shit about Dune. I sent this to you three days ago. Mm. Oh, you you can fuck right off with that. This is not equivalent to you not watching Dune. Okay, this is exact. This is worse. This is so much worse. This is thirty um, seconds of work. I, I would have read it. Yeah, yeah. And is, you can have awful. it now. For only $49, you, yes, you, you can spray cum like a garden hose, and we'll give you this offer right now. And right now, only if you order in the next 30 minutes. You, that's not that's true. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> you can get 10% off. Yeah, you heard that right. You can come everywhere for 10% left. less. Amazing. So try lock and load. It will solve that dribbly cum shot issue. It'll solve... World hunger, apparently. World hunger. <laughs> Based on that wanting, read. Wanting to come with oh, friends and family. So that, so that ad read is from Pojo uh, because he is the only entry this week. He is also the winner this week of the lock and load ad read contest. Um, we will <laughs> oh, need we will need your entries in the YouTube comments down below. Um, next week's winner hopefully will be better. Thank you, Pojo. <laughs> uh, Thank I was going to, oh, oh, the last thing, we'll change topics, but um, that PKA code gets you 10% off everything in Gorilla Mine. So if you want something else, maybe that Terkestrone, that legal steroid thing that everyone's excited about, yeah, you can buy that along with your order. And, uh, it, and, and if anybody wants pre workout, I highly recommend the Bomb Sickle uh, pre workout that Derek makes. Mm. It's what I use. It's so fucking good. Uh, let me take that back. Let me rewind a little. <laughs> I wouldn't drink it if I weren't using it to work out. It is a delicious supplement. It is not a soft drink. It is not like my favorite <laughs> beverage or anything. There's a difference. But for a supplement, it tastes really fucking good. And uh, yeah. Kyle and I go different. It, so Kyle likes the supplement, the pre-workout with no stim. And then he takes his own stim. If he wants it, he gets to control it. I like the pre-workout with the stim. Just because I want the stim. I don't know. You can choose whichever one. You yeah, want. there's just, you probably never have that instance where you don't want it. There's sometimes when... Um, like when I'm cutting weight, I'm taking stems on like a, a regular basis anyway. So having them in my pre-workout messes that up. It changes it's, your dosage, right? Yeah. 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 I can see why you do what you do, but I like my way too because I just want the stem before the workout. For sure. And if you're one of those people out there that's just been sitting, listening to the last few weeks going, I don't know if this cum supplement is for me. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm Josh. Josh. Yeah. There's someone out there named Josh who just got spooked. Some dribbler. But yeah, some <laughs> yes, some some little cum dribbler, some bitch, some dribbler who's not exploding with pride every time he comes. Mm. These are genuinely selling like hotcakes. So get over <laughs> there are. and try. It, it's it is so shocking how many people are buying these. Cum <laughs> it is it is it genuinely is. So you know Derek's gonna have to re up again soon. So check it out. I hope you guys enjoy it as much as we all do. And I love Kyle. I love your just true desire to get it into a retail store. It's. <laughs> Because that would be like a true mark of achievement. I want to it see would. it. I want to see it at CVS. I want yeah. to see it. I want to see it at Walmart. I want to Walgreens. see lock and load at Advanced Auto Parts. I want to see it. <laughs> I want to go. Make I want your to own go. lube. What do you want, want to do to, when your car's broken down? You want to relieve some stress. 
<laughs> and now you can do it. I want to go to I want to go to the mall to Cinnabon and for them to offer me a sample of Lock and Load. Okay, I want I want it to be everywhere. Everyone should be shooting frothy, <laughs> hot, thick, steaming loads of cum um, that are just viscous and thick and look more like some sort of curdled dairy product than semen. It needs yes. to be part of the entire planet's daily process, right? Like everybody uses shampoo on a daily basis. You're kind of weird if you don't shampoo your hair. Lock and load should be a parallel. I don't we think black figure, people do that. We need to figure out testing on, on the effects on women. What, black people what fluid have, is that increasing? We don't know yet. Does anybody know anything about... <laughs> we don't. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> it might do nothing at all. We need to wait for the data, the hard data <laughs> to come out. But anyway, that's enough about our cum pills. Yeah. Kyle, how much longer are you in your, your new home or your, your temporary home? Are you heading out? In the morning, maybe staying. You never know. Never know. Might just live in Illinois. Can I get the uh, two second uh, backstory on that? Uh, I'm in Illinois right now. Um, I, I the other night I was in Georgia and I was thinking, wish I was in Illinois. Um, so I uh, got in my car and I started driving to Illinois, as you do, and uh, then I got here. And uh, I found an Airbnb, and so now I'm now I'm in Illinois. It's pretty nice. Illinois here. is right near Iowa because they both start with I. Is it? Yes. No. They are <laughs> actually really close, but uh, not for that reason. I don't think. I mean, yeah, maybe. from where you are in Illinois, you have to rule zoom, it out. You're not going to zoom to Iowa from where you are. <laughs> you could. I bet from he's southern I, Illinois. That'd be quite the drive. One day you get there. Same day, I bet. Well, yeah, same day, but that would be a pain in the ass. And they don't even have legal weed in Iowa. Mm. So no, no, they do in Illinois, though. Nope. Mm. <clears throat> they do in Illinois, it turns out. Um, it's very expensive here. Um, and in my ex- – look, I get annoyed when people are like, oh, yeah, the weed in Cali, it's so strong. Or no, no, it's about the weed in, 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 in Washington State. I, I hate that because I'm just it's like – different? Exactly. That that's kind of where where I've always kind of stood. It's like, how is your weed actually going to be different? I get that there are different kinds of weed, but how is like the weed from a certain state just going to be hands of hands of hands down above like mm-hmm. weed from another state? This weed here kind of sucks. It really? does. Like, not only is it overpriced, but um, I ate a hundred milligram candy bar last night, um, mm-hmm. and I will say this: it was delicious. If they sold these at the store, they'd be popular. Like, like because there was like no weed in it. Yeah, that's how they make it taste good. They take the weed out. Yeah, it was. um, It doesn't have that weedy taste. That's why traditional candy is unmatched. You know, it was like uh, it was like some sort of toffee bar, but it sort of looked like a like a like a Hershey's bar or something like that, like square and everything. And it it was one hundred milligrams, and I ate the whole thing, and I didn't notice that I had eaten it. I didn't. I, wow, I never 100 felt hundred like milligrams, eating. and you didn't notice. Yeah, I didn't notice at all. I had uh, fifty of Delta Eight, the legal stuff, and you definitely, I definitely noticed until I fell asleep. Well, I've been eating fifteen hundred milligrams of Delta Eight at a time. Um, one thousand five hundred milligrams. Yeah. I wonder if ours could have been different. Um, I wonder if it's all dosed the same. I wonder if it's all uh, processed the same. I wonder how quickly tolerances build up. I don't know any of that information, but I know that um, I eat 1,500 milligrams of Delta-8 at a time, and I don't notice that either, really. Like, the guy at the counter acted like the edible I bought was the like Mac Daddy strong edible at that store. I'd love to know the brand. I'm going to do some more oh, research. I threw the wrapper away. Yeah, I'm gonna look around, but but yeah, so far my experience with recreational Illinois weed is that it's weak compared to what I was getting in Colorado, and way more expensive. <clears throat> Granted, I'm not pot. I, I know the 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 tax is included here in all the prices, so like they they have this process here that's real that's real interesting. You go in and there are kiosks like touch screens, and you mm-hmm. go through like a touch screen menu and you order what you want and you write your name. And then you're allowed to go into another chamber where the business is done and someone's already got your order like put in a little bag and ready to go. And, you know, you just exchange cash for your uh, your weed. But like it's a little more like locked down in Illinois than it is in uh, Colorado. Like there's armed guards and shit and it's uh, 
I don't know. The the employees seem all really friendly, but like the process is a little sketchy. Hmm. How hard is it? I don't know how to answer this if I were you, but Florida has medical marijuana. Can any non-Florida resident just go to a scam doctor and get his card like they're buying? <clears throat> so I don't know what a gum? scam doctor is, Woody. That sounds like some some. That, that sounds like a dark just a doctor who makes a business out of giving out medical marijuana cards oh you mean a, you I mean thought you meant like a, I thought oh you meant yeah like a just go to, so you just go to weeddoc.com and uh no no absolutely um so i thought deal, that was i was about to go to weeddoc.com I, <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't exist i'll suck your dick so um <laughs> <laughs> immediate google like, 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 like come on it's it's, it's gonna exist so um the, the deal with Florida know, is curious. I would need a a at least a temporary resident residency so that um, I could say that I was a temporary Florida resident and then I could get a medical license in Florida. So I oh, would need an easy. address there. Yeah. Hey, SSU two money coming back again. Do you know how, that I've considered that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh no, if I had the fucking boat, I could get a Florida medical marijuana license. And like just r- just drive like the four hours south and just smoke anytime I wanted like little vacations like that like four hours is nothing. Does everyone know the backstory on SS YouTube money? Kyle bought a sailboat to keep in Florida to give him a Floridian address, and I think the goal was to legally not have state taxes, mm-hmm. but it never really happened because he started getting these more advanced firearm licenses that required Georgia residency and sort of stability, so he couldn't just change up his address crazy am i on target no 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 no. all right so the so all memes aside i i more i didn't lose a lot of money but i lost some money but Mm. um i did not have to pay state and the way it works is you don't have to pay state income taxes um for the time that you're in florida which would be half the year so you don't have to pay state income taxes for 50 percent of the year so the days you upload videos (laughs) Yeah, Maybe sure. You know, whatever, <laughs> whatever's the proper thing to do. And um, uh, but no, it worked out fine. It had it, the firearms license never entered into it. There oh, was okay. just a point where it was like, I don't. We're not like saving a ton of money here or anything. We're just like bleeding ten dollars a month here on slip fees or something when it's all said and done. And I just wanted rid of it. And I definitely lost like a few thousand when I sold it. But like all in all, when you consider like the tax benefits. I think it cost me like three thousand dollars to own a boat for a couple years, something like that. I don't know. Okay, but no, if I had that thing still, I could. It counts as a residence because it had. There's some. There's like a few check boxes you have to check, right? Like a bathroom, a, a bedroom, etc. And mm. um, the marina where I had it slipped at, um, you know, you've got like a, a PO box there, so that's your address. What's the lamest house you could have? Could you invest in a tent in Florida? I'm going to look into. I'm going to look in what the <laughs> lamest house I could buy in Florida is, and <laughs> like, like, what if there's a rental property that's literally like fifty dollars a month or something like that for like, a, like, 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 like that I could just have like, I don't want to do anything like sketchy. I want it to be legal. Like, I want it to stand up to like the rule of law and everything. But like. I don't know. So your definition of sketchy is a little different than mine here. It sounds like <laughs> I want what I want what legally qualifies. I just want to legally rental. play as little I, as I can. I just yeah. sublet a, oh, t- you're a, missing the a point. rental I wanna... tent with five other people, but it's a six man tent, so it's not sketchy. Or oh, and I don't care about the taxes. I just want to be able to like go down there and smoke weed whenever I want, and not have to drive to Illinois. Yeah. Yeah, you're not far. Illinois, the well, closest. You're not super oh. close, but you're not far from. Illinois Florida. is seven hours away. Um, Virginia doesn't have a way to purchase it yet, even though they're legal, and it's roughly seven hours as well. But it would, you know, obviously it depends on which part of Virginia you're, you're going to. Like, maybe the part that's seven hours away is never going to be any good because it's so rural. Hmm. <coughs> And then Denver is really far. It is quite a trek from you, yeah. Kyle, Did have you, you found Kyle again? Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, no, no. Kyle has not moved again yet. He's still still tracking around. Um, <clears throat> Kyle, you haven't. So he's still in Georgia. Yeah, yeah, still in Georgia. 
Uh, have you found any like really good public street fighting videos in a while? No, because I, oh. I never know where to look for the I've, actual the public topic freakouts, on PKA is, is videos we don't show to people. And I feel like we bring it up every week. Hey, guys, let's talk about more videos we're not showing you. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I, th <laughs> I thought we could show fight stuff because it's usually just like That's someone's like phone. The thing we can't show almost the most. Oh, like. I thought that was sports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sports. Why, uh, what's the limitation on this? The legality of it in some way? Generally, YouTube has stepped up its um, copyright claim. And they have an anti-fighting thing in particular, like to show stuff. It, it, they knock your video or get strikes and shit like community guidelines. They're not all YouTube's not about stealing people's content like it used to be. <laughs> and uh, they're not about fights. Well, that's so disappointing. Okay, well, that's fair. But on um, the fight thing, Kyle, have you followed UFC 268? It is in like three days or the day this video comes out. And it is pretty much a Super Bowl UFC event. Dude, is wait, that's not the one that's got Usman, is it? And in, in it is on Saturday. Wait, is that, does that also have Rose? Yes. I don't know how Fighting I'm going to be able to. I'm going to be here still. Okay. Yeah. So the, I was just looking at it. In Illinois? Um, I'm not going to be at this house. I'm transferring to another house that's uh, a little nicer. Um, but uh, I'm. It doesn't matter. It's neither here nor there. I'm just worried about the TV situation now because I, I really don't watch my laptop most of the time but yeah so there's uh the main card is five fights and that means there's 10 fighters i care about eight of those fighters which is maybe five more than a normal card and uh it it's pretty badass like it so of course Usman fights covington that in itself uh it seems like ufc is a little short on interesting fighters right now and covington is near the top of the list uh, it, his nicknames are the creative on like a Trump level, <laughs> but it's still working for me. He he calls uh Usman, Kamara Usman, Juice Man, because he looks like he's on steroids. And Covington just sits there at the camera perplexed, like, I don't get it. The guy's 32 years old, he's got pimples on his back and his shoulders. <laughs> it's like a second puberty. It must be like a chemical imbalance. I don't who knows why this could happen to Marty Juice Man? Uh, it's hilarious. I'm does he really it. have acne on his shoulders? He does, but he's black, so it doesn't have like red dots and show in the same way it does on white people. Yeah, but but he does. Um, there's a guy in his division called Kamzat Chimair or something like that. It's oh, yeah, a yeah, hard yeah, yeah. name for me. Anyway, he calls him Kamshot. I don't know. It just does. <laughs> We should get him on lock and load. Come, yeah, he's a good. Uh, yeah, he's a real good troll. Uh, the stuff he does on social media is is always ridiculous. He's always got like girls that are barely clothed, and he's. I think I think his opening like like line is always "What's up, virgins and nerds." <laughs> I, I think like like that's his intro. I'm there for it. I like it. I like yeah. it. He's trolling. I I and, and oh, sometimes I can't tell. What's him and what's the thing? Like, what's up, virgins and nerds with the bikini girls and stuff? Like, all right, clearly he's he's being a showman here. But then there's some other stuff. Like, he was ripping on a compet a fellow, a guy in his weight class because he got knocked out with COVID. And he's like, What's how weak is this guy? It's a common cold. 99.9% .9 survivor. Most people, people get it, they don't even know they have it. This guy goes nine months without fighting, he's gonna quit the UFC. This is a weak willed, poor constitution man. <laughs> and I'm like, it, I, I, I can't, I might be marking out for the gimmick here because I think he believes this. No, <laughs> I don't know, think, like, I, no, I, I think that's the character again because that's too mean. Um, I think it's all, <laughs> I think it's almost all a character because, um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I, there's some, some, some Covington in there, but I could be marking out. So, who knows? I, I don't think he was always like that, though. But yeah, you're right. That's a huge fight because the last fight was closer than I think people remember because I went back and watched it. And uh, I think it was all tied up going into the fifth round. Yes. And uh, and, and so, I, dude, he would make such a better champion. Like, like, like I like a champion oh who's gosh. brash and entertaining like that. And when they've got the belt, they're able to really stand on a larger stage in front of more eyes and... And I think it would also give him like carte blanche to to say more ridiculous things. He's like, I am the champ. Like he can talk more shit when he's the champion. It's hard to get your jaw broken and then go talk shit, both literally and like street rap style. It's just it's like, wait, are you talking shit? He just broke your jaw. Like, like you can't really say anything. 
He hasn't fought. Did he, he maybe fought one time since he lost to Usman before. And um, uh, he blamed his corner. He's like, my, we're in between rounds and my corner tells me to breathe. That's not advice I need. We're all good at breathing. Everyone yeah. here knows how to breathe. You know, like I want some good actual point. advice I can use when I go out there again. Now, now I don't. I, I used to watch. Uh, I forget the name of John Jones's coach, Rinklin. I, anyway, first thing he'd tell his fighter is like, "All right, deep breaths, calm down." And basically, he got him to get more rest out of that two minutes than he would have otherwise, or one minute, whatever it is between rounds. So, like, I get it. Like, first thing, calm the fighter down. Then I speak to the calmed version of him. But uh, I also think if I was in that. For me, as a, as a make believe fighter, I would want my corner to be like, dude, he hates your right. He hates your right. Keep firing that thing. It's scaring him. And, and once you get him backed up, you know, then you can do your three punch combo. It'll it'll work. Yeah, that's what I'm listening <clears throat> for. That that it, technical. I would want I would want technical stuff as well. Um, un, unless like, like 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 whether it's something like, hey, every time you're throwing that jab, like like he's 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 like lowering his left hand. He's dropping his left hand. every time you throw it. Every time you throw it, you've got to follow up. You've got to punches and bunches. That's what I want to hear. I'm like, I'm yeah. inspired now. Or if he says, hey, man, hey, when you throw that leg kick, are you noticing how much he hates it? Be like, no, no, I'm actually like looking at his knee because I'm throwing a leg kick. Well, he hates it. <laughs> <laughs> or on the other side, hey, Woody, every time you throw your left, you bring it back to your ribs instead of your jaw. You know, keep that hand up. Sure. He's going to start noticing it. Um, you know, stop doing that. It, it, whatever. That's the advice I want. If they just say breathe, you can get them. You look good in there, buddy. That's not helping me. All right. So anyway, yeah, a bit like a poker movie with a with a tell though. Are we really going to see that in every single fight? Is it like so noticeable to the people not involved in it that you could realistically and reliably do that? A lot more than a live tell because you know they are going in there and like fighting, right? So like they're matching up in various ways, and and like there's always going to be some room for improvement. It might not be as definitive as oh. When you do this, he does that. So now you do this and you win. Like it's not going to be that, but it's it. it, it there's going to be some room for improvement. Like after the first round, that, that they should be able to see. Maybe it's hey, circle away from his right. You're, you're circling mm -hmm. into his power hand. Like cir circle away, or, or hey, get away from the cage. What are you doing? He's bullying you. Like it, it, it could be something as simple as that. Just not breathe. I wouldn't want breathe. I would want breathe because I don't know anything. <laughs> I, I, I would need breathe, but but you know I did forget fighter, to breathe. I've been hit a lot. Oh, thank you! I forgot. <laughs> you know what? I, I've pick your so face up. Pick I've been, your I've been face up. All day. That is a good, <laughs> good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would. Yeah, anyway, that. so then the next is Rose versus what is that Chinese chick's name? Wang Li um, or something? Whaley, Whaley. Dude, I'm so Z H A N Z A N G. Um, yeah, they're. It's funny. It's so close. I think they've had a fight go each way. They're one and one. This is the trilogy fight, oh, I think. No. And am I mixing it up with it to someone else? I believe they've only fought once and Rose knocked her out. Uh, because he, right. Right, here's the way I remember it. Let's see if I can stone string this together. Andrade dropped Rose on her head. So then she That's was the what champion. it is. And yeah. then Andrade got destroyed I, maybe by um, the Chinese girl, and and then the Chinese girl beat the fuck out of Joanna um, Yan Jacek, and then Rose knocked her out. Like those are the fights that I remember. That sounds right. Also, um, Rose beat Andrade too. I have it in front of me now. But yeah, I, I mixed up. I thought it was um, the Chinese chick Zhang Wei, something like that, that dropped Rose on her head. But it wasn't. I had it wrong. Yeah, that was that was Andrade. Yeah. Yeah. Who was going to be the outclass before that? It's I, this is a situation where I don't think there should have been an instant rematch. Rose just beat this woman; she got the title. Um, but this woman's from China, which is a market that's very important to the UFC. They would love to get all those Chinese viewers, so they're giving their, her a shot at the champ right again. So, I disagree with you. I felt like this was. A time for an immediate rematch, but I hmm. didn't want it to be, because I think I'm all like we're the same in this regard. We're always worried about Rose. We're always afraid for Rose. 
We don't know how she can win. And and like when I'm watching And then her, she does. And then she does. And when I'm watching her fight, I'm like surprised every time by just yes. how good she is. Because like, I'm not exaggerating when I say this. She might, she's top two or three best fighters in the UFC, I think. Like, like just her Female. movement. And no, human beings who fight in okay, the UFC, okay. I think. I, I think Rose is. I think she's in the top two or three. Like, like, cause every time I watch her fight, it's masterful. It's masterful. I don't, I've never seen her commit a mistake. The only thing she ever did was when she was destroying Andrade, obviously like she let herself get picked up and dropped mm -hmm. on her head. That's the only mistake I've ever seen her make. Other, otherwise she's just maintaining perfect distance and just looking incredible. Is she the third best woman ever? I've got um who's the big strong one who's just wrecking everyone beat Well there's Ronda. Amanda Nunez there's there's yo, there, there's there's, and then there's Valentina the Shevchenko and there's, and there's Rose Nama Yunus and they they yep. just happen to be your three current champions right now across four divisions and I don't know which one is more talented I lean towards Shevchenko or Rose mm -hmm. though because I think Nunez like big thing is her power she's just got so much knockout power for for 135 She beat Cyborg uh, at 145, she beat Cyborg. Yeah, it's a ton yeah. of power. Yeah, Cyborg can barely make 145. Anyway, uh, UFC 268 is coming. I'm totally psyched. It's one of the Super Bowl events. Um, Chandler's fighting uh, Gaethje. Like that's love that's Gaethje. Gonna, oh, love Gaethje. I, I love both Gaethje's of the main those event guys. To me. Agreed. Well, I, I don't know if you've seen enough Chandler, but you'd like him. He does a really good interview. He's smart. He's clever. Um, I'm sure I would, have. I can't picture him in my in my head right now, but I'm sure I have. Yeah, you'll probably get exposed to him again after this weekend and be like, "Oh, I like that guy. He's good. You know, he's one of the people I've won on my TV." <sighs> yeah, I've watched every card for a, I don't know how long now. Uh, maybe since mm. prison. But um, uh, I'm I'm gonna watch this one one way or another, even if we gotta go to a bar out here or something. Um, it's, but I'm looking forward to it. It's a good one. Then Frankie Edgar fights Marlon Vera. That's holy shit. Know. Yeah, it's a wild card. So yeah, um, sorry if that bored any of you non UFC people. But um, yeah. um, seriously, if you if you if you ever, I've said I say this occasionally, maybe three times a year. This is that card where mm -hmm. you're going to be exposed if you spend your seventy dollars to like some of the best of the best across multiple divisions, fighting against good uh, competition. And Joe Rogan is going to be back for the first time since Conor McGregor fought. So uh, it's a good time to come back. That's an interesting thing with Rogan. He, um, to me, Rogan was the most important employee at the UFC. I mean, obviously Dana White, but like maybe more important than any single fighter. He was the voice of it. When he's like, "Oh, he got rocked and stuff," I'm like, "Man, I, I feel like Rogan is is as essential to this thing as anybody." That's changed for me now. Yeah, he does fine, but there are other people who do that job well too. Um. Here's what I wish, because he's very important for me. I'm very glad that he's coming back. It hasn't been the same without him. Um, okay. I, I I need him there. Um, I wish he had a show that I, like like I feel like he's got so much money he doesn't have to do anything. But man, I wish he had some sort of ESPN show. I wish he was I wish he was behind a fucking desk for an hour every night, like hmm. like five nights a week, like talking UFC, like just this pure UFC show. Like I don't know. There's would enough be, content for that. There's so much content for that. There's 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 two, there's two other shows that do that. That like, talk like UFC um, an hour a day. Michael Bisping and uh, uh, has that show right where where that's on ESPN I think and I think so does um um the fucking um, Chael Chael's got a show. I knew that Chael had a show. I don't. I never see it. And the the rare times I get exposed to it, he says that he like repeats everything on his YouTube channel. That's that's. I'm I'm sure that's all true. I haven't si seen it either. I just know he has a show. I don't watch ESPN. Mm. Like anyway, you know. I feel like yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, I've good time to watch too long. UFC. Yeah, too long. Um, but but yeah, um, it's a good weekend to watch watch the fights. So WeDoc.com is not really a website. Someone owned it, squatted it, and didn't set up a website. Oh, you got to suck my dick. Yeah. So does my dick get sucked for that or not? I'm curious. First of all, I wasn't talking to you when I said it. I was talking. I, to I was a Taylor exclusive. Um, I'll I'll only suck it if his wife watches. 
how else did you think we were going to do this? Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. 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 But I'm all about hey, the yin hey, and the yang. Hey, so I, get uh, to, I get to suck can, your dick. And after. if the viewers are interested I'm two in that, and a half is that a Patreon thing? Or? <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, you could zoot right here. Nice little three hours. Hey, if we make this a five-hour show, I can. we can do it on the show. <laughs> five hours. I don't know I about that. Space. I love what he's face coming to the realization of like, wait, no, you're not. Don't suck his dick. <laughs> <laughs> that would no, be you like, can suck his dick. You just can't put it on my what's, channel. What's you it's like, think it's, about that? Oh, that's your concern. Is that a strike? Half a strike? How does that work? Be. Not a I'm copyright give you strike. One, he'll give you one I mean, strike for a blowjob. It, it is in mm. fact Kyle's dick in Teller's mouth. Oh wait, other way around. Sorry, no, we're gonna do both. Oh, oh, oh. okay. Oh, sure. I'm definitely yeah. coming now. Uh -huh. We're like, it's just the, the joke completely falls flat. Like you're actively sucking my dick, looking up like, ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> look, look, look. Look how far he brought it. <laughs> Can you imagine if I wasn't doing this jokingly and we're like high-fiving? <laughs> <laughs> it's like that old that old 4chan green check. Green I mean, surely this like, is part of your long-term running ad for the uh the load enhancer here right oh no <laughs> like yeah. this comes out there somewhere oh, 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 i don't want to ruin yes. my keyboard you know? this is how you get this is your this is my your head just break into the what is it what is <laughs> the mortar and what is the fucking more the physical pestle? building market yeah no yeah, no yeah. no kyle is pushed for once in the a store mortar. oh brick and mortar brick and mortar. Brick brick and mortar. mortar this is your this is your moment to break in we could we'll show well i know cvs how well but have you seen this video of my co-host and I giving each other head. So like, well, <laughs> I mean, you did bring a gun to the meeting, so I guess we're going to watch it. <laughs> Can we do that standing 69 thing? Like, 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 do you think you're strong enough to hoist me? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Nice. And I know really? you're strong enough to remain hoisted. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, I'll lock around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to lay there limp. I'm, 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 I'm locking in. And after we're done, we'll go get a nice workout in. And I, mean, we'll I think be, that's going to be the workout. That <laughs> will be. You can add, yeah, you can I feel like it's pull day for one of you and push day for the ups. The <laughs> <laughs> My wife like gets home like, oh, that's not what it looks like. <laughs> it's really because it looks like you and so you're your like, did the dogs throw up all over this house again? You're like, head. no. <laughs> <laughs> My dogs are in their kennel looking like that. <laughs> this, time we, this time we didn't do it. <laughs> but See, that but guy that, we're around constantly is giving head in the other room. And <laughs> receiving. Then, then He's the not pieces gay. fall into place. <laughs> she yeah. leaves you, okay? And then you and I go. And and who was that rapper who had the Get house? Gay for married. Sale? No, who was that? The rapper who had the house for sale near you? Oh, was it Jay Z? Nelly. Yeah. Nelly. Nelly was selling this mansion that he owned near Ish Taylor. And I was like, you know, Taylor, if you weren't getting married. I'm about to get off probation. I could do something <laughs> crazy. You and I could have bought Nelly's mansion, and we could have yeah. we could have streamed from Nelly's mansion and and done silly shit there. <laughs> that, he was like, "Hey, Taylor, literally went backup plan." Taylor literally went, "Oh, don't say that because that sounds so cool." <laughs> <laughs> It does. It sounded cool as shit until I, I did a little more digging on the Nelly Mansion and was like, oh, there's a reason this is 600 grand. Like, they could use it as like a post apocalyptic like set. It's that level of dilapidation. It's, it's collapsing. The basketball court looks like an earthquake happened there. Like, there's a, <laughs> like a, a giant crack through it that you could there's fall a into. Way for dealing with that, just lower your standards. Just tremendously <laughs> lost it. Just in the, the house is Nelly, in the middle of the woods. You know, it turns not, out Nelly is a scumbag. <laughs> in some parts of our house, the inside and outside are not separated. But outside of that, it's a cool place. Yeah. The indoor yeah. pool is technically the outdoor pool. <laughs> <laughs> it's an indoor outdoor pool because of the lack of roof. Because we don't we don't believe in windows here. <laughs> We're it's, we want to uh, live side by side. Oh, with and the, I would totally get you on the steroids as my husband. Yes. Yes. You wouldn't have to maintain your fertility with Kyle. No. That's no. true. That's true. No. We could both just get juice to the gills. That'd be like great. Like, 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 like weird big. Like like Jake Cutler off season big. Yes. Jesus Christ. And we, and we like, <laughs> I know what that looks like. Like where, where the abs are showing, even though you're overweight, that level of muscle. I don't think that. Exactly. Yeah. Pull up Jake Cutler off season. <laughs> I need Hold to see on. this photo because I don't know how jacked Jay Cutler is in the off season. 
Uh, do he doesn't look human not anymore. It's a desirable body in my. No, no, it's it's very undesirable. It's 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 a real freakazoid type situation. Oh, this is the. All right, Zach. I found the picture for you to show here. I'll demonstrate my copy paste skills. Yes. Just get oh, you're shredded. Slow. You get the pedals. We hold hands <laughs> in every grocery store we go to. This is Jake. Jake Cutler was um, a Mr. Olympia, so the number one top bodybuilder in the world for a while. And That's can you it. zoom in on him? Look at this guy. <laughs> this is his <laughs> off-season physique. <laughs> he's, he's huge. <laughs> that guy is... Is that real? This is a real photo? It's a uh, real as far photo. As I know. <laughs> My it's a real God. Photo. <laughs> he looks like uh, the he's cave folding. troll in the first Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> what you have to keep in mind what you have to keep in mind his head may look a little bit small there his <laughs> head is so big <laughs> dude if I wasn't worried about getting my ass kicked I honestly believe I could steal Jay Cutler's girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> oh he'd he'd eat you <laughs> you know what's funny I think that is that a mass gainer <laughs> In front of him? Probably. Is that pro mass? Like he's not to the end of the road yet? I think it is. <laughs> I think it is. Can you pull like, up oatmeal, here? I'll find like oatmeal Brad, I need and Jay like Cutler picture just to show people what he's supposed to look like. That guy's a that guy that is a powerful build right there. Yeah. Get no, him like I, in, in his prime or something. Like, like we would just walk around like that. <laughs> just like just bloat max. Yeah, we would never cut. Oh, so it'd be so it'd be a huge life change for me. <laughs> Perma bulk, yeah. We just get huge, just Taylor, like that. Like so, Taylor. What's the biggest change since you married your friend Kyle? Well, no more cardio. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I got that right out. As a matter of fact, we both quit cardio. And Kyle quit likes working me out. bulky. <laughs> yeah, Kyle sorry, likes no, me to definitely. feel soft. <laughs> he says if I put enough weight on, it'll fix that dent in my ass. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Oh no! Well, that guy, I cannot believe that's a real photo. But yeah. now looking at him like in competition form, yeah, that that's totally believable because this guy is inhumanly big. You know, it, like like like. It's maybe it's like a weird curiosity, but like when someone's that big and they're they're pushing things to the limit like that, I'm curious about like the little things in their life. Like, how big of a shit does that guy take? Probably like, I, enormous. I kind of want to. Hopefully, see Google it. can't solve that for us. I kind of want to see it. Right? It, like, what is he? What is he doing there? Is he is he like crushing a normal man? He's like, a, yeah. He's <laughs> <laughs> it's part of his posing routine, and it actually works. Like most people just show off their thigh muscle. He invented the Jay Cutler stomp. So before he like posed his thigh, he'd stomp his heel into the ground and then flex it. And it, it was an impressive display. It's but Jay impressive. Cutler is the people like there's a saying in a, like bodybuilding. Nobody wants to fuck Jay Cutler. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't make that up right now. That's no, I've heard that say. many times. Like, nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to have sex with him. Yes, but look look, the whole him. point of it is that like you can't stop. You can go too far. Yeah, yeah. It, it, kind of to me, the end game is kind of where Kyle's pictures were. Like that. Like that's for sure. That's where you aspire to go to. Um, but that guy has to get there, right? Because like I'm looking at him on stage. Like everybody else is going to the fucking limit too, and so it's I'm, like a like a cold war. He has a different goal. He's trying to win bodybuilding contests. He's not trying to win Tinder. Mm hmm. And no one wants to fuck Jay Cutler. Now, now that it's also like, careful. You don't want to get too strong. Like, no, what? I don't have to be careful about that. That's not gonna happen to me. <laughs> like, I, I am not in danger of you don't swelling up to look like that guy. What happened to him didn't happen accidentally. <laughs> no, no, like, that was a huge amount of effort. Yes. Like, you see a burn victim, and you're like, yeah, be careful around propane ovens. <laughs> but you see Jay Cutler, and you're like. Don't worry about it, man. That'll never happen to you. Yeah. You <laughs> yeah. can pick up everything in this gym and you won't that won't happen to you. you is Jay Cutler your whole life. is he not competing anymore? Because I just looked yeah, up he's the aged Mr. Out. Oh, okay. Because yeah, yeah. Mr. Olympia from last year, who is this big Rammy? Big Rainy, Rammy, yeah. Big yeah. Rammy. This guy's he's still a monster, you know, but he is noticeably smaller than Jay Cutler. I need to see him next to each other. I'm not sure. I, I think next big to a Rammy's normal person actually too, really big. I'd like to see. It's really hard, like just the shot of them to get any sense of perspective. 
sometimes these really bulked out bodybuilders are five nine. You know, so when Big Ramy comes there and maybe in the picture doesn't look bigger, then you realize he's like six four. It's a different thing. Yeah, yeah. Looking at them next to each other, they're they're both equally big. All right. I wouldn't even know what to critique on the You know who's not class. that big? Lou Ferrengo. I thought that guy was huge. He played the Incredible Hawk. So to, in my mind, uh, he played an Incredible Hawk when I was a kid. And in my mind, he was just a ginormous person. His muscles are huge, but I think he's pretty short. How, how, am I wrong about that? You, um, you might be right, because, I mean, they use shorter guys like that to look huge. Oh, he's 6'5". I'm, I'm, oh, man, fuck. Totally, oh, never mind. I yeah. fucked that up entirely. <laughs> Jesus, I don't know who I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of something the wrong guy. Well, six. You're thinking five, of uh, like maybe uh, the Colombo guy, like Arnold's friend, because he maybe was short. I am. He was yeah. short, and he was more powerful than Arnold in every lift, I believe. Huh. <sighs> I mean, yeah, yeah I, Lou, Lou Ferrigno. He looks. He's huge in these old Hulk things. It's just, I think, painting your entire body green. It's <laughs> not flattering. Like there's not, I feel like it's getting rid of a lot of, a lot of the good lighting and angles that they use. Like he just almost looks doughy and then you get close and it's like, no, those are, they're visible abs under that green paint. Well, have you ever seen pumping iron? No, yes. I've never seen that. Wait, you've never seen pumping iron, Taylor? Uh, Do you know what I it forgot. is? That's, that's Schwarzenegger's movie. Okay. So Taylor, I've pumping iron this. is a documentary about Arnold Schwarzenegger taking, like trying to win like his fourth Mr. Olympia in a row or something like that. And it's that. the lead up to it. And the idea is that he's pit against Lou Ferrigno. And so they go and they cover Lou Ferrigno and his training with his father. They cover, mm -hmm. they cover Arnold and his whole shtick. And then like it culminates. And then they also cover bodybuilding as a sport and talk about like the deal with it. And um, then it culminates with the Mr. Olympia pageant. I believe it was, it could have been a universe or something, but I think it was Olympia. Mm -hmm. And, there's this one part where it's like maybe the day before or it, it's at least maybe it's the Friday and the thing is going to be on Sunday, but the contestants are there in wherever the fuck. <clears throat> and Arnold is having lunch with Lou Ferrigno and Lou Ferrigno's father. And what you have to keep in mind is Lou Ferrigno is deaf and he oh. reads lips, but he's not very uh, verbal. Um, he, I he, didn't know that. Especially back then when he was younger, he struggles. So and he's and he was embarrassed by it. Arnold, on the other hand, has been taking acting classes and learning English like like for a couple mm -hmm. years now. And he's as you know, he's Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's he's a pretty slick guy. And he's sitting there. He says something like, you know, and he's eating like his salad or whatever while he says this. He he's like, Man, you look tremendous, Lou. You look tremendous. You must have been working so hard, so hard. It's a shame. It's a shame. If you just had three, maybe four months to peak, you could have. <laughs> You could have done something this year, you know? You know, you're you're close. You're close. Three or four more months and you'd have been there. Like he's saying he's saying this, and Lou is like kind of picking it up, and Lou's father is just like, you motherfucker. Like, <laughs> not wanting to make a scene. And Lou Lou can't say anything because he's incapable of defending himself in like a verbal argument. Aww. So it's it, it, it's it's Arnold Schwarzenegger bullying. comes off like an asshole. He bullies really? everybody. He bullies yes. people in the gym during training. He bullies people before the competition. He wins the competition and is still incapable of extending any grace. Even after he wins, he's just like, you could say the alpha-ing everyone, but that sounds cool. It didn't come off cool to me. It, it came off asshole-ish. Yeah. It like, he came he, off to me as someone who had worked so hard for so long and believed while they were doing the work that they were the best. And then they got there and all of their hopes and dreams had been affirmed. And then he literally is wearing a shirt that says Arnold is numero uno and he's smoking <laughs> a joint and he's just going, yeah, and he's just like, <laughs> like, like it just looks like he's, he is the epitome of a winner. Like, like, like he's like, like he's done it right. Like, like he's, he spent yeah. the last year, working toward this thing and he's like head and shoulders better than everybody else it's, it really isn't even close and he's, he's a genetic freak and and the bullying thing i don't see it as like high school bullying like for the sake of being cruel <clears throat> i see it as him trying to get a mental edge on a mentally weak opponent yeah although you might you might argue the ethics of that and whether or not that's a reasonable way to approach that but that's also how it came off to that's me the picture that. it's like manipulating See, an opponent manipulating an opponent like, it'd be easier for me to um, to agree with that narrative if that was when he did it but no 
he would like his training partners. He was an asshole to the whole time. It's tr- like he's always just better than you, better than you, better than you. And I, I wonder. But isn't if- this the whole persona you guys were talking about moments ago with the uh, the UFC stuff? Like talking about the, the game they're spitting versus the social media image versus what they believe kind of deal. Isn't that just this? Yeah, yeah. I, I have. A, I, so I, I see your point. Um, this was a hard time years, describing yeah. why some people do it and they come off as like assholes or cringe or whatever. And other people do it. And I'm like, this is a hell of a show. I want to watch more. But it, there's a with, very fine line, right? Like b- between being offensive and being like entertaining yeah or i don't know like i I have seen people do this jerk thing with a little bit of a wink like you know i'm playing a character here if you you know if you really think the ref was distracted and i hit this person with the steel chair then you're a fool and i can't be responsible for your level of stupidity but this is the gimmick and we're having a good time here i enjoy that but I, with Schwarzenegger, it didn't seem like that. It, it seemed like this was his honest and sincere bullying of the people around him. Yeah, I have no dog in that. I have no dog in that fight in the sense of like I don't know anything about Arnold Schwarzenegger particularly or care one way or the other really. But uh, when I saw that documentary, that was the kind of vibe I got. Was like this is a person attempting to manipulate an opponent. So yeah, that's what uh, I got. His workout well. partners. <laughs> Yeah, and who knows? Who knows what that is? Part of that might be like the it might be a fragile ego thing, or it might literally be like this is how you got to think about it to fucking like that's the headspace he needs to be in all the time to make this win. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe that level of T. I mean, maybe he's pushing his training partners for all I know. I don't know. Yeah, I I I do know that was. You do need to watch that movie though, Taylor. It's yeah, I'll check it out. This is really interesting. I'm I'm looking at and it's him and his prime. Like like it's maybe you can watch that while you're watching Dune. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Well, I'm watching that. Kyle can catch up on Dune. I I might actually watch Dune tonight. I, I hope you like it because I know you've been wanting to, to like it. I think I will like it. I won't love it. Um, it's a pretty good environment to watch it in right now. It's so quiet here. I'm. Um, I can say it now because I'll be gone in the morning. But I'm on this lake, and uh, I think it's like a vacation spot here in Southern Illinois. But for the summer, obviously, so no one else is here. Mm-hmm. So like, there's no one here on this big finger that like goes out into a lake and. I, I I mean, if I scream for help outside, <clears throat> there's no one here. Um, hmm. There's there's no one anywhere near me, like miles away. Like there's houses, but no one's in them because they're all like vacation houses. Sometimes it's neat to take an off season vacation. We're going to the beach, my family, in a, a time that's coming up that I'm not telling everyone in advance, and it'll be cold. And it's like I did it last year twice when my friend got those places, and I really enjoyed it. You know, just. Maybe fly my paramotor from the beach, hand it some tandem rides, do whatever. Yeah, that'll be fun. <clears throat> no, I, I've I've often done that. Um, I think a lot of people like going up to like Gatlinburg when the leaves are changing. Hmm. But I used to go up there when it's like snowing or something like that. Like I don't know. I like little little winter vacations, and I, I I've always liked being really spontaneous. I'm so gl- glad my fucking probation is over and I can do that more because like sometimes mm-hmm. I'll just be up late and like see a commercial or something and be like, Hey, I want to go there. And I used to just do that. And the last couple <laughs> of years it's been locked down, but it was fun it, to just get in the car and go. Yeah. And with this job, you can do it. Like if you remember your laptop. <laughs> 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 yeah. For the, uh, for, I, we said this on PKA and I guess I'll catch PKA up a little bit. So like I decided to go to Illinois at midnight with no prior thoughts of going to Illinois. I was just like, hey, I want to go to Illinois. I'm going to do it. Packed my bags in 10 minutes, got in the car, left, and uh, drove seven hours in the middle of the night. I got here when the sun was coming up. And um, I packed everything in those 10 minutes. I got, <clears throat> I got like my surge protector and my mixer, my boom, my microphone, um, lighting, cameras, um, all the wiring, extension cords, you know, all my toiletries, uh, everything I could need. I even brought sodas. I was like, you know, you always stay somewhere you need soda or like whatever you're going to drink. If you, I brought, tw- I brought two 12 packs of soda so I wouldn't have to stop at a store. I left my laptop, my brand new laptop that, that was bought for trips like this. I left it sitting on the couch. I brought the charger, left the laptop. Well, you're so, halfway there. <laughs> I know. 
So I went to Walmart yesterday and I bought a $200 laptop and that was being real sketchy. So I thought that maybe it was the performance of the laptop. So I bought a $500 laptop today and it is um, still real bad. So either $500 laptops still aren't good enough or it's the internet connection. Um, I don't know, but I'll be back home the next time we record anything. So for now, yeah. until you find another commercial plan at two in the morning and <laughs> visit New Hampshire, I think I will. I mean, yeah, I mean yeah. it was a particularly effective marketing campaign that really nails Kyle. Like, yeah, <laughs> Northern Illinois. Here. I mean, what it else are you like doing? That. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it, it, it honestly wasn't the weed, uh, but but um, the uh, it, it was this sort of happenstance. The um, but where I am now, though, I was thinking like, I'm already here. I almost did like like last whenever I visited you that time, Woody, um, like years and years ago when uh, you were at the Apex House. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I left your house and I was like, you know, I'm in North Carolina. I got friends like in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll just drive all the way to Pennsylvania. And I like I, we I like come from Boston. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like oh no, not that time. The time when you were um when uh when I stayed a couple days and we watched like the UFC fights and we did like a laser tag. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that trip. Um, like when I left your house, I I I, I actually considered like continuing a little silly trip and just driving to Pennsylvania and hanging out with some friends up there. I'm already in Illinois. Where could I go to from here? Well, what what's on Saint your Lewis. on your docket? Yes, St. Louis. <laughs> The I, <laughs> visit St. Louis. Look at you. Look at all the sites. You can see the crime. No, you could go. You could go up into Minnesota and see the true cold. That oh, I think Mitty. Mitty's up in Minnesota. Yeah, that's that's. I'm trying to freezing. get us to do some kind of PKA meetup episode. All right, if, that all right so if we clamoring for if we, if we want to do a PKA meetup, let's make it fun. Hmm. Yeah, let's go lazy. Look, Not right, first, first, first of all, here, <laughs> first of all, here, here's what we should do with our PK meetup. Um, one, not plan it here. Two, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we should like make it an event where, like, I don't mean an event where others join, but like where we go do a thing, like, yeah, like, like make one of Woody's type two fun memories. And uh, Ooh, I'll slash your tires, but no more camping. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna slash your tires. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> then we're all in the I'm rental car. Giving and me. receiving, <laughs> PK, huh? Yeah. Um, and uh, and just do it that way because I'd like to, like, I don't know, I'd like to do a thing. Yeah, I'll that would be fun. Things. I don't know. I'm what excited thing. for you, uh, all your freedom now. Like you can just pick up and do whatever. I, I, because I've been watching. Kyle's a very close friend of mine. Watching him get anxious and like not be able to do shit, and to be able to just one a.m. Fuck it, I'm driving across the country. Like that's great. I'm, I'm so it's glad that it wasn't longer than two years. Jesus, can you yeah. imagine if it was like four years? I think something? it was. A, I think it could have been five. Oh. Have you really been out for two years, Kyle? Yeah, uh, yeah. So how long yeah. is probation? Yeah, wow. Well, it does feel like longer than that. No, it, it feels like your prison stay was more recent. I said it backwards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I it followed. No, it's, been 25, it's been 25 months almost to the day. Holy shit. Huh. Yeah, 25 months. Yeah, it, it, it seems recent to me too. I've still got my uh, Talladega Federal Prison Camp uh, pin. My, my... <laughs> <laughs> can, give you, can give you a pin? Yeah. <laughs> no, Enjoy the stay. Like it's a writing utensil, like, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That was like a pin. Like, you know, like you got one for the shop on the way oh, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like a badge. I or, still or, got or, my pin. <laughs> gotcha. No, um, yeah, it, it seems recent to me too. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm glad that's that's fucking over. But yeah, I believe that I could have been sentenced to six months in prison and five years of probation. Fucking hell. Yeah. Well, if you decide to hang out in Southern Illinois any longer and you want another three hours on your trip, let me know. We can, I'll let you know. We can say hello. We can get the bows out. Ooh, we can get the bows out. Ooh. My dogs can bark at you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> It'll be, they'll be so afraid. That I, it took me a while to come back when I went to the bathroom earlier because I, I went out there and Fozzie has been like having this weird breathing thing. Oh, and I've got... Gets, 
so excited he starts hyperventilating and so i went out there and he, he was like so excited to see me because my wife's at home right now and so he just started wagging his tail and he starts going <laughs> like not able to and i'm like Fuzzy, it's okay it's okay but it's okay are you gonna We're, kill your dog by the fact your dog likes you i mean maybe you, i hope not we like actually we have him set up intro to, to like vet. animal abuse <laughs> <laughs> we're taking him to the vet on saturday because every time he gets like stoked he's like having trouble like breathing as much as he wants and i don't know what it could be because the other dog's fine he's too but... happy they need to give him like the opposite of those sris like just some sort of depression yeah. pills <laughs> I, you know what i would do if i was at taylor's house i think i'd hit the taylor gym Ooh. so it's a high quality gym it's a the very taylor. good gym the taylor gym. it's a bunch of, i mean but compared to woody's it is dirtier because it's all unfinished. Woody's is all nice, crisp, clean. I like that about it. I do have a lot more space down there, though. And like I was thinking the other day, like maybe I maybe I'll just put up drywall, like not finish the whole thing, just drywall down there, make it look cleaner. And I was like, wood paneling. Am, am I going to shoot up in the hockey area at drywall? Fuck no. Like yes. Yes, no, I'll, I'll put drywall. holes. I'll put holes in it. And that could take hours to fix every three years like no big deal it would look like such gar because i have one of those like you know oh, insulation nice. foil things like that that's like foil and foam or something it was and it's <laughs> behind the hockey area and it, it is just chewed to shit after just a cut because between most sets i'll go and like grab a couple pucks and shoot and then go back to working out what if you put up drywall with netting that that could work actually yeah put up some netting Okay. All right. Solution. <laughs> 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 I was trying to think. I'm like, find a way to poke a hole in it so it doesn't seem like. So it seems like you've thought of this. <laughs> ah, but I have not thought of it. So it makes a lot of sense. Because it, it um, I don't know. It, it's not just the fact that it's drywalled, which looks nice, mm -hmm. but like the lighting and the mood sort of brightens up. Like it to me, a poorly lit basement is a depression chamber. Mm -hmm. But uh, a really finished basement with some drywall and stuff is a pleasant place to exist. Now it, it may oh. have been poorly lit in the past. Like mm. I, yeah, I was going to get those those shop lights at first like, a couple years ago, like those big long shop lights. Then mm. I looked around on Amazon for like those LED just screw in things where you can fold like a butterfly, like the the lighting. Does that make sense? So you Not just you, you screw it in, and then it's got a bunch of LED panels that all are flat. So there's like. Imagine like a flower. There's like five petals. Oh, yeah, and each yeah, one yeah. has three. And then you can kind of fold them around. So they screw into a regular light bulb thing, but then there's a bunch. It's almost like a tiny ceiling fan with the little wings. Yeah. And, and for like the first two years, I use these ones. I just first one on Amazon. It's more of like a yellow light that you would see in a room, like a normal mm -hmm. room. And just like two months ago, I was like, I really want it to be bright as hell in here. And like really not thinking, went and found those same things. And I was like, absolute brightest fucking one i got four of them because I, I need i need four to cover my whole basement area and uh -huh. it genuinely took like two days of working out down there before i was used to the brand like the huge amount i like i was like benching incline benching and the thing was so bright i was like ah, like i had to like, look away I from it but that. oh no i can't do that it, i i fixed it now so it's not as intense but it's uh, if i didn't it's think way better I would, lighting now if i didn't think it would make me look like a complete asshole i would wear my sunglasses in the gym like like when i'm there during the daytime like like i would really? absolutely wear them yeah you, you don't it's too i never bright. wear sunglasses my I gym could be better house. lit. It has a really big window, so it's typically lit when I work out. But if it's ever night, which is coming sooner, eh, it's too dim. Yeah, I I have some windows in mind, like, but it's a basement gym, and so it's only certain times that like those big long windows mm -hmm. are actually getting light anyway. But yeah, it's it is I'll say uncomfortably bright if I turn those like, <laughs> all the way up and I leave them all on. Uh, but I'm I'm used to it now. It's nice. Yeah. Man. But yeah, the the gym. If if we ever, if either of you were ever here, have to get a workout in. Yeah. We're not doing the same days. We're two people are not doing pole day at the same time. We want to no lines, no lines. So, <laughs> okay, so pull, push, legs. You gotta, you gotta. You know, well, I guess I'm almost on the other team. Like, oh man, I guess I have to rest while you go. <laughs> <laughs> this sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> but your rest can be going into the hockey area, shooting some pucks at the the targets in the corners, seeing if you can pick one. Every once you in a while, put a hole like, in that wall. 
Yeah, put a hole in. There's so many, it won't even matter. But every like, I'm not good enough to like just put it in the top corner every time because there's a bag in each of the top corners where you fire it into, mm -hmm. and if you score, obviously it goes in there. But like every once in a while, just like coming off a bench, I'll like first one like whip it and it just pew, right in there. And every time that happens, I'm just like, ah, it's not getting better than that. Let's put the stick back and, <laughs> and go back to lifting. <laughs> and then other times, I'll be I'll get like all fucking 35 of those orange pucks I have. I'll be like, all right, you'll do your next set when you can hit one in both in a row. And like half an hour will pass. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> you just need to get back into it. It's, it's, if it were going to happen, it would happen by now. Yeah. I love that little like addition to my gym, that little hockey area. It's just such a fun little thing to have. And when like if people come over and I have like a, a party and someone gets drunk enough that they want to put on the goalie stuff, that's great. <laughs> it's so much then fun. Then you can really hurt them and it's their own fault, right? Well, I see... That's I, I've learned this because I played hockey my whole life growing up, street hockey, basement hockey, everything. You if someone volunteers to be a goalie, you do not hammer them. You don't fuck with them. You don't try and dangle them, at least not for the first like hour. You build confidence. You make them think they're doing very well. You make them want to stay in goal. Give them a couple satisfying saves, because if you just shell someone who's not used to playing goalie and they catch a puck on like the underside of their arm and they're bruising, they're going to say this is the worst position in the sport. I quit. <laughs> And it is to realize it's the worst position <laughs> yeah. in the sport. Yeah. It is. It is absolutely the worst position in the sport. If I could go back as a kid, I would have said no to being goalie and played out instead. I was mm. I was always jealous of how much more fun it seemed they were having. Because I like and of course, like you put your own thought process in it, but I was playing for like a pretty elite good team. And I remember I'd see like a friend of mine, a forward, give up the puck, like give it a turnover in the neutral zone. And it's like he just skates right off. And it's like that guy just fucked up big time, but nobody knows. He's just he's just another guy on the bench. Me though, Happens I have to stand. The game. No I have to stand deal. there the whole time. And so if I like try and get a puck and it bounces over and I look like an idiot, I just have to stand there and like get made fun of like, <laughs> by, <laughs> by people. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Then, I, I would. I didn't realize until I tried goalie how hard it is to handle the puck. Yeah, like dude. So the. One of the lower like beer league levels is the C league level. If you were going to play hockey for the first time, right? You're 33 years old and you decide you want to play hockey. You enter in the C league. There are guys in the C league who absolutely handle the puck as well as NHL goalies. Like most guys in the C league are as good at puck handling as the NHL goalies. And I'm like, why are they so awful? Why are why are they like practice a little, you dick? And then mm -hmm. I tried it. With a goalie glove and a blocker and that ridiculous, unwieldy, heavy stick. Mm -hmm. like, ah, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. It makes you look incompetent. Like even in the NHL, there's like three goalies, maybe two, who when they come out to play the puck, you're like, all right, I'm, I'm, uh, they'll probably do okay. But for the, <laughs> for the most part, like if it's a goalie from Europe and they leave the net, Every player in the NHL, because, you know, they do they do tech just like any sport where they're like, shoot high on this goalie, do this, do that. When like Marc-Andre Fleury comes out of the net to play the puck, you can see the team he's playing against get more excited because he's <laughs> he's so apt to fumble it and fuck it up or get hit by someone on accident. One of his own teammates or misplay. It, you're right. It's it's like almost an archaic thing in hockey to even have the goalie come out unless it's like an easy setup. But when they come out and like they're already in the ozone, it doesn't make any goddamn sense. Like they need to drop that. But anyway, hockey, hockey talk. Yeah. Carolina Hurricanes undefeated 9-0. and Two more wins, and they take, I think, sole possession of the longest win streak to start a season ever. That'll be 11. Yeah, they are right now the best hockey team who have ever played. There's never been a team go undefeated, and there's... Funny, I've never far, even heard of them. Thus far, <laughs> no one has proven they can beat the Hurricanes. That's true, and they've beaten world beaters like... Chicago, <laughs> Phoenix, like <laughs> all of those Titans, I, but they are genuinely super good. I, I was listening to a, it may have been the hockey guy or some hockey podcast, Steve Dangle, I don't know which one, but they were talking about how they could see like, based on how the season's folding out a blues versus Carolina Stanley cup, because the blues are looking very good. Ooh. And so are the hurricanes. And that's not a matchup I'd want to take right now because the hurricanes, I think are just, they're just better. They yeah, we'll take uh, over the hill Tarasenko, one arm, good old yeah. lefty. See how well he can still shoot. You know, it's funny. He's having a tremendous season. <laughs> he's, uh, he's he hasn't faced us yet. That's true. That's true. But I, <laughs> I love you're just like 
go to sports things like that guy fucking piece of shit he's like he's having a, he's having a wonderful breakout season even so <laughs> okay <laughs> but speaking of sports i was just thinking woody i, I don't know this because i don't know much about you totally honestly but are you a big hockey fan because this is the first time i heard you ever mention hockey or something is this are you one of these guys who's like my team's doing well so i'm like fucking all in for it kind of no, deal, i'm or? definitely that latter guy i have been a big hockey fan before um <laughs> and i played it for 10 12 years or something okay. but uh i'm not keeping up with it lately right. yeah you don't so. really follow the sports m- too much at all filthy right no no i might be doing um what were you calling it c level i think whatever yeah. i think i'm probably oh, gonna be starting yeah? some f level soccer this uh this year i'm gonna That'll do a fun. men's team oh. in the or a, not a men's team co-ed team in this area just to get out of the fucking house and well, do something. enjoy your future injuries i can tell you yeah. as a fellow grown-up who walks into sports like that i yeah so you'll... I'm mostly doing it for the beers and the social, honestly. But um, mm-hmm, if mm-hmm. I have to, I guess I'll deal with it. So. <laughs> my my youngest I... brother, he's I mean, he's way too young to be getting hurt in sports. He was like, he was living in Chicago a while ago. And he was like, yeah, I'm doing like this indoor sports league just for the same reason you said. Like, I want to get out. I want to be able to like see people. Like one of the first games, he wore cleats in indoor soccer and like sprained. They thought he tore his ACL. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> you're obviously not supposed to wear cleats in indoor soccer. Like, there's no. I didn't know no that. Games. They have indoor Wait, what cleats. What do you mean you're not like, supposed to wear special indoor cleats? Right? You are oh, supposed well, to wear indoor he cleats. He was using for this. Uh, whatever the normal kind of cleats are that you're, that have too much grip. And I think he tried. I know because I got to go fucking buy some. Oh mm. well, make sure you buy the right ones because he was apparently not. And he's like, so, "Yeah, it was terrible. It's a huge loud pop." And then I went home. <laughs> <laughs> and then that night, he's like, "And I was laying in bed, saying like, you can fall asleep." just just fall asleep and he's like and he's like no he had to like call an uber to take him to the hospital he was in so much pain <laughs> wow but he's, he's better now they thought it was a full acl pop but it was some uh-huh. like middle of the road one he's all better now but yeah good good yeah that well, that sounds ideal then yeah ideal. <laughs> just what i'll aim for too yeah are you you need to go really try hard yeah establish <laughs> And I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna treat it like I'm playing a video game, right? Like, so I'll just be yelling like aggressively at the opposition, like they can't hear me. I'll just act like I'm just alone in a room, shouting to a camera. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be perfect. Filthy you know, drop like, pass! Don't what you the fuck with that? Me. Are you kidding me? Look at this shit! <laughs> you know, like when my teammate, you know, who's also gonna be some like you know, just random person who hasn't played sports yeah. in 20 years, kind of deal, passes <laughs> the ball and misses it. I'm sure that will go over well. I can't wait. Oh yeah, can't wait. You're mad at them exciting. giving you like coaching tips from the bench. Yeah, <laughs> my friend sprained his ankle. Zach, can you share this picture with everyone? This is the worst sprained ankle I've ever seen in my life. Oh, <laughs> that does not look good. No, people say broken bones are a pro- broken bones are not really that big a deal. Sprains, sprains. Oh my god! god. <laughs> Okay, I'm glad we're all on the same page. I'm like, wow, they're taking this real well. <laughs> it looks, it looks, it looks like me. he's like bending an arm, and someone photoshopped a foot on there it's a sprained ankle uh it was actually non-surgical they, they what the deal was is <laughs> yeah, most of the time they would operate on that and Just they're like you the know stick, what right? there's a new way to address this do you want to try like an experimental thing <laughs> no. and he had really good results he's fine now he heard it mountain That's- climbing Oh my god! It's amazing that he would say yes to that because they'd be like, "Hey, we get this really experimental technique for something that's been happening to most of human for humankind for thousands of <laughs> yeah. years. Would you like to be that?" And I'd be like, "No, I'll go with the you know the traditional treatment for this." What if, so. what if they? <laughs> All right, his, we'll walk it what off. If, what if they cut his feet off? <laughs> Or they cut his feet off and put some skateboards down there or something. All right, let me just let you know how it goes. <laughs> kind of a wacky you the, experiment. We're glad you agreed. something new. We're giving you the same right. legs that like, agreed, South African so. murderer had. <laughs> oh, yeah, the blade dude. Oh, Pistorius? The, the, Pistorius? Is that Pistorius, right? yeah. Oscar Pistorius. The blade yeah. runner. What a cool fucking nickname, man. Yeah. Man, I hope he's out of jail. See those. <laughs> see those. Are, are you kidding? Same thing? thought. Same thought. I'm murderer. Was he a murderer? Maybe I made that. Yeah, up. he killed his girlfriend. Did he, did he oh, kill yeah. his girlfriend Con- through the murderer. bathroom door. Does yeah, that shot sound her. right? Shot her. Yeah. Oh, that's mean. It says height five foot two in stumps. Oh god. <laughs> that's that's what it says. It says five foot two and then in parentheses in stumps. In yeah. stumps. So, I guess you can choose your height when you're the Blade Runner. You're like well. seven and a half feet tall, just <laughs> <laughs> in stilts. <laughs> Let's see, when's he getting out? Five El- years eligible? in prison, he should be out two years ago. 
Oh, shit. Let's get the Blade Runner on here. Oh, no. His Ooh. sentence has since been increased to 15 years as of November oh. 20, 2017, but eligible for parole in 2023. Well, Hey, PKA eight hundred. Let's go. You go to prison <laughs> as a you know fairly innocent, careful murderer, and then while you're in prison, they turn you into an actual criminal. Yeah, they're like they're every <laughs> day they're stealing his. Oscar. Oh, so he? There's no way they're giving him blade legs in jail. Dude, he's, he's probably on stilts. Yeah, or just in a wheelchair. He would use the blade legs to jump the fence. No, someone would oh, beat his ass, no, take the blade legs, and make a throat. Clean. They wouldn't boing, have to have boing, shivs anymore. Boing. They'd have a full scimitar. No, he would just be <laughs> doing cartwheels, like cutting people's heads off. He's an mm. Olympic athlete. Cartwheels? Yeah, cartwheels. How? With his fucking <laughs> magic Olympic legs. I thought he was using those to cut people's heads off. He is. That's he's got, why he's, got he's inverted. Pairs. Okay. He's, no, no, he's, he's doing his... cartwheels. He's putting his feet at head level and just becoming a rotating blade. Oh, okay. He's the blender. I feel so stupid for not getting it. Yeah. It was it was really deep and really good. So it was really deep and re- <laughs> very deep, very good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Talking about it. Yeah, yeah, that that guy, you know, I don't care for him. Oscar kind of Pistorius. I think he did something kind of a in the rascal. Wrong. He's a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a ruffian, uh, a no good Nick, uh, a ne'er do well. Ne'er do well. The Twitch hack. Twitch. Uh, oh yeah. Is this from a while yeah. ago? Yeah. yeah, there was a Twitch hack. The coolest part was they exposed everybody's earnings. I mean, How I don't mean to big cool? time you guys, but I'm like the 8,400th largest earner on Twitch. Nice. Over the- <laughs> Which is hilarious in some sense, right? Because there's 8 million. There were like, I think for that period, there were 8 million people who streamed on Twitch during that oh, time period. Oh, I actually wow. thought that was a really low, bad number. <laughs> <laughs> but I forget Taylor's rank, but he was higher than me. And I didn't look you up, Filthy. I'm sure you're higher. I don't know. I think I was, I was like 3,700th or something like that. Okay. I have no idea. I didn't look into it. Yeah, I guess. Well, I want to know a, now, Zach. What what was I? It might have been too old for you. Oh, it was like, just the last. It, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't like particularly comprehensive because it was, you know, the last couple, like I think it was like eighteen months or something, maybe longer. Maybe it was longer than that. Maybe it was twenty-seven. I can't remember. I didn't. I didn't even look into what it, it was. was so it was just just months. the Twitch portion of that too. But it might so. have ended before you got there, Kyle. And um, also, it was about subscriptions and ads. It didn't cover donations, oh. which um, I, or sponsors. Oh, no. A lot Some of those guys stuff, were only making $100,000 a month. <laughs> a lot of my revenue comes from the text to speech. Like, it's probably the most profitable part of my stream. People ask really? me questions and I answer. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of like, I think this is why people would watch me. They would ask questions and I would answer. And that was like, they're not there to see me play escape from tarkov <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh why are you uh, doing that woody i don't know any better i just punish the himself yeah. <laughs> but uh um yeah so anyway the the earnings didn't include that and that was a lot you know, for me it was probably better than subs uh hmm. but did anything ever happen about the leak filthy just kind of went away um you hear some stuff from some small partners not getting income from this in some way um but and you the whole, finally the whole... implemented all the features they don't have because <laughs> they got the source code to Twitch. Yeah, and uh, I mean it was the whole source code leaked, so I'm not I'm not expecting that to be totally done yet. I think we'll find some exciting Easter eggs later. Um, what could they up. find in there? I don't even know. The there were like code. golden kappas that were given to like certain people. They made it seem like it was random, but it was hard coded in. That there's was some stuff to like certain partners hitting like uh, essentially like immune to ban requests kind of deal. Like you'd have to go through their kind of essentially their Twitch interactive, their Twitch, that makes I don't sense, call it Twitch yeah. personnel, Twitch agents, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. legit. Like I remember, I think you couldn't just back in the day on YouTube, you couldn't community strike people. Like you were immune to strikes, even copyright strikes. If you were a certain class of channel, and it sounds like, oh, it's rigged for the big guy. Maybe so. But it, I mean, it, it probably is, but like, for a reason. Exactly. So. Like, like if you're yeah. a PewDiePie or something, there's probably a, a whatever, a million haters every video who want to fuss and you have to protect him from false claims. Yeah. I think the biggest, the biggest interesting part for me was 
how few people are making it on Twitch from that. And like, cause you know, like, so I see that number and I can see the number that's leaked for my income off that. Right. And I can go, okay, well that's, you know, I know, I know what my income is from all of my revenue sources as opposed to just Twitch, for example. Mm -hmm. So then mm -hmm. to see that in perspective and be like, okay, well, I'm making this amount of money and I see myself as this successful or like this amount of making it kind of deal in life kind of deal. And then like to think like, well, but I'm like the 99th point nine nine percentile of people streaming on Twitch. And granted, mm -hmm. probably most of these people are not attempting to make a living of it. But even from like partners, you're just like, holy shit. So a part of me goes, A, well, you know, the you know, we knew the top people were making fuck tons of money. We know this already. Yeah. And then that's not even that's not even the bulk of their income coming out of that, right? Because this is their Twitch numbers. For sure. Well, their big number numbers are coming off sponsorships. It's gonna be company it's companies playing paying product to be placed in their stuff. You know, like that's where we're right. gonna see the money from this. So playing forget that, that game for a reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or or yeah, or or doing these exactly or checking out that new game. Maybe he plays his main game for whatever, but whatever that is, right? So you see some of that and you're like, well, these numbers don't mean anything. And watching the community react to these numbers was kind of dumb from my perspective. But they then were the putting other too much it, credence in it, you know, like yeah, like the, the Twitch numbers fucking matter. The Twitch numbers mm -hmm. didn't fucking matter at all. Like it, anything, like if I look at that and I go, Well, Twitch is X percentage of my income, and and then I you you extrapolate that out for these other people and you assume it's even better their percentages yeah. like in other words twitch is an even smaller percentage of their revenue by and large i would guess from a lot of these streamers but then you see the other side of that which is well if i'm at this level and i'm making it at such a small margin essentially what the fuck are most of the people doing there like how yeah. few streamers right. are actually if i'm mm -hmm. if i'm better than almost everyone and not rich my goodness almost yeah, everyone else is broke <laughs> they're getting themselves that this is even a job is yeah. what you're saying yeah exactly exactly that and it was kind of shocking how high that was because I'm a, I'm a pretty small streamer and like to see that like as a ranking for that i'm like wow really on the whole fucking platform with eight million people streaming i'm 3700th are you fucking kidding me mm -hmm. like yeah that kind of that kind of blew my mind a little bit that portion of it i wonder if there will be well i guess they couldn't really leak uh like sponsorship deals because that's more independent and on the back end depending on the streamer yeah. so wouldn't yeah, it's not, not through I've Twitch. never taken one of those. I don't know if the offers I get are like legit or not. And also, they're not huge. Like I, the offers I get are like eight hundred bucks. And I don't want to be an asshole or anything, but I'm like, yeah, for eight hundred dollars, fuck you, I'll just do what I prefer to do. Like, yeah, it's like this isn't enough for me to really get behind your your product, right? Yeah. Right. I'm gonna play some game that I'm obviously paid to play <laughs> you know <laughs> and, and pretend i like world of tanks for this uh, no well i mean tons of games i mean they obviously make their money back in spades or otherwise they wouldn't do this like is stuff like among us and fall guys i feel like we're almost entirely artificially created as a trend by paying huge uh oh. streamers to make it popular and encourage people to download it and and get on there I, think, I, 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 I didn't us. think of that, but I bet you're pretty right-ish. I, I mean, if those games weren't fun, then the advertising wouldn't work, right? It, it, it has to be, you have to advertise a product people enjoy. Good Kyle was, was never yeah. going to play Fall Guys, though. He said it looked stupid, and <laughs> it, it was stupid, and it wasn't very good. <laughs> My I mean, son it, still plays it. It's on his computer right now. The, the, really? Yeah, he plays it all the time, and he's very good. He's my son is he's got to be a one percent fall guy player. He wins like every fifth game. Does he have? Oh, he has more than one win. <laughs> OK, well, then he we might then he than, might be a little better than me. I, he has more than 500 <laughs> wins, I think. Like, I don't know. Like he he wins all he wins a couple times a day. Jesus. Yeah, I I, j I was trying like really hard to win for like <laughs> hours of streaming. And I win? won once okay. ever like and. Yeah. You know. yeah, I remember I was joking that I was going to get the game and beat it once as fast as I could and then never play again. Just to it would, you. you know, the <laughs> finals it looked like so little fun that I couldn't bring <laughs> myself to spite you. How many people play? Sixty? Does that sound right? It Something like that. It's a huge yeah. game. Yeah. And then in the final round, there'll be like six. It's weird if he's not in the final round. Like something odd happened. Yeah. Often, wow. I would not make it to like the last round you know where i'd it'd fall or you get knocked over or sometimes you just get fucked because it seems kind of random like all the, yeah. the pendulous balls that swing at you and everything that game he does does are, you, are you streaming again taylor or no uh no not yet i think i'm gonna kick it up again soon though uh, i haven't for a while what, what happened with I that i'm the show's asking. most recent streamer oh yes yeah yes <laughs> you are I, I don't know the story do you mind 
Give, yeah, give me the two second. Uh, my basically my my wife has uh, a health issue, a problem with her spinal cord right now. I haven't I haven't dressed on the show in a while, but I uh, and basically it was like you know all that time at night that I would you know if I'm not doing this or PKN or streaming. I was kind of like, all right, well, this is like a lot more important than that. It's a, it's a very serious thing. It's called the cavernous malformation in her spinal cord, which is really rare. It's an overgrowth of blood vessels. They thought it was a tumor. Uh, and then it, they figured out when we took her to Mayo Clinic way up in Minnesota that it wasn't a tumor. It was this malformation of, of blood vessels. And that can bleed and cause a huge number of problems ranging from like pain which, you know, she had a pretty painful night last night too, to like, you know, if something really bad happens and there's a really bad bleed, it could be paralysis. So it's very scary. Um, we were originally, or I guess you know, so many things have changed that it almost matches back up with what I said a couple months ago, that we're still waiting to do the surgery because she's she's still struggling with pain and everything. But um, because she's improving, you know, as a whole, uh we're hoping that we can, cause it's easier for the doctor, the surgeon to remove and take care of if it's like shrunk a lot instead of when it's really overgrown. And so if we can wait it out and hopefully it doesn't rebleed, then we can either avoid a surgery. That's what we're praying, or we'll have to just go to Mayo and get the, the surgery, which, uh, you know, insurance doesn't cover huge amounts of it. We found out, but it's such a rare problem that like there are like one hand number of people in the country that have dealt with this. And so the guy at Mayo, this dude with like an Italian accent, very, uh, he wrote the book, all the pamphlets on cavernous fal- malformations that he? happened. In this, but he's, I'd say mid fifties. Oh, okay. Probably mid fifties. Um, still with it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so we're still waiting. We're hoping that it'll continue to go down. If a couple months go by and we get another MRI and they say it hasn't shrunk or that they think it might bleed again, there's no way to predict the bleed. Um, then we'll probably go the surgery route, but we're hoping to, cause y- you don't want invasive surgery, especially on your spine. There's always a huge amount of risk there. Like it's, and it's not on the spine, it's in the spinal cord, which is like fucking scary very, 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 very scary for both of us. And so really the streaming thing was like, you know, I'm going to take a break for a while. These evenings, I'm going to spend time with my wife. You know, we're, we're both very, very anxious about it, thinking about it all the time. And so that's kind of been where I'm at. Uh, because now we're planning to wait a couple more months or at least like another, yeah, I guess another eight weeks or so before she gets another MRI, we have to go back up to Mayo or we're going to go back up to Mayo to get the MRI because their MRI machine even is better than anything in like the, the rest of the Midwest. It's like two levels above it and they can see more, more distinct detail, which on something that small, you really need to see. Uh, so we're hoping and, you know, really that we can go up there, get the MRI. They'll say it's continued to shrink, you know, hopefully pain continues to go down. But we're prepared, you know, yeah, it's her mentally preparing for it more than me, but me also like I, I'm so worried sick about her. Um, but yeah, sorry, that's a huge downer. But that's that's why I've been taking the break from streaming just because it was kind of like, a, you know, there are more important family things right now. I need to be there for my wife, especially yeah, in those sorry, like sorry nights. To bring that up. I didn't, no, no, I didn't no, 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 not, not, yeah, a, nice not job, at all. Okay. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, yeah, people, nice people, ask, <laughs> people, <laughs> people ask me about it often. <laughs> and so uh, it's good. I, I, I talked about it again. Um, but so yeah, is I'll it that you again. can't stream because you're caretaking for all the time or is it more just knocked out of the groove? And it's, been it's like knocked out of the groove, but also like it's, it's good for both of us instead of like multiple nights a week, her being out there by herself, like kind of ruminating on all these scary things uh, that I'm out there with her. We're watching movies together. We're, you know, playing games together or whatever it is. And that's good for both of us. Like, it's not me doing it for her. Like, I want to be around her, too, because I she's my wife and I care about her deeply. And I'm just, you know, want to be there for her however I can. But, gotcha. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning to kick up streaming again, though. Uh, I don't know how often or, or what I'll even do. I If I leave it up to the audience, actually, what if I come back and all I do is magic now? People, people would hate that. <laughs> they Taylor, would hate it. Taylor, it's time for archery. Ooh, Ooh I can yeah. stream. Ar- I'm not confident enough in my form and abilities yet. I don't want to get roasted by all the expert archers. Oh, I've been weightlifting twice. They were all cool about form. And I saw abilities. one of those. Yeah, that was. Oh, neat. did you? Mm-hmm. Um, no, you need to put the see? camera down range though and shoot toward the camera. That'll be cool. Yeah. And expensive. That's an idea. I get a little piece of Lexand. Just a really short stream. 
<laughs> the better I am, the shorter this stream, shorter the stream will be. And it like shows the bottom nine hours and forty minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just couldn't hit it. To save my Shoot life. at it for a while. I, yeah. Have you had this thought that you want to get her operated on so that this doesn't cause a problem during pregnancy? Like if she's gonna pump out a kid or two, then you don't want her to face this during that. Yeah, that's definitely been a thought in our minds. Uh, so we're not getting pregnant right now because of this. Especially and, you. you know, yeah, especially me. I'm not going to ever get pregnant. I'm a man. But um, <laughs> yeah, that definitely has entered into it. Um, but then it's also like men can if, get pregnant. Not this one. <laughs> but um, <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's kind of what we were thinking also. And so before we did that, we'd want to have and even then, like, unfortunately, it's not like a broken leg. Like, there's so little data on this that, like, even when we're yeah, asking the guy who next. wrote the book on it, he's like, what can we do to predict a bleed? Or what should we have her? What activity should she not be doing? This, that, the other thing, all these questions. And he's like, you know, I, w I wish I could tell you more. There's not enough data. Like, this is a very rare thing. And so we don't know what causes a bleed. We don't know how to predict it. But it can bleed again at any time. And we're like, okay, but once you do the surgery, it won't bleed again. He's like, well, we can't guarantee that either. You know, like it could, it could bleed again. The surgery could fix it. And so it's like, well, fuck, this is a very, you know, he's like, and genetically, it could be like a genetic thing that ends up going away. So it's like, there's so many up in the air things, even when talking to like the expert of experts on it, that it's like, it's difficult, I feel like to make a decision. But, but the surgery is designed to stop this from happening in the future, right? Like it, it is, they yeah. never, they never want to guarantee an outcome. But that is mm -hmm. the point of it. Yeah. Yeah. And like he said that like with su successful surgeries, he's had patients get it and then go 15 years with no problems or whatever it is. Uh, so it's just a matter of there being so little information about it that it's like, OK, mm -hmm. but is it like we get the surgery and then there's a 10 percent chance it'll bleed again? Is it a 30 percent? Is it now it's 50 50 instead of a, a foregone eventuality? Like, where is that line and, and when does it make sense? Because, you know, if it's not that big of a benefit, spinal cord surgery is no joke. So you, mm -hmm. you don't want to go into that willy nilly. Not like, oh, your leg's broken. Let's just pop that right back. Let's let's fix it. We'll put some screws in there. Do this and that. Plate um, or two. You're good to go. Yeah. Yep. And so she's bummed because she hasn't been able to work out in months now. And like just and it'll go come and go like just yesterday I was lifting and she was down there with me walking on the treadmill only like a 30 minute like brisk walk on the treadmill. And last night she was having some pretty significant pain. And so it was like, well, fuck like that. I choose to believe you're down there flexing on her. Just like, man, my back feels strong. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to do good morning. Honey. You in? <laughs> I'm just I'm setting off the lunk alarm. <laughs> doing my I'm throwing my own dumbbells across my gym. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, speaking of I bought a rackable by uh, easy curl bar. Mm -hmm. So if you guys don't, for people that don't lift, the easy curl bar is the one with all the bends in it. You do biceps and maybe try some work, whatever. I fucking love my rackable bar. It is the greatest thing to have. I'm so happy with it. I, I kind of abuse my uh, weightlifting equipment. Like I'll drop it or whatever. And I'm just like, go and go into the, just like fucking drop it on the rack. I knew that it was going to be nice. Cause I didn't have to pick it up off the floor anymore. Like that's what mm -hmm. I expected. I didn't, foresee how nice it was when you're done to not carefully put it down i just drop it on my squat rack like i do everything else and uh yeah it's it's literally improved pool day I how like heavy it. is the bar like 45 30 normal bar 35 yeah so and that's another thing too my last bar weighed 18 so the math of like 18 plus 225s and a two two and a half is and that's incalculable. No one knows how much I'm lifting. <laughs> <Yeah>. Nobody knows. <laughs> but, but but with 35, like any bro knows that like whatever you throw. I don't curl this much, but you throw a pair of 45s on a 45 and it weighs 135. Then you do this mm. bro math, like two plates for this, whatever. And you kind of have these like known solutions. It's that minus 10. I have these known. So I don't, I don't do math. I just remember how much different plates weigh. And mm -hmm. uh, and you know, so it's still incalculable, <laughs> but I know the answers. Can you do? Are you doing anything else with it, like like weird grip bench or anything? I don't know how how extreme it is because some of those curl bars almost have like a hammer curl in the middle. It's not that strong. I do um, so far. I just do curls with it, and then I do the uh, reverse curls where your uh, palms face down. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll work something else into it. Kyle, do you, can you see yourself building out a home gym in, if you decide to move or something like yeah. that? Or are you <clears throat> for sure? Yeah, you're going to yeah. love home gym master race, man. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, uh, that's something I've, I've given a good bit of thought to. Um, again, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do, so that's going to wait. But uh, but yeah, I've looked at equipment. I would keep it pretty. I mean, I would base it around like the workouts that I like to do, right? Like there's certain pieces of equipment that I absolutely have to have, and there's a few that I don't need at all. Obviously, I need a, dumbbells are a given, and mm-hmm. uh, I, you know, but but there's there's some stuff I need and some stuff I don't. A lot of it's expensive though. I might price it out and be like, I'm a gym guy. <laughs> like, like, Maybe. I'm a public gym guy. <laughs> really? Right? Yeah. Because like, like how I'm, expensive are you talking for this? Well, like if you if all right, so the gym I go to, if you were to try to buy all of the equipment that I actually use, <sighs> granted, all right, so so it's it's, a it's a little unfair because I'm using different machines and there are mach- other machines that would combine multiple exercises, multiple machines into one, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's like but I use like eighty thousand dollars worth of machinery every time I go, you know, every week. Like when you compare every uh, combine everything I do because mm-hmm. there's so many I, machines I in like a, a you know a gym gym right I assume though that the benefit of like the home gym is the idea that you know for the same reason that I prefer to run from my house as opposed to go to a gym to run right which is the you remove that 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 step that prevents you from doing the shit that you want to do anyways right oh, so it's, it's the, the convenience of it mm-hmm. so no. I, okay yeah, interesting. I find so um, I find that if I've driven somewhere to do a thing, I'm much more likely to complete all of my tasks. Whereas if but I were are you as likely home, to have done it in the first place if you if you have to drive somewhere? For me, it's the it's like if I had that extra step of going somewhere to do it, I'm less likely to do it at all than I would be if I could do it from home. I'm the same way. Yeah, um, like I, I'm I'm def like having my gym here makes me feel like there is zero excuse for you to not go down there and lift right now. Like anything like. There's no excuse. It's right there. There's there's no line. Like just go do it, and that gets me. It doesn't to do bother it. me. It's 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 not terribly far to my gym, so I really don't mind just getting up and going. I it's also like ten like... hours away. <laughs> <laughs> In Southern <laughs> Illinois. Yeah, and right I mean, now, I, I really like right working now it's about out. Eight and a half. Um, but uh, your home but, gym yeah. wouldn't be any closer. But carry on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um. So so it's it's a bit of a coin flip, and and I I see I definitely see the advantage of being like, hey, do I want to work out? It's 30 steps away, probably should, versus like driving even two or three minutes. But uh, but like I said, like once I get there, like the idea of like not completing my task and going home is is uh, like, like like that happens so few times, like like ever, like like, like maybe two or three times I would um, or I have like stopped mid workout and just quit. And every single time it's been because I was either nauseous or like vomiting or something like that. Or like my blood sugar was so bad that yeah. like, uh, you know, I had just, I had fucked myself up. Understandable. I mean, I think you would like it. Like, and you, you, we've talked about this before. Like you'll finish your entire workout. And then if you feel like you have a little more in you, like you'll just be like, all right, well it's pull day. I'm going to go do like kind of a menagerie of pull exercises until I really feel burned out. I do that in my gym and it's like, there's no time limit. Like I get through my entire, you know, push, pull legs, whatever it is day. And it's like, you know what? I don't feel like I hit my quads enough. I'm going to do the leg extension machine again, or I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do the T bar row. Cause I feel like my back has a little more in it. And like, it's just I mean, fun. honestly, I, you know, I look, I get the advantages and the disadvantages, but I, I mean, I do that at the gym too. Like there's plenty of times where I, mm-hmm. I stay and do, you know, an extra 20 or 30 minutes of, of just nonsense. Like and when I, you go, you're not really waiting in line because you're going at good times. Oh yeah. There's no line. I, you know, I, I, I usually go like late at night um, or off hours sometimes. And, mm-hmm. and uh, even when the time, to- there's been a few times where I've had to go and I've sent you guys videos because it's usually something kooky going on at like noon or like in the afternoon. I mean, it's crowded, but like, I don't have to wait. Like I can, I can, I can move my workout around to the point where like there's, all right, well he's on this, but I can do that first. Mm -hmm. I can work around them. Mm -hmm. I'm never like standing there waiting. And if I am, I'll just ask to share. Like I got no problem asking to share. Like asking to play through when they're taking forever. Yeah, well, just just like share a machine, like like to like share like the pec machine or something. The pec a machine in particular is good for that. Like if you wanted to share a bench with me, it's hard. We bench different weights, Kyle. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, you know, t- stripping and adding all the time. 
but if it's a selector machine, which is we just remove the pin. Exactly. Then... Yeah, with like the pack deck, like um, if, if he's especially if he's doing the same like arm position or whatever, like mm-hmm. we can just like move the thing around. But if you were if you were building one, so you'd want a power rack, barbell, you'd want like probably five to a hundred pound dumbbells, right? Like the set. I would imagine five to a hundred. Um I think I don't think I need to go all the way to a hundred. I think I can get everything done with like see farmers carries are weird because I don't know if I'm better off going lighter or heavier. So like I, I I'm not even going heavy with farmers carries anymore. I usually mm-hmm. stay around seventy five. Like I was carrying hundreds mm-hmm. around, but it was like I think I can just carry the seventy fives a little further. You can use weights for that too. That, mm-hmm. That's what I did. I haven't. I I pulled farmers carries out, but I have. I do it with plates. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just I just like to go further with carrying less because it. For one thing, it just like when I when I release it, even with gloves, like it's like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like pulled like a callus. <laughs> it's like shifted the skin to one direction, and I'm just like, just, no, no, no. I get it. I'm like, I'm like, pull back down, pull back down, like, 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 <laughs> pull back to where you're supposed. Because you've been holding a fucking hundred pounds for yeah, they give you a bunch of calluses. Yeah, it, yeah, it hurts. It's not just cal. Farmers carries. My issue is that I I go pretty heavy on it. I think I do ninety in each hand, and um, that to me that's heavy. And it's like yeah. it's, when you pull the heavy shit, the injuries are a little tougher. The 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 tendon strain, this and that, and um, that's why I'm not back into farmers carries because I'm just wanting to be a stronger frame before I add them. Mm. If you were buying a machine, Kyle, it seems like Peck Deck is the one you would buy to add. Oh, I don't know. I would look at a lot of the like more high end machines that do a lot of different things, and and I would just have to look and and find the one that checked the most boxes. And there would be a little bit of math where it's like, all right, I want a machine that does all these things. Is it does it make sense to get this one that does them, mm-hmm. even though it's like a seven thousand dollar machine or an eight thousand dollar machine or whatever it may be? I mean, it works for Woody. Know. Like you, you have that super super nice functional trainer that does yeah. everything you could need. I like that thing a lot. Yeah, I I use it all the time. I use it today. What um, brand is it again? I forget. Cyrex, Cybex, maybe something like that. Um, yeah, that's really nice, and it, it's. I value my stuff being ready. Like I like my dumbbell set, but you know what? The shelf they sit on makes it so much better than it would have been otherwise. The selector functional trainer, like you want to do face pulls. I set it up in like 15 seconds and I'm ready to do that. Mm-hmm. I love the trainers at my gym. Like, 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 like these are people or machines. No, the machine. Like, 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 like <laughs> I don't even know how to describe that machine. You know, you've seen that gigantic, like, Red, red rack thing that I've that I've shown you before. Oh, the yeah. cable crossover. Yeah, that 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 whole setup thing, like like that, you can just do so many things so quickly with that. The most expensive part of the home gym is the room. Like that's where the money is spent. <laughs> You're saying the most expensive part of the home gym is the house. So you just told me what is yeah. the home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, that whole. <laughs> just consider like, oh, I want to add uh, whatever, like some sort of lat pull down in some other machine. If you want to bump out that room to make space for that, you're like 35 grand into the room expansion budget <laughs> to add four grand in machines. Yeah, you're better off getting one of those like backyard uh like 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 metal buildings at that point, right? You just get something Maybe. with a big basement. Know. The best machine in my gym is the HVAC machine. <laughs> like the, I remember Taylor said it and I stuck into my head like to him the like the coup de gras, the, the the finishing blow. The best part of my gym is that functional trainer, and it is mm-hmm. probably the most expensive thing. But whenever I describe my gym, I'm like, Man, it has its own AC. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that, that's that's the big thing that I got. That I love it, and it's a heater. It's a mini. It's a mini split, uh, heat pump, air conditioner thing. I can have any temperature in that room I want. It means so much to me. It's my favorite thing. Yours is in the basement, right? Or the, the lowest floor? Yeah, yours. Uh, uh, no, it's on the first floor. It's like attached to the master bedroom. Oh, okay. Yeah, because mine's in my basement. It's like 10, 12 degrees cooler than than my main level. Oh, yeah. And so I just have like fans. And then I set up a couple machines. So like they are, so I'm getting blasted. It's like I sweat a lot when I'm doing the T-bar row. And so I, I, <laughs> I never that. sweat. 
I never sweat. It's like 62 in my gym. Nobody else likes this temperature, but I'm the only one in there. I don't oh, sweat. I'm either. sweating. What? I don't sweat. Yeah, you do. You glisten. <laughs> 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 I get slick. No, um, you just I, get wet. Uh, I, I almost never sweat because there's so much like rest time between each of my sets. It's three minutes. So, and I'm walking around, so I'm keeping like it's not. I don't mm-hmm. know. I, I feel like the sweat just kind of dries off, and I'm ne- I'm never like dripping with sweat. Like, um, like if the, I superset, I am. The small of my back will be uh, a little sweaty, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. like, and but that's it. And if I if I'm, I, I usually wear these when I work out, like like my headset, um, and uh, like the ear cups will be sweaty. The, the I get a sweat on these... pattern on my shirt, maybe. All right, so so these aren't like crazy expensive. I think they were like two hundred fifty or whatever. The leather is fucking peeling off of the cups. Um, mm. It's really shitty. The I M50s, right? Too. It's probably because it's in the gym. Another benefit of the home gym, you don't have to just listen or watch to whatever they have there. I know you can like do podcasts or music yeah, or whatever, but I like having TV shows on when I work out. I don't want to listen to rock music. I want Family I Guy or King of the Hill or something to, to distract me a little more. I like that. Click on the link, Kyle. You can buy replacement ear pads for those, and it's no tools, 60 seconds to swap them off. That's wonderful. I'll get those. I'll buy Filthy, are you still uh, rock climbing a good bit in that new gym you found? <sighs> I've been in and out with that with COVID. So post um, mm-hmm. all the vaccination stuff, I went back into that and was climbing for maybe a month and a half or so. And then kind of Delta flared up again. I just did I did heavy bike riding this summer and uh, fall is what I was doing. So I was doing like 30 mile, 35 mile rides. For, How much um, is your bike? How expensive is God, it? God, I've forgotten now. Twenty, I think it was twenty five hundred. I think. Something okay, like so a good bike, but not like insane. Yeah, you do this to oh. him every time. I know. Uh, did I do? Did I tell you about my friend's bike? Can't remember. Maybe. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I've. I don't. I don't remember honestly. So fire away. Uh, and we're the only people we're going to be boring are your viewers. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm fired, they, fired up. They matter. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and quickly. Dude apparently is like this world class cyclist, and his bike is stupid expensive. It's a bicycle. I think it costs like fifty thousand dollars. He gets Yikes. it free. He doesn't have to pay for it. It's all sponsors and stuff. But I want to see I, a picture of a fifty thousand dollar bike. I don't I have a picture. It. The wheels are like half the cost itself. Like the the removable wheel part are like twenty five. I feel the difference. I want to know, I what, know what that is. Like I, I, if I ride a twenty five hundred dollar bike, and you know, you know, on a bread, I rode many cheaper bikes throughout my life. I want to know what a $50,000 bike feels like to ride. Like what the fuck yeah. is the difference? What he is and his way? team I'm win so like, he and, I don't know. He and his team win like every, they win 85% of the races they enter. Like they, they, it's almost a lock that, and he in particular, I think wins half of his team's wins. Like he just, just really I had this, good. I had this thought process when I was buying it. I, I sometimes right, pretty regularly bike with my wife. And I'm like, I didn't, I deliberately, I went steel frame again, deliberately. And part of the thought process mm. was like, I'm doing this for workout, man. I'm not, I'm not entering races. I don't want the lightest fucking bike out there. Part of, part of the goal of this is like, it sucks <laughs> to move this fucker, you know, <laughs> like that's, that's, that's part of what the thing was. So anyways, I, I, I did have that steel thought. Frame. Like, okay, Put some extra I spokes go. in there. That's right. It's just like, wind resistance. It's weld some lead you know fucking weights on there no not quite as bad as that but you know you get the idea like you're like uh, at a point i'm like i want i'm on a nice ride nice bike etc but like i don't want to go too far with it so yeah the only the only challenge like you said racing or even just keeping up with your friends like if you start getting beat by friends at your same fitness level it's like oh that's not that's not fair you just i see i never even thought like i guess i could join like a biking team or something like that for for that oh but i I'm think happy you'd like it my it. Own. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I like I like it. I like hanging out with my wife when we do that. We go on these rides; they're pretty fun. I like to just work out on my own fucking pace whenever I want for that. And you know, on a good day, I'll go super far, kind of deal versus you know, whatever. Like, I got a really nice bike trail. The Cedar Rapids is actually really nice for the bike trail stuff around here. So, like, I'm pretty close to. Uh, I can jump on a trail that goes forever, basically. So it I sounds like a mountain want. bike. Am I right on that? Uh, yeah, kind of. It's more of a mix in that. It's not like a pure mountain bike, no. So cyclocross bike. Yeah, kind of. They, they're 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 all blend together a little bit once you start getting into it. So it's not it's not a road bike. It's not a pure road bike. So okay, okay. So, His is a yeah. pure road bike. He does a I mean, Criterium racing. I'm not sure about that either. But I don't think anyway should be allowed on the roadways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the majority. Anyway. I think if they put it to a vote, 
my side would win, hands down. Hands down. I think your side would win, but I don't think you should put people's rights up for vote. Like, because it, it's to protect the individuals. I don't think, well, I say riding a fucking bicycle isn't a right, it's a privilege. And uh, those, can, <laughs> those can be curtailed at will, and we need to put it up for a vote. <laughs> I think it's I think it's in the interest of national security that we get these freaks off the roadways in their tight, skimpy outfits acting like they're trying to pass some sort of aerodynamic test. Nah, they gotta go. I, they gotta go. We need more men in tight skimpy they, outfits. They got bikes without wheels on them you put in your house. Get it keep do that shit in private. Wow. <laughs> was that Taylor asked that question or you, Kyle? If I was what doing was the climbing again. What was the Taylor original Taylor. Taylor? If I was Taylor, Taylor right? I was curious. Oh though. yeah, yeah. No, I didn't. I mean, used to be like a big part of your identity. Oh, I'm going back into it for sure. So um, now it's it's now you know I'm a uh, late late fall now in uh, in the Midwest. So like we're starting to get temperatures out there that's not super pleasant to be on. And I've been putting off that kind of COVID decision for as long as I can to just enjoy the the fact that I can you know, work out from home, work out on the bike kind of deal. But COVID um, I will be doesn't... climbing again. COVID doesn't impact my actions at all. I, I give lip service to caring about it, and I certainly wear a mask any place that wants me to. I've never, yep. a mask has never impacted me from reaching my goals. I don't give a fuck. I don't call it a face diaper. I'm not one of those guys. But um, my climbing membership is at a major uh, university gym, mm-hmm. and it's fairly tight quarters in there once you get climbing. So it's would, like, it's. I hear you, but I would personally be all over it. I'm, I'm, I don't think COVID's over, but I'm over it. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, more, I'm just on the bad decision train. I would, I would do whatever I want. I, I, I look. I got both shots. I yeah, me too. Bean. I bought uh-huh. the rice and the beans. I bought the toilet paper. I got the shots. Now I'm, now I'm gonna wear the mask whenever you tell me to. But I'm gonna do anything else I want. All right, I'm, I'm, that, that's where I, we are. Let, let, yeah, I guess my point was along the lines of this: when I don't have to make that a reality, right? Where my decision goes, well, I could go back to climbing, which I enjoy, or I could just do the biking for the fitness. Because I'm doing both of these things for fitness, right? So I'm like, right. while it's while the weather's nice, I can do whatever I want for that. And I've been choosing not to have to make that decision, right? Not to choose between fitness or fucking COVID. It's kind November of deal, right? in Iowa. And now it's November in Iowa, so that that decision's rolling around again. I'm gonna join this soccer league just for the the the, the fall and winter yeah, kind of people season. Don't really do heavy indoor breathing in your soccer league. That's my point, right? So I'm already <laughs> opening myself up to that risk. So I'm very likely gonna go back to climbing for that because at some point I'm just like enough's a fuck enough. But it is That's still best. a concern in my mind. So I got a lovely COVID immunity. Bike. The best COVID immunity is double vaccination and COVID itself. Yeah, get on board. That's very true. That's right. <laughs> That's the way to do it, right? That's, that's, that's where that's you're you most diseases. Just get them. And then maybe get a booster <laughs> from a different company because that's what I'm going to do in a few months. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm torn on that because it. I thought Moderna was the second best one. I thought Pfizer was better. Yeah. Now there's more and more data out. It seems like Moderna is the best one to have, which is what I have. I mean, I'm an amateur virologist. It would make sense to mix it up a little, get the Pfizer. Oh, yeah. I'm going to mix them up. But I feel like I already have the best one. Why not get a third best? Why would I step down and get Pfizer? I got a rabies shot the other day just in case. (laughs) (laughs) No, didn't you hear? Why didn't you just get rabies? They're $12. That's going to give you the best protection long term. They're $12. I was like, give me one. Let's go. Did you really get a rabies vaccine? No. Is that a thing? (laughs) I don't know what people get. I don't know my vaccines really well. I, I, so I've been looking at like, yeah, come on, load it up, Doc. Give me one of those too. <laughs> I've been looking at stupid travel. Like when you go to Africa, you get a bunch of vaccines that Americans don't typically get. Yeah, yellow fever. Yeah. I'm like, I wonder if my doctor knows what to give me because you have to pr- like show vaccine passes and such. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sure there's a list online and, and you're like, mm. yeah, I need to get that, that dengue fever vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all, those, all those nonsensical diseases hyenas always are giving you this <laughs> <That's right. laughs> what, you, what you need to do before you go there if you actually because because i know that like in the next five years your goofy ass is going to try to go to africa for some reason <laughs> you're going you know you're going you're going to he's got yeah. to folks he's got to go to africa <laughs> bring the paramotor? oh maybe bring, 
He'll bring whatever he needs that to be a car, motor, motorcycle. It needs to be a bad decision. I'm not just going to go there. It's going to be it, the last post in your YouTube channel. It's going to be like, oh, the paramotor is going down right the now. Last like post will be from the last the warlord. Down there. Who but I'll be it. making a landing. So. <laughs> I do not know. Um, yeah, I think that's a very poor idea. But I wish you the best of luck in Africa amongst <laughs> the. If tribes. I didn't make but, poor decisions, I'd miss out on half the shit I do. You know what I kind of want to do? I want to go to that Sentinel Island. Where those uh those uncontacted oh yeah are. yeah the the ones who are like assholes who like shoot bows and arrows at you if you try to show up and teach them like electricity and stuff but I want to show up with like body armor and like less than lethal weaponry and like bully them. <laughs> That's the way to go. Wait, Taylor should bring his own bow and arrow. Oh, they don't even like, know. Oh, look at you fuckers with your homemade bow. We're talking about you. Bow and arrow. The Sentinel Islands. Remember that guy went and they killed him. I think they shot him with a bow as he approached. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> you need to go with some body armor and some archery skills and some modern weaponry. Modern. Guns. Well, no, no, not guns. No. I can't have. Now those. you're a bully, that Taylor. Is, don't be a bully. You need a better bow and arrow. You need a crossbow. Whatever it takes to beat the people of Sentinel. We're trying to go in and dominate. We don't want a crossbow because they're going to be too quick with those little stick flingers and you're going to be reloading, <laughs> even the modern ones. We need, if we're going to really just like run the score up mm -hmm. on them, we need guns. We I need guns because but, they're going to be better at archery than us. That's no, all they but, have. But, but I said train, bring, Taylor. I, train and get better. <laughs> they, they make their own bows. They probably use like deer horns and vines. I've made beards. my own bow before. It breaks when you pull it. <laughs> I remember doing that as a kid. Like, why won't any of these curved dead branches make a bow and arrow? I right, used right. a bunch of duct tape. Yeah. Right. So you're going to go in there with maybe a compound bow and uh, mm -hmm. a sight. They don't have a sight. That's true. You'd ha it'd have to be a range game because you'd have to see them coming. Because they're, that they're on their home turf, they know the wanna, trails. Like, 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 I don't want to kill them or anything. I think we should go in with body armor. Oh, what are we like, talking like, about? Like, like, I was going to kill them. I feel like if you were a <laughs> no, I was Kyle, Kyle's talking about God complex here. He wants to go yeah. in with body armor that's indestructible and a weapon, a non-lethal weapon that they can't deal with. Is what this is wants. even Ooh. this is even more fun. This I want is the bully. juggernaut armor for Modern Warfare Three. Yeah, I want to go in there and bully <laughs> them and like like blow their minds with like with like some basic technology and shit. And make them think I'm a god, and then, uh, and then like tell them all like crazy, kooky, made up shit. Dude, they already uh, would think you're a god. Look at like they're all probably. I'm gonna guesstimate average height four ten in that <laughs> in that tribe. You six two, and you're built like an Adonis. They're gonna they they haven't seen lats before. <laughs> <laughs> They won't know what that is. They'll think it's like like uh, spirits that are providing like you know, sprout wings. Yeah, they don't know. So yeah, I like um, that idea more than killing them all, becoming their god. But then, what sort of what sort of nice like little trinkets could they even give you? What do they? What they, they don't have gold TV. out there. Or, they, or like like some oysters, maybe. You know, maybe I could just like like Pearls. like. Yeah, if not gold oysters, <laughs> that's the payoff. Oysters. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I love, <laughs> seems you can like get a it. lot of work for oysters. You can get, it, you can get that. <laughs> They're like eight dollars each. You could go clamming <laughs> out here. <in> the... <laughs> I don't want. There's no gold here. here. <laughs> There's no gold here. Hey, but there be God. oysters. <laughs> two oysters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but what would your what would your first edict be? As Lord oh, I, of the Sentinel Islands, I, I think. Oh, the fun uh, is oh help me! What is it called? Prima Nocta. Uh, yeah. It's the thing we'd all we all say we would enact in all of his fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> the first Prima step Nocta. in pretty much every single fantasy monkey paw <laughs> scenario, genie, magic What's wish. Prima Nocta for the four people who haven't heard us talk about. Wish it. upon a shooting star, birthday candle type scenario. <laughs> well, we immediately go to sort of a Prima Nocta type situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's your right. That's it's right. Your, as king or as emperor, the, I haven't decided yet. You're going to go king or emperor? You're not going to. What yeah, else is all there? All respect for you the first time I, you take your armor off, Kyle. Well, well, I, I think I would like to be that's referred true. to as Lord. I, I think that has a ring to it. Lord, what about like your majesty? I, I don't care for that. Um, I would prefer, prefer Lord or liege because that sounds Ooh, more specific. My liege. You don't like Dune, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, is it a lot of lords and lieges and and dukes and yep. uh, barons. Well, 
Uh, is mm-hmm. Baron Harkonnen in there? Is he going to be up to some no good? I think we yeah. can trust him this time around. You're going to like the actor who they got for him. The uh, the the grizzled guy from Chernobyl. He's good. I'm a, I'm aware. I saw the uh, the casting months ago. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'll I'll, I'll get it watched. My I, liege I, is great. That's such a good liege. one. Under underused. Yeah that's, yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. I want to be. I don't, wait, no, is that a title liege. or does my liege mean like person I am like beholden to? Like I to believe it's the latter. I I, I believe it's the latter. I, I you could be like liege, liege lord. I think that's the name of a magic card. Um. Yeah, a liege lord is um like your like someone who has medieval authority over you. Um, for sure. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, Filthy brings up a good point in that the second you take the armor off, the illusion's going to be shattered. So you're going to have oh, to be prepared I'll, to like I'll, live. I love by that, but that'll be like lunchtime. By then, I'd have, <laughs> I'd have long gotten bored and either left or <laughs> slaughtered them. And they're like, "Wait, you were going to tell us about antibiotics?" And you're like, "I'm bored. <laughs> I'm bored. You guys are living in bullshit little huts. I thought I was going to be king. Of, I'm king of nothing. King of wait. Can you can you make another one of those Twinkies from Magic? You asshole. That was my pocket. Yeah, <laughs> I only had It'd one. Be your and your I empire of dirt. One. <laughs> um, yeah, I would I would get bored by lunchtime and either just abandon them or slaughter them one of the, one way or the other. I just kind of like the idea of bullying some savages, I guess. And there's that one little group of them left that's kind of bullyable because they're assholes. <laughs> it's like you're getting off your bucket list. <laughs> bully some savages. They're running out of savages. <laughs> that's there's true. so few savages to bully. There was a time is, is that when if you were if you were a Spaniard and you're prime and maybe your dad had a little cash and and you had a little sway with uh with the queen you could get mm. yourself a fucking boat and you could and they were using gonna... woody's solution to disease too the spaniards oh the bullying the... those conquistadors put down they were the best at bullying i would say you think so there've been a lot of good bullies throughout history i think that uh, <laughs> I, I think the conquistadors were the greatest bullies of all time or at least the spanish Pretty I think good, the Spanish, they were large. pretty good bullies. And the Inquisition, too, all right? all Spaniards, then, I, then it's just a win. I think the Conquistadors alone. You know, I mean, you know, those, you know they thought that they, when the Conquistadors showed up on those, uh, those horses with the armor and everything, they thought it was one being. They didn't differentiate between the horse and the man riding it because they'd never seen a horse or a They didn't man see him like, hop off? I, I, I get I, off the I can't answer your didn't last long. Are you sure there were no words? Yeah, that's <laughs> we're talking about pre <laughs> a very short-lived delusion. Nobody get off your horse. For a moment, we thought it was just one organism, and they just hunted, and that totally Wait, it's clearly off. a man on an animal we're not familiar with. Nope, in the history books, you're all retards. Are you sure <laughs> the Mexicans didn't have horses at all? Um, I don't think they had. No, there were no horses. Um, I'm pretty sure there were no horses in... So so here's I think it's gone back and forth. I think that there were horses in North America and then mm. they went extinct. And then we brought horses back to North America. Um so I think at the time of the Indians, for example, oh. or the American savage as I like to refer to them, yeah. sure, there sure. were no Indian. There were no horses. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure that all the horses that the American savage interacted with, like, you know, during the Wild West and such were horses that had been brought over by Europeans. You know, I that, occasionally never into it. finish my time on PK and find that some of the things said here were not true. I don't no. think that's right. What? Yeah. That, 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 I think that, that the first not true thing never that's happened. been said. What? Apparently, Fibonacci Fibonacci never happened? A, yeah, apparently um, that's, Have you seen Braveheart? Yep, he was, yep. That's <laughs> where they came up in a discussion of Braveheart somewhere. So um, I'm interested about this horse theory. Like, um, do you have any... Gibson wouldn't lie. That's which which part are you curious about the the, the part about them existing yeah, the in North extinction America? Of that. I've never heard that before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. um, I don't have a source like like on hand as I sit here in this like. Yeah, yeah I'm, right. not, I'm not. I'm not saying that is necessarily one of the things that oh, may turn I, out to I'm be different. Sure I've just something. never heard that before. No, I'm pretty sure I uh, I watched a documentary about that. I'm sure Zach could correct me. Really okay, quick. okay. Look, now I googled it. The first six links said it was a myth, but the seventh one said that it might have existed. So suck it. I don't. So, I don't know about the wait, wait, wait. extinction. He's talking about. Hang on. He's talking about prima nocta, folks. Like, he's not talking about the horses. I am talking about prima nocta. They can yeah. both be wrong. Okay. That's true. I'm aware. I'm <laughs> aware. Of that. First of all, I had. I never said prima nocta was real. I was referring to the. the I Gibson thought it was movie, real, which I view to be a historical document. 
Mm-hmm. It says That's right here that historians David Walker and Heckner McKinney said it might have existed. I mean, might. Oh, that's prima awesome. <laughs> Again, prima yeah. I mean, prima it, if it existed, there'd be some... I mean, I imagine that we'd have some like historical complaint letters from from people about the implementation of it. Like there was a huge riot over at Prima Nocta and back then they just burned Scotland. those letters. Didn't read that shit. Are you kidding me? That's you know, true. And the people I who would be mad. Wife. I'm not gonna like sit here and like read your complaint yeah. letter. And also, like, do I do I care? And I'm gonna send you an angrily written. Letter. And also, I was just <laughs> thinking right. they, they 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 didn't know how to read, so they just have to draw a picture of the king like deep dicking <laughs> their wife, and then put a frowny face on the top. <laughs> Storm cloud, frowny face. (laughs) I don't know what they're trying to tell me. I don't think they're too fond of me fucking their women. (laughs) Just riding into town. No, killer. The the, the interpretation of that would clearly be like they want us. They want me to make it rain from orgasming on their wife with my (laughs) pants. Right? Bring down the thunder. They're saying. All right. Clearly, they want some lock and load. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) I want to know about the horses, Zach. Help me. Okay, I typed in, did Indians have horses? And the first thing says, horses were first introduced to Native American tribes via European explorers. All right. So, so that- it, it doesn't mention a previous extinction, just that they came over when Europeans brought them here. That is the question. Were there horses in North America long ago? And I believe the answer is yes, predating those Native Americans. So I don't know no. what makes them so native. I, like, like, I, like, 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 I don't get it. I don't get why we just okay. picked a period of time where it, it they pick. They there's like a cutoff, right? There's a cutoff to being a Native American. Yeah. Like, 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 yeah. Like, what is the cutoff? <laughs> I don't. I, I, I never thought of I don't this. Know why you're I not mad your point? <laughs> like they walked over here, presumably across the Bering Strait or something. A land bridge. Yeah. And that makes them original. Yeah, we came here by boat, and we're not original. I'm a purist. You have to be literally the first guy. Everyone <laughs> else, ownership, no. ownership comes from no. Walking, you not need from to boating. have evolved you can't from a monkey shit in, a boat. in America <laughs> to be a native. If you walked here from someone else, you're, you're an immigrant. By the way, Zach just yeah. confirmed. I'm correct about the horses. They were in North America <laughs> when extinct. So, what is Zach like? Your link to Google. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not prepared. prepared. I don't have Siri. my tools. Back. What happens? You know, Wait, like, that's next nice job. <laughs> 45 million years, 45 million year old fossils, a bit before the Native Americans. Uh, <laughs> Aohippus, the modern horse's ancestor, evolved in North America, survived in. Oh, th- I don't, this is boring in the middle of it. <laughs> Just read it. Uh, 45 the modern million horse's years ancestor. ago, the horse's ancestors survived in Europe, Asia, and returned with Spanish explorers. The early horses went extinct in North America, but made a comeback in the 15th century. You can't read that? How no, can it you was just... spell so well, but not read No, it? no, I can read it. I was saying that I, I, I lost my enthusiasm. <laughs> I lost my enthusiasm for the horses no, because it literally to be like today's me, attention Taylor. It was like, it's, you got like payload delivery. The important thing to Fair remember enough. here is that I was right. <laughs> no, not according to the bullshit link I have. What? What? <laughs> just as this is from history.com. Who would be better? What does it say? This thing I said. <laughs> He's not going to read it. It's too boring to read. Horses were first kind of introduced to Native American tribes via European explorers. That's what I said. Yes. <laughs> so I was right. But I'm saying, so I don't understand. They went extinct way long ago like a an ancestor to horses or they made it to modern horses and then they went away because it doesn't make they were ancient listen it's it's hilarious that you're so smart yet your attention span is so short (laughs) (laughs) the uh how does it describe it the modern horse's ancestor was here 45 million years ago but the modern horse was brought here by spanish explorers yeah. Was that okay. short right. enough? Did let's, I get your attention? Let's, 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 okay. But wait, let's, make, let's make sense of that because the question then is, well, if it's the ancestor was here, how did – how? How, what was the continuation of that? All right, so this branch goes extinct, but how did this branch that was the ancestor make it to Europe kind of deal? Is this like Pangaea we're talking about? Wait, what is this time frame? No, I have no, no, no. No, no. Pa- no, Pangaea was hundreds of millions of years ago. So this, this, this involved the land bridge. Yeah, this is like that uh, – like Russia – Alaska so, bridge, right? Horses evolved yeah, the tide went here, down, walk across. moved with Probably. humanity at some point, or just on their own across this land bridge yeah. to Europe, 
or on their own then went extinct ign- here and they got re that's that's the, the idea of this that's not the idea that's the factual evidence that happened that's it's what happened they existed Am I everywhere learn after this that this is bullshit again because no he just looked it up there's fossils of the horses here all right so that that's, just that's don't that's look solid. it up anymore after we're done talking <laughs> and, then there weren't, <laughs> and then there weren't any horses like before the uh Guilty, if you're tired of getting disproved on these things just don't look into it <laughs> i don't know why it matters anyway all i just wanted to be known that those savage americans didn't have any horses until we gave them horses and that I don't think that, that we should just arbitrarily say like, oh, yeah, if you were born before this date, you're a Native American. Because I feel like I am a Native American. Um, and I feel like my people, the Neanderthals, aren't protected anywhere. And I'm tired of that, too. <laughs> that um, is I true. Feel we like, are I feel like we don't get casinos. We don't even get like a, a video poker room. Like, I'd be satisfied with that if you had, a, if you had enough Neanderthal blood. You, you, you can open a video poker room. Okay, maybe not a whole casino. Maybe not a fucking Harris, but give video me poker rooms is done already. What should Neanderthals get? Neanderthals, Ooh, something good, so, but all right? the good stuff's taken. I want to be able to sell um, brothels. Brothels. Boom. I yes. Be able to... Brothels. Indi- Amer- Savage Americans don't have brothels. Neanderthals could run brothels on their land. But you should you know, have I, to be I was at least go, whatever percentage I am. I was going to go with things like raw milk and uh, and like and warm <laughs> eggs, but brothels is just a lot better. I, I think I it, is, it is better than warm eggs. This <laughs> 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 is warm eggs. <laughs> yeah. It conjures the image of like the worst like worst cooked <laughs> diner egg ever. It's just like lukewarm and not really cooked. No. You know, it's a bit. No, 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 no. You must understand. I went this you must understand. Route. Like, there, there's certain groceries that like Americans do differently, and eggs are one of them. So we sell our eggs refrigerated while nowhere else on the planet does <laughs> well, you want to would you like an egg it's a hot hot hard-boiled egg it's been in the car all day <laughs> no, it's not hot. they're not hot they're just they're just like room temperature Got your hot eggs here <laughs> no they're one's room there temperature eggs <laughs> the hottest egg since 10 million years ago <laughs> it's not so much an egg as it is a baby chicken my, it's like when you're looking up recipes, Kyle, it'd be like, my great, 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 great grandfather came up with the hot egg on the steps <laughs> of the Mongolian you know, desert or whatever the fuck were. You know, the I, went to, Mountains. I went to school with a girl and her grand, no, great grandfather invented the Cobb salad. There's no way. He did. <laughs> there is no way she invented. Okay, no, it was her grand. It was her great great grandfather, our great grandfather. No, he lost interest in the middle of those greats. So his name, in his the, mind, it was just the great grandfather. The bu- no good. The, the Cobb salad was born in the wee hours of a ho- Hollywood, California morning in 1937 at the Brown Derby restaurant. The owner, Bob Cobb. <laughs> was ruffling through the kitchen's refrigerator, pulling out yeah. various remnants. This is Bob Cobb. You knew was- Susan Cobb. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about Grandpa Cobb. Yeah, heir to, heir to the Cobb Empire fortune. <laughs> that's, that's how that shit works. Every time there's a Cobb salad, so we get the kickback. <laughs> I, believe she was, I believe she was also related to Ty Cobb, um, which makes you know makes sense because of Royston. But um, yeah. but no, actually Taylor, I was. I was His trying. big rival, Waldo Wedge. No, because we're, <laughs> because we're at four hours, I was trying to do um, another Seinfeld bit because remember the Seinfeld episode where the guy claimed that, that he, his his dad had invented the Cobb salad? Mm-hmm. He didn't. No, that's, no, 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 I'm wrong. That's Curb it's Your Enthusiasm. Not the Cobb salad. That's Curb oh. Your Enthusiasm. Well, then I have seen that one. Yeah, yeah I haven't seen all yeah. of them. I've seen that yeah. one. You need to watch more of that. I do. It's got. I'm re- I'll watch it after I rewatch Seinfeld for the hundredth time. Have you guys uh, seen the new season? You? Just started. I want to cover you before we end the show. Have you guys see, heard of this show? I've heard of it, what but I've heard seen... of it. Apparently, you is one of the more popular TV shows happening right now. I'm watching it on Netflix. I don't know if it exists somewhere else first, and uh, I'm only like whatever four episodes deep in, so I can't spoil too much for you guys. But there's this guy. He's a bookstore manager, and. He seems to be wonderful. His dialogue is all very clever. He's super perceptive. And this girl walks into the bookstore and you want them to be a thing. Cool. So to increase his odds at saying and doing the right things, he starts like, you know, just observing her from the shadows. And you're like, oh, this is a little stalkery. But he's only trying to be the best boyfriend possible, you know, Mm -hmm. like gather some intel, whatever. 
And then, like, he sees her with another tender date and starts masturbating in the bushes. And, and you, but you like him, so you forgive him for this. Yeah, everyone who hasn't done it. And then, you know, he takes her boyfriend in the basement and hits him in the head with a hammer and eventually kills him. But mm-hmm. you like him. So, like, you know, it, it's cool. And then she has some character flaws that start to get revealed. And it's weird how I'm rooting for these people who aren't so great, but Those I'm forgiving people. Of forgiving sins like murder and I, I'm, I'm into the show check out you it'll hook you in Spell less it. than three episodes just why yeah. you oh i'm glad yeah. we got here you know for a while there was i can't remember what the stupid ass question we would always ask our guests was but i hated it i thought it was so fucking stupid but it was but, about the but, mermaid but, yeah god i hated that that was so fucking stupid <laughs> uh, <clears throat> ran its i hated it um it, okay. it, there was no it was it was stupid the first time for me but um this is a good one, though, I like that I think maybe we're talking a week or two ago. Um, filthy. If you uh, if you found out a close family member had mm. committed a serious crime, would you turn them in? Close family member committed a serious crime. Do I get any yeah, like, hints like, what like, the crime is? I, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I was I was vague because I don't know, like, are you close with your like mother, father, or... Yeah, sure, or my brother. Brother's probably a good one for this. Okay, so you find out that your brother has meth distribution no you your brother the same one no I, i'm not my game okay your you're brother good. We'll, we'll start we'll, we'll start you know your brother has killed someone your brother has okay. killed a date um okay. he got her too drunk they got a little bit rough she tripped fell down the stairs she's dead he's killed her he calls you he's like what do i do what do you do what do I do? So I'm, it's not even like you're, it's not even he's asking me to hide the body. He's just wanting advice of what he does in the situation. Not yet. We'll escalate. Okay. Well, the, the first thing, of course, we're going to try to take care of him, especially with the scenario you just put out. Put out. You said there's an accident happened, essentially. Yeah. So of course, I, we're going to try to do I everything my, we can for him. My real question. That's a yeah. softball. So where are we going with this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. At that I'm point, waiting for the warm eggs to drop. I, yeah. She's allowed to fall down the stairs. Who all right, so first of all, who was the <laughs> guest who was so quick to rat their dad out? Who was that? Was that uh Drifter. 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 Okay, so we had Drifter on, and Drifter was ratting his dad out for like tax evasion and shit. Like, like, <laughs> like, 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 he got to the point where it was like, Hey dad, did you pay that parking ticket when we we're on vacation? Because <laughs> I'm gonna have to call Ohio and let them know. <laughs> like, 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 like he's such a stickler. Meanwhile, I was like the only thing I turned my dad in for was like if he was actively like part of some sort of child molestation mm-hmm. thing. Like mm-hmm. if he was molesting children or if he was involved with 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 any sort of business thereof, I can't, I can't, I can't, I, I'm not ride or die that like like that. Like like yeah. so, something happened. That to was your wrong. border. Human trafficking was fine. It was just trafficking of minors. Yep. That Honestly, was the yeah. border for your dad. Yeah. Okay. That's that's yeah. the extent of love for you and your father. Yes, it is. Yeah. Have you told him that? I think that'd make a really nice card. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think what I told my dad was that he's my favorite person in the world, and he told me that I'm his favorite person in the world, and that was enough. Okay. Good. And you got that, each other. That just back. goes without saying that last little bit. He understood the limitations of that. Yeah. Unless there's any pedophile shit, Dad. Well, oh. he knows. He knows if he's you know turns out to be a chomo, then I, I, I look. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta rat him out. But is but if he's like selling like eighteen year old girls from Bolivia, I could keep my mouth shut. Yeah, that's the deal. And I was just wondering, like, would you keep quiet about the 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 eighteen year old girls from Bolivia that your brother was importing? Yeah, probably. Right. See, I like to hear that. I like to hear that because that's a family. You're a family man. We all appreciate family here. <laughs> that's that's wholesome. we would all keep quiet about our our brother trafficking Bolivian women. We would all keep quiet. Yeah. We wouldn't want any part of it. We might even tell him not to come around. Well, maybe a taste. <laughs> just, a, just a little, a little. Maybe off the a little. Top. Inter- maybe I get a little, enta- a little entertainment a few times. By my a year. silence, entice me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do all this over the phone as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do it. text it. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do this in send me an on email. <laughs> 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 no, no, just tweet me. No, tweet it. It. All right, you do your not, DMs. I'm trying to fucking you know send some women. No, to I, you. I, I'm glad to see that you would uh, you would not write out your family member. Um, I, I let me just say uh, like like quickly. I don't know. I I know you probably don't watch the show every week. Uh, um, but uh, Drifter 
real good guy. I like him. I hope he'll come back on and be our guest more. But sounded like he had some real mental health issues that had me very concerned. And I was amazed at the end of that show that we hadn't discussed it more by the end. It felt awkward that we hadn't discussed the fact that he was coming off. I don't want to make light of it. Like he came off like he might have some issues, right? Am I wrong here? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. We're all a little crazy. With the, the hallucinations with and everything, definitely. I mean, we're all a little <laughs> crazy, but... All right, so let me help you out with this, Filthy, so that you'll get on my yeah. side, because Woody's being, Woody's being like, ah, we're all a little crazy. Yeah. He sees a dark man sometimes in his home. The dark man will, uh, will look at him around corners and stuff. He sees him a lot. In dreams? No, during his waking hours. He's, it's not real, so it's a dream. It's called schizophrenia. <laughs> Wait, he's, he's, he's experiencing he told delusions. You guys, he told you guys that he sees a shadowy figure that is in his reality. And this isn't like he's thinking about like there's a person there or something. This is just he literally sees a figure in his house. And he, he told you guys about this? He has a hard time grasping yeah. what's real and what isn't real. Or he said he did as a child. Mm, okay, I don't want to misquote. But my understanding was that if he saw the dark man tonight, he wouldn't be blown away. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like some shadow people or some scary, and like and, he knows and, it's and, not and, real. And, and look, we, you know, we're shooting. I bet this he shit makes here really interesting content. We're shooting. We're shooting. This, this could shit be a pro here, in like, his. But he doesn't make that kind of content. He doesn't make like silly content. He makes like funny little serious gaming content or whatever. Like 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 he doesn't. He doesn't go. Yeah, so I saw the dark man today. If you are seeing people regularly, like actual hallucinations, you should definitely go fucking talk to someone. That's, sure. That seems to go without saying. The, the, I don't even know why you are asking me that in like a sentence like that. That's um, because 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 Woody was like, "Hey, we're all a little crazy," and I was like, "I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I'm worried for Drifter." Sounds like Kyle doesn't see dark people. That makes him the weirdo. Am I right? I, you don't see I, the shadow realm, dude. If I, <laughs> let me just say this. I know we're like it's time to end the show, but like right. I looked out my window the other night and I remember, but there's nothing out there. But if there had been something out there, I remember thinking like, what if something was out there? It would have, what, what do if you I looked do? out your window and there was someone in your fucking house because you see people in your yeah. house and you're just like, ah, oh, it's normal. He doesn't do anything. He's just there. If I saw Eventually, a fucking be a dark real guy. person, if I saw a fucking dark person out here right now, and, and just so everyone listening is clear, I'm not talking about a, a, an African American. We're talking about yeah, shadowy talking about figures, shadow, shadow shadowy, hallucinations. Shadowy hallucinations. If I saw a dark person, I could never sleep alone or live alone again for the rest <laughs> of my fucking life. He just looks at me around corners. My skin was crawling as you were describing that. Yeah, um, but but yeah, <laughs> I, I enjoyed you. I always do, filthy. Um, I, I wish we had spoken about that new game, that um, um, humankind game or whatever it's called. What's it called? Yeah, me too. Humankind. Uh, I have been playing. I did play some humankind a couple months ago. I'm playing Dark Dungeon two right now. I'm looking forward to the magic set. That's what I'm probably working with next. I'm not sure. Are you talking Age of Empires four? Perhaps. I'm not sure what you're. No, going I was talking. To, you, you got it right the first time. <clears throat> the one that was okay. a bit like Civ five. But uh, but yeah, I'll come uh, I'll come check out your stream sometime soon. I always do right after you're on. See what you got going on. Sounds good. It's good talking to y'all. Hope you're doing well. And uh, hopefully yeah. none of you are seeing dark figures. So. Uh, oh my God! I'm so scared now. You're gonna be spooked tonight. It's gonna yeah. be ghouls and goblins. I'm all alone. I'm, just, I'm miles from people. It's it's black. Yeah. I mean, if you see them around the lake, that's kind of normal because it's dark out by that lake. There was something moving around in the you, bushes when weird. I went outside to smoke earlier. Like, Every I'm gonna, I'm movement is unexplained and dangerous when you're alone. It, 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 scary things. It, it had to be a deer or a coyote. Like, like right. It could have been a night. person. It didn't have to be one of those. It's true. But they don't even have ni- big knives here. Like, 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 like the knives <laughs> must suck. I looked. You don't have a big knife. That doesn't mean they don't have a big knife. <laughs> <laughs> very, very good point. <clears throat> well, luckily, all the doors have big panes of glass as do the windows. <laughs> I was thinking about that today. My wife the size will of a bear. fuss at me if I don't do like the deadbolt on the door. These are glass doors. If you do any of the locks, you've done more than enough. Um, because none on. of it's stopping yep. shit. It's the illusion of security. It's security theater. Yeah, or low hanging fruit, right? You stop the guy who like pulls on the door, see if it's open. You don't stop the guy who's kicking in your door. And for that, either lock gets it done. Don't tell me I need to do the regular lock and the dead boulder were unsecured around here. No, <laughs> we're, we're unsecured. You just don't know it. That's right. 
That's right. So, Filthy, where can everybody find you? Those look secure. Twitch.tv sure forward slash Filthy Robot. You can find me on YouTube at Filthy Robot. Twitter, Filthy underscore Robot. That's the best spots probably to get to me. So, I stream go. five days a week. Thanks for having Better me on, guys. Real lock. Of course. Well, you're just going to have to hope. <laughs> if we don't see him next week, we know what happened. You Google Filthy Robot. He's the top three hits. Yep. Oh, by the way, this is I made this so there'd be fewer echoes in the room. Like, like this is all like a giant blanket on the table. Very nice. good. Yeah, it's it was like, a lot better than PKN for sure. Yeah, there's like there's like two chairs on the table covered with a blanket. <clears throat> See the effort this man puts into it? He'll drape oh, it. Just, just, drape just doing, it, doing all I got. <laughs> Give it all I got. Blankets and chairs, folks. Blankets and chairs. PKA 560 